ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Um, yeah, sorry about if anyone was um, trying to get into the old stream. I uh, I don't know, I didn't shut it off properly or something, so it was just after I finished broadcasting, it was just all, the session was still open. But uh, yeah, so apologies for anyone who was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, yes, yeah, so I was trying to take a power nap, but I uh, didn't get to sleep, unfortunately. But that's alright, I had a few hours sleep earlier in the day, so it is all good. Today we are going to be trying out some Thorgrim Grudge Bearer. And Emperor. Um, yeah, so I wanted to check out one. I'm going to save Ungram because Ungram's very Slayer focused and there's a lot of Slayer stuff coming in the DLC that we know about. Slayer pirates, Slayer, you know, Doomseeker Slayers, Slayer heroes and all that. So I want to keep him for that. Um, so it was, yeah, I was kind of tossing up between Thorgrim and Grumbrindle. Or maybe Belligar. I want to. I want to check out the um, high sleeve of the mad. Yeah, that's me. I want to check out the new underway underway stuff for the dwarfs. So um, yes, yeah, so I think um, I think that um, they did change some of the abilities of Ungram slightly. Yeah. But um, but yeah, we'll save that for later. See, so, yeah, I think we're going to go for Thorgrim today. Yeah, I've, already, I've actually already decided that, haven't I? We've got physical resistance fifteen percent for hammerers. So if we want to make a melee army, that's uh, that's up for debate. Um, we do have post battle replenishment now, so um, if you want to make like a melee army, it's a bit more viable now because you can get instant post battle replenishment after every battle, like, regardless of who you're fighting. Like before, you could get post battle replenishment if you fought other dwarfs, which was heresy. Obviously, you would never do that. But um, but otherwise, you never could get any post battle replenishment. But now dwarfs are just they replenish off everyone. Um, commandments have more powerful effects. Recruit rank for here for hammerers. Upkeep hammerers and diplomatic relations with dwarfs. Alrighty, and gyrocopters. Um, uh, this is gyro bombers. So gyro bombers used to be single entity. Now they're four entities. And gyrocopters used to be four entities, and now they're sixteen entities. I think. But yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll just leave the normal end game on. We're not really planning on. Not really planning on getting involved with that, but yeah, we'll leave it on. Oh, is it 12, is it? No, oh, okay. Iron Man? Oh, yeah, we should play an Iron Man. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference because I'm not going to reload anyway. Um, so it's essentially Iron Man, regardless of whether it's an Iron Man, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, I'll just point that out. So and one of the things that changed in the new patch is that if you're trying to play on Legendary, um, the same as the current Legendary, you have to actually manually select that you want Iron Man mode for your saves. So if we just go back to the selection menu again. Empire's blessings, yes. Send me to vengeance. Uh, this. So, uh, so yeah, Iron Man mode, I believe, is the same as the old legendary. So this screen should look same as it did before. But when you first go into the patch, it will, or it will by default, even if you previously had had it all set up for legendary, it'll by default it'll change it to incremental, incremental auto saves. So we'll just change it back to uh, Iron Man. So we're playing proper regular legendary. You used to just say legendary, but now you have to say legendary, and then you have to say battle difficulty very hard, and then you have to say AI cheats at the max and Iron Man mode. So it's like, what used to just be called Legendary is now like five things. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Wonder if the plus three recruit rank for hammerers also applies to the grudge generated hammerers. Oh, is there grudge bearer ham hammerers, is there? Grudge bring what are they called? Grudge bearers or grudge bringers? Excuse me, I'm eating some potato crisps for my dinner. Because that is the most efficient energy delivery system for streaming. Grudge settlers, that's right. Cool. We got so this we got special grudge settler units here. A little bit like the electric count units or the um you know the red the red um they're basically like the red mercenary type units. March on brave Dowie! March on! We can't show anything from the new DLC. So this is 
this is the update that's going to come out with Thrones of Decay, but not with the Thrones of Decay DLC. So this is what you'll be playing. Once Thrones of Decay comes out, this is what you'll be playing if you don't buy the DLC. So this is all the free LC updates to the existing game that everyone's going to get for free without the DLC. So I can't show anything from the DLC. So we don't have the new Slayer heroes in this campaign. Um, but we do, we do have all of the updated and uh, do have all of the like updated units and stuff like that. Just checking all my streaming stuff. It looks like it's all working well. I'm starting to feel like the 5.0 will be the best update addition to the game yet. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm pretty biased because I'm a big Empire fan, uh, and I'm a big Dwarf fan. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty good so far. All right. Um, so yeah, so the grudge system is the main new change. I'm not sure if I 100% actually understand it yet. I have to actually, that's why I was sort of hoping to like, you know, figure it out. So if anyone's been like watching other streamers and they know more than me or whatever, feel free some tips along the way. But as I understand it, basically this, this thing kind of cycles every so many turns. Uh, I guess 10 turns is how long it's going to take. And so in that 10 turns, you have to try to settle as many grudges as you can. And I believe that, I think... I think these light up as you, if you kind of like achieve enough grudges to get to get them done. Um, and if you max it out, then you get all these rewards at the end once the 10 turns is up. I think it's basically how that goes. Should put it in the name of the stream, FLC content only. It is in the stream, Borgrim 5.0, whatever. Um... Um, so this is where you can confederate the lords um, this is all the um, different grudge bearers you can get and yes there are ha grudge settlers sorry and yes there are hammer grudge, bear grudge settlers they get frostbite attack and frenzy is there hmm is there anything, is there any ability that you can use that gives dwarfs contact effect stuff? Like the runesmiths or anything have contact, AOE contact effect stuff? Um, Send me to vengeance. I'm not sure, but I was just thinking, I wonder if we do have any contact effects, I wonder if we'll over overwrite that. Do you get that? No, you can get multiples of these units. You get like you get awarded some every time you do grudges and stuff. Every time you finish your Age of Reckoning, I believe. Um, oh yeah. So oh, sorry. And the third thing that I was going to tell you about is the legendary grudges. So these are like big epic quests that we can do. And if you manage to succeed in one, you get like special rewards. So the ones the ones I want to do are this one. I want to restore the Underway Network, Old World Mountains and Grey Mountains, um, and. Perhaps this one as well. I want to restore the underway network, Uzkalak and Karak Azorn. Oh, and this one reduces the underway travel. Oh yeah, plus two grudge settler unit capacity per army. So I'm guessing there's a maximum number of grudge settlers you can have in an army. Um... Uh, sort of like a, a load of recruitment or whatever. Um, and I remember, I noticed that certain characters get more grudges than other, other, um, I thought, I thought it was the Thorgrim that gets, you can get like more grudge settlers or something. Or maybe it's in his skill tree or something. Uh, after you, if, if, after 10 turns, if you max out the bar, you get a free army that functions like a corn blood host with reduced upkeep and no replenishment. Yeah, nice. That's like on top of the grudge settlers that you get. By Grugni, uh, the good. engineers, I think the engineers we decided are pretty much the same as they were before. They haven't really changed. I don't know if anything slightly might have changed, but I think they're pretty much the same. Ready to do All right, let's get into this first battle. The red shielded dwarfs are grudge settlers and they're like Empire State Troops. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're like Empire State Troops. They come up in here um, and you once you like once you were awarded with them, they come in here and then you can recruit them for free and they have um, special stats and stuff. 
Are they cheaper than normal? I wonder if they're cheaper than normal ones. They have wronged us. Exactly. Alright, let's start. get this... Um, let's get this first battle going. So yeah, we can't get any grudge settlers. Can't get any slayers. Oh yeah, so we don't have you don't have the slayers anymore. So you used to have um, slayers that you would just get for free all the time, um, but now you don't have slayers, but you do have grudge settlers, and it's, so you can get more stuff apart from just slayers. My beard That's pretty cool. There's trouble about. All right, let's try out a manual battle. Gotrick and Felix, please. Oh, yeah, well, all we have to do to get Gotrick and Felix is get to rank 17. Oh, and then fight a pretty hard quest battle. Oh, actually, I don't know if it's... Uh, I mean, it seemed pretty hard to me, but... But I was using um, Gelt's 19 Wizard Army, so it was pretty easy. Nah, Gotrick and Felix not tied to the taverns anymore. They're not a normal legendary hero. Once you get to level 17, you just get the quest to get them. Yes. So yeah, we'll try and get to level 17 fairly quickly so that we can we can get them because we get to keep them permanently now and they're um they're pretty good. Classic dwarf and uh, classic dwarf corner camp action. The only way to uh, the only way to dwarf. This is the first battle, so we've got to try and do this perfectly so that we get, otherwise it'll be a bad omen for the entire campaign. Right, we'll see if we can soften them up a little bit with our, our bombers. Split off one. Split off one unit now. Maybe a bit of friendly fire there, but that's really not too bad. Shoot! 
I won't dignify this guy with a duel. DLC is not out yet, um, Fire Tire. This is, uh... I'll change it to Early Access, there we go. I'm gonna make it a bit more obvious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just Early Access. I watched someone playing this yesterday, so you were called them out for corner camping. It's like, yeah, I'm playing dwarfs. Yeah, it's like, um... Your impression is it doesn't cycle, but the 10 turn thing also means to get better bonuses from it. Oh, what do you mean? It doesn't cycle. So like once you've done a certain amount, you just constantly keep getting the maximum reward. Oh, okay. Maybe I misunderstood. <laughs> Thanks. The early Akers. Book time off for this DLC. Yeah, I think it's nice to have a good, have some time off to play a DLC like this. Especially, it's nice to it's nice to have time off. Like especially when there's a launch and like everyone else is going to be excited about it as well, you know. So you can like chat with people about it, and I know it's fun. So oath, we still need oath gold to make our stuff, but yeah. See now we get post battle replenishment, so we can keep our dwarfs healthy. Um, I'm not sure if we really need it though. Still got the Gorog that we can we still get the Gorog buff. Oh, I guess we could do this Moth God. Gorog's always good early. Yeah, actually, I mean Gorog could be Oh actually we're gonna get Gorog anyway. We get Gorog anyway when we take Pillars of Gragni. Um so we don't need to worry about it. Oh, was there no growth on Gorog? Oh, we'll fight this one manually as well. Got to continue our uh, sort of perfect run. Oh, what happened to the health of the Joros? Excuse me. Sounds like a bug. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently there's a bug. Yeah, it's been um, it's been reported already. Um, apparently it's a bug, the gyro thing. Um, we could just hide up in here. But yeah, now corner camping is um, it, no, corner camping is not a thing in single player because it's like, it's a different scenario because. In multiplayer, your multiplayer is like a sport, right? Multiplayer is like a sport. You want to have like a friendly competitive match against another player so that you can challenge each other to see who's the most skillful uh, or strategic player. But that's not that's not how it is in single player. In single player, it's like a war. It's like a war and it's not about this battle. It's about my faction 
destroying your faction, you know? And you'll use any advantage that you can in order to defeat the enemy, like in a war. So it's not like a sport, it's more like, yeah, single player is more like a war, and, or maybe, you, well, you can make, yeah, this is one way of an uh, analogy. But I'm saying, like, just say I, I was a general and I saw this terrain, and I saw the army that I've got, and the full melee army that they've got, and I saw this little thing where both flanks are protected, I'd be like, yep, that's where I'm going to go. That's what I would do if I was a Roman general fighting Boudicca's 100,000 or whatever, you know? So, yeah, so it's like, yeah, the whole, like, thing of corner camping, it doesn't really apply. Nothing can stop us. It doesn't really apply to single player. But you can still use terrain in multiplayer, but yeah, and there's and yeah, the, like the way that there's a border at the edge of the map and it's advantageous to certain types of armies and stuff, it's not really fair. Do you think that dwarves are a strong faction now or still kind of mid? Yeah, I don't know, I think dwarves are pretty strong. But it just depends how you... It just depends how you measure it, I guess. One thing I'm looking forward to actually with the dwarves is that they're um, they're good at um, auto resolve, so we can um, we should be able to do a goodly amount of auto resolving in this campaign hopefully. Sometimes it's even preferable to auto auto resolve instead of um, you know instead of fighting manually. Man, these guys are making short work of these um, goblin wolf riders. I'm liking it. If we can also pull these archers out and shoot these wolf riders, that would be perfect. No, dwarves can never get a military alliance with cast dwarves. Oh, did Zerkovich accidentally like leak all the DLC when he wasn't supposed to as well? Ah, well, I'm sure it was not, uh, I'm sure it was, you know, unintentional. Hey. I'm liking the, um, gyro by my guns, at least in these non-armored, not unarmored sort of things. Kazakin, Kazakin, ha! Indeed. Oh, they caught up. The formation waited for them. Because I was trying to pull them out, but then they the formation waited for the archers until they got back into formation. It sucked. Hey, Mikta. Um, hi. Are there any changes to rune magic? Um, hey, buddy. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. But um, we'll 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 definitely be getting a runesmith during this campaign, and we'll have a quick look at his skill tree and stuff, and see if there's anything different. Um, but uh, I didn't notice anything different when I was playing previously. Uh, I don't think. Um, yeah. I, no, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, bombs to drop on stuff like this. Stationary targets where they formed a blob. A blob. Try, I find when I try and drop them on, drop the bombs on moving targets, it's like frustrating because they, um, because they move. They dodge the bombs on legendary. Is that satisfying? <laughs> that was just for you, ambivalent. Just 
un unbridled carnage. Oh, Guts of Rivia. Thanks, oh man, thanks for the super chat. Uh, do dwarves now have a fast travel system? I vaguely remember seeing that on another video. Could have been a fever dream. No, they do in fact, they do in fact have fast travel now. That's, um, I, I don't really know uh, much about it, but that's actually what I want to try out. Like, um, yeah, that's kind of the whole point of the stream. I want to try and do one of those major grudges and set up the underway, underway, um, travel. Um... I kind of, I guess I kind of want to do a bit like what I did with the Empire campaign. Like, I don't really want to confederate the dwarfs. I want to kind of, you know, um, I want to, oh, I guess we can confederate some. I don't know. Yeah, no, I guess we can. I, I don't mind confederating when I play Thorgrim. I just hate confederating Thorgrim when I'm playing as other dwarfs because I feel like Thorgrim should be the king. Hey, Bad Miracles just gifted one message about membership. Thanks, Bad Miracles. You're a legend. The very thought of the Dowie and the Dowie Zara in Alliance sickens me. Exactly. Exactly, Kev. Anyone who even asks the question should be passed out, castigated, tarred and feathered, clapped in irons. Should shave their head in shame at the very suggestion. <laughs> Curb's like, I'm just chatting. I was just chatting. Growth. Um, I actually, I didn't notice they, I noticed that they seem to have a lot more replenishment with the DLC, but, um, but, uh, I'm not sure if there's much different with the replenishment apart from this, the post battle replenishment, as far as this free LC's update is, updates concerned. Uh, have we got enough movement? Have you got enough movement to sack and occupy this? Yeah, we should do. Shouldn't we? The High King. Easy. Send me to vengeance. So we didn't get Gorog from sacking it. Oh, uh, we didn't get Gorog from occupying it either. Okay. We used to get Gorog from occupying, I thought. Yeah, yeah, we did a smooth Hi. backspace. Good. Grimnir's axe first. Backspacing is cheating. Did Gorog get the move removed? No, we had Gorog on the on the battle on the um, main battle, um, but um, but yeah, when I occupied the settlement in the old in the old patch, I think I think when you occupy a settlement, you automatically got Gorog. But um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I sacked it first and then I occupied it afterwards. But I I, know, I wouldn't have thought that would have made a difference. All right. Uh, have we got any... Oh yeah, these traits are all different now. There's like new ones. Wealthy. Cunning is the same as the old one. Hardy is a new one, I think. Physical resistance. Thungni is a new one. Spell resistance and reduce, reduce cooldown for rune magic. Um, I was hoping we are going to get a Grungni Lord, of course, but... Who 
physical resistance is pretty solid. You can't go wrong with that. I want this shared cooldown now, I think, though. I think shared cooldown is cool for runesmiths, because otherwise you just end up using Wrath and Ruin constantly and nothing else. I was thinking I wanted to get a Grungy Lord to and to um, put here, um, and then there wasn't a Grungy Lord, so I just got whatever Lord, but I should have put them here. I don't know like what the point of having him there is. Okay, he can just make it into Reinforce, so I guess that's still fine. Um... Should we go for the gem mine stuff first? I used to go for growth, but nowadays I feel like... 2,300. 2,300. Get gemstones as well, though. Yeah, now I sort of think it's money is what you want. The Grudge Settlers and their normal counterparts. Um, I thought the Grudge Settlers were just the same, except for they have a special ability. So, um, yeah, so that's their stat line. Unit has bonus versus infantry, and unit has shield breaker. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, we can check... Um, oh, actually, let's check the hammer, because we've... Oh, no, actually, we don't have one of those. Um... Yeah, check the coil. I don't know. Just like remember that, I guess. And then, um, vengeful rude lord. Go and look up coralers. Where are the coralers? Right. Uh, it's you know, twenty-four, twenty-two, thirty. 16, 22, 160, 118. Yeah, same stats. Everything's the same except for what it says there. So they got the same stat line as a normal one, but they've just got these specialization things at the bottom. So Quarrelers, the Quarrelers have bonus versus infantry and shield breaker. The Slayers have sundering attacks and extremely daring death blow. Grudge throwers have uh, shrapnel projectiles and they do monstrous impacts, which slows down um, the targets that they get shot by. That's actually pretty crazy. And there's, you can get that for... Oh, actually, yeah, that's the DLC thing. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty crazy because you can be like shooting some cavalry or something and if you hit them, then it reduces their speed by 60%. So then you can hit them more, you know. Um, Guardian for these longbeards plus expert charge defense. Um, I think we've already got Guardian on our hammers because of Thorgrim, so we don't really need that, but yeah. Um, these guys got Frostbite attack, which makes their enemies slower so they can keep... They can hunt them down and kill them easier, I guess. That's kind of cool, I guess. So if they get into melee, they should be able to keep their enemies like f from getting away. Um, I'm not sure how well it actually works, but we'll give it a try. And um, Frenzy is really good. Plus 10 melee attack on a, on a damage dealing unit like this. It's pretty cool. Um, increased range. Okay, cool. What's the normal range on an Iron Drake? Um, and flammable attacks. Oh, they, their attacks cause weakness to fire. So they basically do 20% extra damage. Wow, those guys are pretty good. Um, uh, normal ones are range 80. Oh, wow, so they're heaps longer range. Yeah, yeah, normal's 80, they're 120. So that's crazy. Almost hit you with the display. No, yeah, almost, uh, almost let it slip. Um, We should, we should probably try to... We probably should try to confederate Belagar so we can get his sweet free heroes. Um, My anger burns bright. Retake the realms. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we screwed up there. Yeah, I kind of screwed up there. Because I'm not sure if I take this next turn, I'm not sure if I can reach from there to there in one turn. Normally, I think I like to take this with the second Lord. Like, you recruit a second Lord, take this with the second Lord. Thorgrim goes past, and then he can take high place on the third turn. But, um, but yeah, that's all right. We'll just... We can just play slightly, slightly non-optimally. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. 
Tier zero. No, they're tier one, aren't they? Oh. Oh wow, Dwarf Warriors are tier one. Man, if Dwarf Warriors are tier one, a tier sorry, tier zero. If Dwarf Warriors are tier zero, then free company militia should be tier zero as well. Uh, yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah, I was actually mentioned that at the start of the stream, but I'd forgotten. Yeah, yeah, Confederation is different now. We can just um, we can just do it with the grudges. Um, Aeranthiol says, Mercy, can we see stats of the units that were moved down in tier? Thunders, hammers, troll hammers, plus the hero skills. Have they changed or are they just the same? Um, I can mouse over them if you want to. Yeah, I don't. I don't know as what, yeah. But the stats haven't changed, have they? Aren't the stats still the same? Uh, Iron Drake's flame cannons, brimstone gun, gyrocopters also had their change in how their attack animations and damage work. Iron Drake now arc gouts of flame over the heads of other troops. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of these units have changed, Aaron Thor. They just they just got moved around in what tier they're available on. I always thought the tier three um, tier three for slayers was weird because, like, has anyone ever built this building like in any campaign ever? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, unless you're playing as Ungram, like I didn't like I don't think I've ever had that building in any campaign except for when you play as Ungram and you start with one and you have to keep it. <laughs> um but yeah um but yeah so all the a lot of the heroes got moved down to tier two to make them available quicker um but the but to increase their capacity you still have to um go up to tier three um uh, yeah, is there anything else uh oh, probably these buildings probably got changed as well um yeah i think this is a bit different now corruption in adjacent props pro there so it's control and also corruption, and as well as dwarf kegs. Um, yeah. Yeah, Slayers being higher tier than Iron Drakes is weird. Like, why would anyone ever recruit Slayers from there? I don't really get it. But um, tier 4 Iron Breakers. <clears throat> What do you want to? What do you want to check? That's troll hammer torpedoes. I don't think any of the units have changed. Trade building gives fat income now. Yeah, five hundred forty. Jesus. Wow. Okay, that's cool. So wow, dwarves are rich now. So you can, in a normal tier three settlement, you can rock seven hundred and sixty gold. That's even more than Dark Elves. They must, is that like the highest that you can make out of any single set? And yeah, I think I think Dark Elves can make 750 out of their minor settlement building. Um, so yeah, they beat Dark Elves by 10. Check ranges, please. Why are we checking all these units? They just stay all the same. None of, none of them has changed. All right, that'll do. Let's play some actual game. Send me to vengeance. Onward. Check out the troll hammer's range. Why do we give a shit about the troll hammer's range? I haven't even got any troll hammers. Jesus. The troll hammer's range is 170. Oh shit, that's crazy. Didn't it? Wasn't it? Was it always like that? No, it wasn't. They didn't have that long range before, did they? Torpedo is now 170. That is pretty cool. All right, fine. I'm glad I checked it out when I. <laughs> All right, cool. Um. But yeah, I, 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 like, I do want to show new th things, but I don't want to just sit here for like an hour just talking and not doing anything at all. So yeah, I'll try to like space it out a little bit. Oh, yeah, the tech tree is totally different now. I haven't actually figured out what I want to do with my tech tree now. Um, but like when I was playing the other day, I was thinking like, if you want to go for growth, then you go here, obviously. Growth, boom, st done straight away. And then if you want to get... Um, 
Oh, I lost it now. Yeah, yeah, so if you want to get... Um, yeah, so if you want to... Yeah, so if you get the growth here, and then if you want to get growth there, you've got to unlock seven technologies. So if you want to save money, you could kind of go like that or whatever, but that's going to take you 17 turns. But you could just go like eight and then just go like one and one. So you get three technologies there in 10 turns and then do the same on this side. So if you want to spend a thousand gold, a thousand oath gold, then you could unlock um, underway trade in like 10 turns. Oh, the money buildings are mutually exclusive. Oh, okay, no worries. Thanks for that, Colbin. Yeah, I didn't actually notice that before. So, sorry. So, just to rewind on that. Um, yeah, you can't you can't build both of these. Um, Colbin just Colbin just said you can only choose one or the other of these. So yeah. So okay. So Dark Elves still have the best money buildings. <laughs> All right, um, can we do anything with diplomacy? Do we know about Karl Franz? Oh, yeah, we do. Be at peace, for He's at war with the Beastmen. I'll join you in a war with the Beastmen. Uh, all right, he who, he who fights the Beastmen with me shall be my brother. My Sigma, yes. Ready. That way from another hold arrive. Aye. Some trade. So we can still we can still diplomacy the other lords to confederate them. Uh, can you confederate uh oh we don't have any of the other legendary lords, so we don't know. You can't still confederate them using um can't still confederate them using di diplomacy as well, can you? You have to use this. So that's my set of grudges. That's theirs. Total set of grudges needed to confederate him is 15,000. So do you need 15,000 total or do you need 15,000 more than their total? Because I remember seeing something about saying like you have to have more grudges than them or something. Um... So yeah, so I'm guessing if they if they get like yeah, fifteen thousand plus theirs, yeah. So if they get like five thousand grudges or whatever, then we need to have twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> Satisfying the grudge, nice name. Oh dear. AI seems bad at selling grudges. Yeah, I imagine they would never, you know, AI is never as efficient as the player, are they? Yeah, I think my number one priority is going to be Confederate and Grumbrindle. Because, um, because, yeah, Grumbrindle, we need to bring him home, you know? Hey, how you going, Andrew Jones? Welcome. Retake the realms. All right. We mark another. Wipe out the trespasses. Groom ah. ah. Ricky. I'm going. Ah. Ah. Mm, I should have repaired this last turn, actually. It's not that expensive. Master of Runecraft. Oh, did I forget to recruit? <laughs> Crap. 
<laughs> See, you guys asked me too many fucking questions. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to recruit after all that. That's all right. It's part of my new. Um, it's all part of my new um, fiscal responsibility system. All right, we'll have to. We're gonna have to corner camp even harder than we did before. Oh, I hate it when you've got these uh, like weird areas that you can't go into just for no reason. That really shits me. Let the vengeance begin. In the frugal strat. Yeah, that's right. This is all intentional. I'm saving money. Yeah, that's really annoying. Um, we could set up over here, but it's kind of weird. For the Karas Anchor, they have wronged us. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, Perry. I'm just um, playing it now. Like the swords behind my chair, yeah, they're they're, uh, they're handy. Got to keep your battle throne fully armed, just in case. I'm like my my streaming my streaming um, room is actually right next to the front door, so anyone who comes into the house has to walk past me. This is so this is like it's it's my scheme it's my streaming studio and it's also like the guard house for our house, so that's why I've got like weapons. Oh, I'm like the big fat lazy guard dog that doesn't do anything. The burglars would probably just step over me. Man, I wish I had a couple of extra units of, uh... Wish I had a couple of extra units of, uh, warriors. Yeah, I was just about to buy those warriors, and then I was like, Oh, the warriors are tier zero, what the hell? Yeah, this is a gyro bomber. It used to be a single entity, now it's four. But there's some sort of bug with it because they don't replenish their health after the battles. No, Jorobons are still trash at the moment because they're bugged. But they're, um, I mean, this is pretty good though. It's doing some damage. I mean, no, it's not trash, but it's just, yeah, I wish that it got all of its health back. That would be really good. Yeah, I think we're going to have to use, um, we're going to have to make careful use of our bombs this time around. Just straight up, just drive over them and drop bombs. I feel like I'm gonna get the crap shot out of me, but we'll see how we go. Pretty, um, they're pretty keen not to attack me, but they would have, um, 
they would have come after us for now, by now. I think they're coming now. Yeah, these shards are getting effed up. Yeah, the gyros are pretty screwed. They're not going to, uh, uh... They're not going to have a super fun time trying to replenish them back up with health only. Thank you, yeah. Needs a... Well, the gyro bomber definitely won that for us, but uh, you know, at what cost? At what, at what cost? Shift plus one, yeah. Shift is shift plus numbers to use your abilities over here. Didn't lose any models, but they, yeah, these guys they should instantly replenish if you don't use any lose any models. But they're bugged, 
Um, so they, uh, yeah, they, you have to heal them manually, like, you have to heal them as if they're a single entity really slowly. So that sucks. Oh yeah, look at the hammerers, they just... Uh, if we can get... Uh, we lost them now. If we had have kept on them, because they've got the frostbite, they were slowing them, but yeah, they screwed it up. <clears throat> yeah, it did work for a second, but then I accidentally like didn't target on them. Uh, yeah, no, the, so the thing with the gyrocopters, it's definitely a bug. Um, it was because they used to be single entities, so they didn't used to heal up automatically at the end of battles because they were single entities. And when they changed them to have four, they didn't they didn't get rid of that single entity. They, one of the devs confirmed it's a, probably a bug. They didn't try to fix it. So hopefully if they do a hot fix, it'll get fixed. Now, one of the other creators already raised it, and yeah, one of the devs responded and confirmed. Um, oh yeah, sorry everyone if, um, sorry anyone who tried to join my stream earlier and that it was like left running all day, or left running for about two hours, um, after I, yeah, I'd stopped broadcasting but the stream was still running on YouTube so it was probably confusing some people that were trying to join and seeing a black screen. Grudge units are like sacred spawnings, yeah exactly. Doesn't the Master in Agrogni give a missile resistance to everyone around the um, user, not the actual user? Grudge units don't... No, they don't have improved stats, but they have special abilities. They have, like, extra abilities. Yeah, so normally I would now occupy this with this guy, and then he would be able to move out further and, like, go into ambush stance or... Well, maybe not ambush stance, but, you know, whatever. Master of Runecraft. Onward. Is there a new heal ability for the war machines? Um, no, I haven't seen it. There isn't... There's no... The engineers didn't get any heal or anything. That was the thing I was thinking they might have gotten a heal or something, but... But no. There might be... Yeah, I don't know. Runeforge will be accessible once you attain 200 Oath Gold. Hey, Liz has been a member for 31 months. Welcome, Liz. Send me to vengeance. Any of these grudges changed? 31 months, wow. Nearly three years now. Mm. Ready? Yeah, I might do some... I'm not really doing renames during this early access period too much because it's a bit busy, but I might do some renames at some point, but I'm just, you know, yeah. Do it sporadically. It's been a long time. Now, thank you for the continued support. Uh, what do we want to do with... Um Oh, this guy didn't get it. Okay, I noticed because Empire I noticed have they on their Iron Wield or whatever, they have 15% increased XP gain. Hey, Ringar's been a member for 34 months as well. Welcome, welcome. 
Wingo's just showing off that he's been a, a member for three more months than you, Liz. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, don't really know what to go with um, Thogrim. Um, I was joking, I was kind of talking about going for like melee focus before, but I wasn't really serious about that. Hammerers, yeah. Buffs melee, art. yeah, I was sort of thinking of melee, it could be cool. Growth plus 10. Oh yeah, the growth. Oh yeah, the growth buildings are huge now. They so the normal growth is 20, this is 30, and this is 40. So they're just like kind of like normal growth like everyone else. They don't have the reduced growth anymore. That's right. Can you get Ulrika and Felix? Uh yeah, I think I can get Ulrika actually, yeah. Yeah, I think you can get Ulrika for the dwarfs, can't you? Is there a new technology for the hammerers? Physical resistance, armor, and weapon strength and encourage. Cool. All right, I'm going to recruit some um, warriors before I forget this time. Get another, get another Thungni Rune Lord. Get all the, all the Thungni Rune Lords. Oh, how did that become two-handed warriors? I wanted these ones. That was weird. Yeah, artillery deflection is a new thing. That's pretty cool. Hi. Um, I guess it doesn't matter too much because we can always change it later. Yeah, it'll get fixed at some point. What's the 10 referring to? Oh, 10 legendary grudges that we haven't achieved yet. Yeah, fair enough. So we've got to take the North World's Edge Mountains. Death Pass, Blightwater, Blood River Valley. Okay, that doesn't actually seem too hard, really, does it? As long as Ungram doesn't, you know... We're gonna uh, we're gonna need to confederate Ungram really to get it done though, aren't we? Yeah, I guess we should try to confederate everyone, try and get as many grudges as we can. So, the High King acts. So what's going on here? So it says grudge settler quarrelers and slayers added to available grudge settlers, but what, that's like no, that's like at the end that they get added. And uh, once the nine turns are up, I guess. No, no, I'm a bit confused about how the grudge reckoning thing works. Yeah, I was thinking I wouldn't mind some blue line as well, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you get them in the agents. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So what's it? So the twenty percent, twenty-seven percent. That's is that like how good we're going at, at like a cheat? Like we've gotten twenty, twenty-seven percent towards maxing out the rewards. 
and eight turns is how long we've got left to max out the rewards. And then at the end, we get whatever rewards we get up to. Is that pretty much what's going on? So we're 27%, so we're in this one, 25 to 49. And if we were at 50, then we'd be in this one. So that's, yeah, so that's what we're going to get at the end. Growth plus one, you know, growth plus 10, etc. Wherever you end is the bonus that you get. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Onward. Aye. It's musical chairs, you get what it lands on. Sounds good. Instruction cost for all building. Oath gold per turn. Um, do we need oath gold? We don't really need oath gold, do we? I need money, yeah. Yes! Iron weld! I'll do it! What? I do! Heading out! Retake the realm! All right, I guess we're doing it. I feel like, yeah, I feel like if I had 14 units right now, I'd feel a lot safer taking on Scar Skarsnik. We like uh, we haven't got access to the forge yet. We've got to get 200 um, Oath Gold first. But we can check it out once we get in there. Fuck off. Uh, I hate that. I hate that. There's like this weird lag thing where like if you like if you click on the button too fast, it like doesn't register where your mouse is. So like I don't know if you was watching at that exact moment, but I clicked on the to siege to siege it and then it just like fucking thought I did manual battle, but I didn't. Good old input delay, exactly. Now all my other two lords miss out on their XP. I miss out on my magic item drop chance. I'm, f I'm feeling like having a good old whinge now. I went to all the trouble of uh, wasting all those wages, paying those two dwarf lords for two turns. <clears throat> all right, we might be a little bit more aggressive about this one since we're, since it's only a small, a small force. Sounds like a grudgeon. It's a shame if you hit ult there for by accident. Yeah, I should, yeah. Actually, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> oh my god, there's been some sort of error. It's a crash. I was actually playing on... Um, I was playing on... Um, like I was saying how the it defa it defaults to... Um, what do you call it? It defaults to um, inc incremental saves, like non-legendary style saving. So you have to manually set it to Iron Man if you want to play on Iron Man. So we went to all the trouble of setting it to Iron Man. So we've got to take advantage of it by using the auto, the auto save at the start of the battle. It wasn't a misclick, Clock Monkey. Fucking look at this guy. Everyone's on my side except for you, Clock Monkey. He's all like human error. You have to live with it. <laughs> uh. 
Oh yeah, you can just load. You can just load and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always, I, I'm just, it's old. I'm it's just old habit. You just dislike the constant auto save lag. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. It was um. I'll just, I better not click the, I better give it a few seconds before I click it in case it fucking decides I'm clicking over here instead. Um, but yeah. It could have been the launch button for nuclear missile. I know, it could have been anything. Hey, Hayden Thomas, welcome to the Patron of the Sciences. Oh, thanks, Hayden, for becoming a new member of the channel. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, Lord of Clan Borgrim. Yeah. Alright, I want him to get in there as well. So we can get more magic item drop chance. Alright, now now I'm gonna get all the magic item drop chance that I deserve. Justice, that's what it is. That's what the stream is all about. It's all about justice. It's about wrongs put right. No input lag is going to defeat me. Hey, yeah, I don't know. I, I never, I don't really notice the auto save because I don't play on anything other than legendary. So I always have the auto save. Anyway, so it's like, yeah, it just seems normal to me. But it doesn't really bother me. Like, I think I just, I don't know, I guess I just think of it like a cigarette break or something, you know, because, you know, cause these strategy games can be quite, I don't know, tense, I guess. So it's, um, it's, yeah, it's not, sometimes it's nice to just have like a, ah, we'll just have a little, just cop a little pause for a second while we wait for this battle to start, you know. It's like when you're watching a movie and they have that little like that little fade to black part before and then they have like just dead blacks for a while before they like load in the next scene and it's just kind of like a little palette cleanser and you just you know just have a rest for a second. Where are my dudes? Here they are. Actually, we could probably just maneuver all the way around. Come over here and even have a bit of a uh, bit of high ground action or flat ground at least. Oh, they're attacking. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Bastards. My plan is ruined. Another grudge. <laughs> yeah, they attacked me while I was trying to flank them. Fight fair, you greenskins. You're supposed to just stand there and die. This is against the rules of warfare laid down by the ancestors. Well, let's get some rune of speed on our... No, oh, we can't reach because we're too slow. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, 
Oh shit. Incoming. Dry Bomber looks much stronger now, you reckon? Oh, nice. Yeah, it seems pretty good, but I never really used it much before, so. I just, I wish they would fix this bug with the healing, though. Oh, where's the, oh, the hammer has got two slit leading. Yeah, my hammers don't seem to be taking full advantage of their, um, their abilities. Yeah, the bombs are pretty good. I'm guessing the bombs do less damage now because you drop four of them at once, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of interest in this DLC for sure. Hey, Aranthiel. Arith Have you tried the shield wall formation? Oh, what? What's the shield wall? Who's got shield wall formation? The dwarfs? I mean, the warriors? Or is this a joke? Oh, the tech, the tech, right, yeah. So I thought you meant like... Um, VC is in vampire ca vampire counts. Um, now nah, vampire counts are still good, Janky. Um, I um, yeah, I've played a heap of vampire counts campaigns. If you want to play along with one of my streams, um, or um, hmm. Scars, Nick. It is time. I kind of want to force me up there. Um, yeah, I've, made, I've got a few videos on my um, on my channel about vampires, but um, also, yeah, I watched a bunch of streams, so yeah, you can follow along with them if you want to hear me, like, discuss vampires at length. Good. But yeah, no, they're still pretty much the same. Just you can't do infinite vampire spam now. You just have, like, four or five. If you play as Isabella or Vlad, then yeah, you just have um, three or four. Um... Destroy them! The High King acts! Move the throng! I'm going! To war! The runes are cast! Throw bearers! Let's march! Oh, you want to look at the shield wall? Shield wall technology. Uh, this one, shield wall of Gromroll for iron breakers. Um, can use if out of melee. Mass plus one hundred. Missile block chance plus twenty. Missile resistance plus ten percent. Ballistic plating, which I believe is the thing that lets them block um, artillery shots. Yeah, and cannot run. Wow, that's so cool. Um, yeah, thanks for the heads up on that one. That, that, that's pretty cool. Oh, we did, I sort of moused over it before, but we didn't really check it out. Oh. Interlock ability shield wall for shielded warriors and longbeard units. Mass plus 100, missile block chance, missile resistance, cannot run. Uh, so they get this minor version of it, but they don't have 
the um, armor plating so they're not immune to like artillery. But iron breakers can block artillery. That's what ballistic plating means, right? That they can block artillery, yeah? Oh man. I want to just go full 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 warrior. Um, full warrior. Let's let's fucking go full Roman legions. Just all about the shield balls. Let's forget about any of this economic bullshit and just go full war. It's really cool. Um, lords and rune lords skill trees got some love. Yeah, they both lords and rune lords both got some stuff. Um, yeah, they got this. The rune lords got this. This these three options. They can do melee attack for the whole army, uh, physical resistance and armor for the whole army, or vigor loss reduction and replenishment for the whole army. I'd say probably out of those, the armor and physical resist, I think, is the sexiest. Um, that one's probably the best one. Um, and yeah, the um, the lords got the same thing. They got like three, not the same ones, but they got their own <laughs> different ones. And, um, and yeah, then we've got this as well. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that the I'm glad that the Lord's got something, but I feel like um, but I feel like the runes the runesmiths are still way better. Like, yeah, like even like I thought that the rune I thought that the normal Lord's sort of niche would be being like full on military leaders, but I feel like that the runesmiths are, are better at um, at being generals as well. So I don't really know, yeah. Well, as you can see, I have just, I'm just recruiting runesmiths. So I'm not recruiting any, any of the lords. Lords are still good if you want to have just a tank. If you want the tankiest possible tank. Oh, Grungni. I do like me a little bit of Grungni. So he might come out and try and lightning strike this lord, but then if he can retreat, and then I can just... Retake the realm. I should be able to just kill him then, shouldn't we? Most battle replenishment's pretty awesome, yeah. Alright, let's, uh... Let's get ready for this onslaught. Should I get rid of this, so uh, guess get rid of this growth building and build another money building, maybe? I don't know. Oh, Barrack Vars are already getting rolled. Is there ever going to be a game where Barrack Vars doesn't get rolled? Yeah, I really want to just go full, like, full warriors. Got three archers. This thing's got shooting as well, doesn't it? Yeah, crap. Well, I guess we gotta fight it. The Ragnarok spider can shoot, so I'm a bit worried if I send the um, gyros after the Ragnarok, the Ragnarok will shoot it down. Because I don't want to, I want, I want to use those bombs, you know. So we want to be up, we want the high ground. 
Yeah, see, my, 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 pretty much my entire plan is just wait for them to blob up on my shield wall and then drop bombs on them and hope that works. Seems like they removed every single dwarf weakness and overpowered the dwarfs to higher hell. Yeah, it seems about like that. For the ancestors. Move! Move now! No, I don't I don't know anything. I don't even know where you how you get it or where it is or anything about it. I don't know. I didn't even I didn't even see a hint of it. Now is the time to play the dwarfs. Yeah, this is perfect dwarf time. It's at Talibheim. Oh, okay. So is it always at Talibheim? I'm pretty sure I occupied Talibheim and I didn't get any like message or anything. Oh, is oh is it like you got to build the building? Could kill the um oh, fuck. Yeah, if I could kill the uh the spider, that would be cool, but How do we lose vision of a giant fuck of spider? Just went slightly over that hill and went invisible. Where's the spider? Oh, did he? Oh, that's Skarsnik. Skarsnik's got a special ability that makes um, his stuff go invisible in like a radius around him. Short work of those squeak hoppers. Oh, what? How did they get wrecked? some damage. Giant 
Hold the line, Dowie. Now you're terror at it over here. Flow, flow. Charge! Run, run, run. Move! Vengeance! Range fast! Range fast! Giant up on it! Understood, Lord! Will do! Strike out! Let's be about this! Anu! The bomber is a god? Yeah, it's pretty good, eh? Um, yeah, the gyro bomb is doing a good job. I'm so glad I was careful with it and didn't let it get shot. I don't think it took hardly any damage in that in that encounter. Um, and yeah, we would have got wrecked if we didn't look after it. Yeah, the gyro bombs have changed now. They're like a multi. They used to be a single entity. Now they're like a multi multi entity unit. Yeah, we'll try and he's gonna run away after this, so we'll try and do a bit of damage. If we can. Imagine a sixteen model troll hammer torpedo with 170 range. Um how many models are there in troll hammers? My, I feel like my hammers keep like going into guard mode or something like they don't because they've got these like the hammers have got um, they've got frostbite so once they get into melee with something they should be like slowing them down so they can't get away sort of thing but it doesn't seem to work because they keep kind of like stopping all the time I think it, maybe it's because they bump into friendly troops and the friendly troops kind of mess them up Thorgrim took a bit of a flog, and he was taking on two heroes at once, though. Hey, Arno cannot, Arno cannot connect. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. All right, I want these thunderers, to, I mean these hammers, to get some um, some XP. No, I can slow them down by meleeing them with the gyros. Here we go. 
see now they've got into melee with them right so they should be slowing them down i guess but maybe it's only slows down the entity that they actually hit so if they hit like this guy it doesn't like slow these guys down Yeah. Oh well, whatever. All right. Well, we gave him a good. We gave him a good flogging. Yeah, he'll not forget that one in a hurry. So yeah, this is the big change now. We get post-battle replenishment. Oh yeah, see that as well. So you can tell that it's, that it thinks it's a single entity because it doesn't get it doesn't get its heal. Even though it didn't lose any entities, it didn't get healed to full. And also, when you do post-battle replenishment, it's not it's not healing it because it still treats it as a single entity. Greenskins have a low amount of grudges. For example, Scrag would have like eight hundred at that point. What are you saying, Nikakoi? You're saying if I want to pump my grudges faster, I should fight somebody other than fight somebody other than Greenskins. Be wary, though, for while the potential rewards are great, so too are the perils. Strength ranks 112. Yeah, that plus 20% uh, ambush defense chance is actually pretty nice. What? Thank them! We mark another grudge. Drang! Lord of Clan Borgrim. Armed and ready. Master of Runecraft. Casting the runes. Vengeful Rune Lord. Grenier is with us. Yeah, we'll give this uh, the ambush defense chance as well. Yeah, I've got. I haven't quite got a. I haven't quite got a dwarf beard today. I've got an empire beard. But it's just a just a mere beardling beard in terms of dwarfs. Yeah, I did, I pretty like honestly, I pretty much just completely ignored the old grudge system. The only time I ever thought about the grudge the old grudge system at all was when I thought oh, I wish my grudges were higher so I could get more slayers. That's pretty much like the only time I ever thought about the grudge system before. Um, oh, occasionally I'd be like, oh sweet, I got some free oath gold, you know? So I think the new oath gold, the new grudge system, it's heaps more, it's heaps more like, um, it's heaps more interesting in terms of telling a story, you know, like all the great grudges like provide you with this framework of like classic, kind of matchups between the dwarfs and like different enemies and stuff so that sort of helps tell the story of the dwarfs I feel like and and like the whole like age of reckoning thing kind of make, makes it yeah this I don't know I, I'm really into that whole idea of you know games as like like not story games but like non-story games like procedurally generated type games and um like I'm interested in like um, that emergent storytelling type of thing but but it's like but yeah, like it, you can't just have everything just be like the player imagines it. It's nice to have a bit of story, kind of story in the game without it being, well, still maintaining the sandbox thing, you know? I don't know. I don't know if any of that made sense, but I feel like, yeah, I feel like the old system was very, like it didn't really have much character, you know? Like it just, 
it was like, oh yeah, the dwarves have grudges. That's cool. But this, the new system, I feel like it tells more of a story of the dwarven people, kind of, you know. And it gets you more into the, gets you more into it. Is Age of Reckoning too OP? I don't really play, like, I don't really play competitively, you know what I mean? I guess, like, I think, um, actually, yeah, mate, actually, mate said the other day, like, with Warhammer 3, you have to, um, adjust the difficulty yourself, you know? Like, you, you basically, like, set your own objectives in the game to, like, and make those objectives as difficult as you want them to be, you know what I mean? Like, if you... If you just want to like not lose, you know, or whatever, then it's probably not going to be that challenging, you know, if you're experienced. But, but yeah, I don't really play like in a competitive fashion, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to compete with myself to get the fastest kill or the quickest end game or whatever. I just want to, um, I don't know, I just want to have my own little adventures, you know, do my thing. Um, so yeah, what I was trying to say is, um, yeah, uh, depends what you mean by overpowered, you know, basically. Um, but yeah, my, my sort of take on it is, um, it's a bit like the Chaos Dwarfs. Like the Chaos Dwarfs are kind of overpowered, you, you might say, but they're still fun. Like they're not overpowered in a way where you're like, oh, it's so easy. It's just a face roll. There's no point even playing the game. You know what I mean? It's not like that. It's like the Chaos Dwarfs are overpowered, but there's heaps of stuff that you need to do and then you get rewarded with cool overpowered stuff so it's like it's a it's powerful but in a fun way you know I, I don't know that's how i feel it is you know anyway so i feel like hopefully this is a bit like that maybe it's maybe it's a bit unfair to compare anything to chaos dwarfs because i feel like chaos dwarfs was a bit of a bit of a creative assembly masterpiece But um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's too early for me, really. At this, I haven't played it enough to judge whether I think it's overpowered or whatever. But um, but my general impression, my general first impressions, is it feels more like I don't know, like the old dwarfs felt more like I like a like a grinding long war, like a grindy long war that you have to win, and if you ever lose, it's like it's totally the end of the world. Like if you lose one of your a tier four settlement or something, it's like, fuck, it'll take you, you may as well start a new campaign because you'll never build it back, you know? And like, and yeah, like, do you know, I don't know if that's a good explanation, but anyway, the, yeah, the, I feel like the old dwarves felt a bit like some grindy long war, whereas, which is which is sort of cool. That was sort of like their character, but the, the new dwarves, I feel, they feel more like an adventure. Like it feels more like an adventure, like your dwarves are going on an adventure. That's kind of how I, would characterize it, I guess. I just really want them to come across this bridge so I can choke point them. I mean, what's the point of having a choke point if I don't get to choke point them? Satisfy the grudge. Plow through. Move now. Oh shit! What the? What the fuck is that? Did um Skarsnik get? Oh, what? He's Skarsnik's product. Does he already have that? He's just shooting missiles at me. Yeah, but it's like turn three or some shit. Doesn't, shouldn't he have to like wait a while?
It's now the guy scuzzing the guy pee. I don't know. What the hell? Split him in twain. Pass me another squeaky. This one split. Yeah, I was wondering what kept like nuking my units in that previous battle. I just kept looking down and like there's a unit of miners with like 40% of their health gone. Hey, Renthiel. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it did seem like something was a little bit off with some of those units being available too early to me. Whoa. So this is this is an earlier build. So when you guys get the game, it's not going to be as messed up as this probably. Um, so yeah, there's still it's still um, at least a couple of weeks away. I think the game. So yeah. Could take Gorog, but I kind of want to keep getting that oath gold so we can get our things unlocked. Is that... That's gonna make it, yeah? Beautiful. Okay, um... might have blown it up. Hey, ETX. Yeah, sorry, the um, game crashed. Please hold. Some, I don't know what's going on there. Right. Uh, that one. Yeah, five point zero is looking really good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit. Yeah, kind of like some of the comments have been about like the game, you know, they're making the draws too strong and stuff like that. Um, I feel like I feel like Creative Assembly definitely seems to be leaning more towards the um, leaning more towards. It's just the game's just loading up. Um, leaning more towards the don't worry about making anything hard or you know difficult or making you work for anything just kind of like give every give everything to everyone for free kind of thing make just make it fun um which 
is which does kind of work you know what i mean it's kind of like what they did with um like with norska you know norska ha like has a, like had a very particular kind of theme about like them only being able to take coastal settlements and they didn't have any walls and um you know they had a really bad economy because they had to rely on raiding other cultures and all this kind of stuff and they just they couldn't really make it work so they just got rid of all that and just made them have a super strong economy and just be really easy and super powerful and like yeah, I mean, that works. It makes Norsco a lot more accessible so that people can play Norsco now and enjoy it. But, like, like I think it would have been better if they could have, like, kept, sort of kept a bit more to their original vision for Norska, but, and, but still fixed them, you know what I mean? Like, kind of fixed them, but still kept with their original vision a little bit. But, um, but if they... You know, but if they've only got limited resources and stuff, they can't do everything. And so for the short term, um, I think it was a good solution for them to just make Norska kind of like playable, you know, because I think for a lot of people, Norska was like unplayable. Like I sort of liked, I, I didn't mind it kind of because I, I would just, whenever I played Norska, I would just be like, yep, I'm in for a hell game this time, you know what I mean? So I just kind of accepted it, you know, but, um, but, um, but yeah, but anyway, so like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, I feel like that's kind of their design philosophy at the moment. It, you know, if they can't make, if they can't make their like more complicated or more, you know, like certain mechanics that have good and bad sides to them, you know, if they can't make that good and bad work well, they just get rid of the bad and just make it easy and powerful. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just a, I think it's just a, a thing that they're doing at the moment to ju just try to like, quickly make the game a lot more fun basically you know um and i think that's not a bad idea you know like if they, if they if they can just like quickly with limited resources just quickly make the game a lot more fun for most people then that that's probably you know that seems like a good idea Um, what else do we want to do? We want to make our gyro bomber do better. More ammunition, more range. More range would be good, wouldn't it? I feel like our gyro bomber, even though I've only got one gyro bomber, I feel like it's doing most of the work for the whole army. We should just put all our points into gyro bomber. That's it, throne bearers. Keep me upright. Ah! Yeah, I hate I hate buffs that don't do anything like that are so small that it's not like not even happy, worth having. Those testudo, um, those testudo abilities seem really cool though. Have you spoken to CA about the difficulty problem? I don't even know if there is a problem, you know? I don't really know what their objectives are or what they're trying to do, you know? I'm not um, I'm not part of the team. <laughs> I'm not part of the dev team. I'm not involved in the meetings. Plan on trying the regular gyrocopters. Um I kind of was just wanting to get more of these gyro bombers. I just wish they wouldn't I wish they weren't so like I wish they would get replenishment properly. Um, I, I've made a short video about it, Marcel. If you look on my channel, um, I think I've got a video called like Four Lord, the Rule of Four or something like that. Um, but yeah, you get more experience points because each Lord gets their own experience. You get more magic items. Um, 
and lords are units as well and they're powerful units and they level up and get even more powerful and you can stack items on them that makes them even more powerful so yeah lords are just better units than units most in most cases um well maybe not in most cases like in in certain ways they're better than normal units i guess But, um, but in the early game, like in the, at the start of the game, I don't always roll with four lords all the time throughout the whole campaign, but I almost always roll with four, four lords in the early game because I don't even have a full stack of 20 right now, right? So what have I, how many units have I got? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14. So I've got 14 units in my main stack and I've got three extra lords. So I've got 17 total units. You know, if I didn't have those three extra lords, I only have 14 units instead of 17, you know? So it's so see so yeah, it's it's probably like that's probably the key point. Like I said, I made a little video about it, but that'd be the key points. Basically, more magic items, more experience, more total experience earned for your faction, and lords are units too. So it just makes you be able to recruit faster. Like if you're recruiting two units and a lord, then you're recruiting three units, you know, per turn. The law of four, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, sounds right. It's not really a law. You don't. You definitely don't need to. Don't need to roll with multiple lords. But um. But yeah, I think it's quite good to always go with at least two lords. Almost always. Now nah, the Jar Bomber did not always have four units. That's the change in this um, DLC. They got they got four now instead of one. The AI seems to be a lot more resistant to charging these days, or a bit, oh, I don't know, is it a bit more? Oh man, my Jaro's getting shot. Justice to the enemies of dwarf kind. CSN tends to nerf the new DLC after it's been out for a bit. Yeah, that's true. They do. They do usually nerf the um, nerf them once they've been out for a bit. Uh, shift one is the key to drop the bombs. So on your left side, you got um, shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, etc. So all yeah, start. I think they start at the top and they go count crosswise, kind of yeah, clockwise. Um, and you can also do it with your spells. I think the spells are the spells alt alt one, alt two, alt three, or is it control? No, controls groups. I, mean, I think it might be shift for this and maybe alt for this or something. But yeah, I usually just click. It's just with the... I Pretty much the only time I ever use the keys is pretty much for gyro bombers and gyrocopters. Uh, 
It is alt, yeah. Brian just confirms it's yeah. It's shift shift plus numbers for your um ability left side abilities, and alt plus numbers for your spells on the right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of just like to, um, I like to tailor each campaign, you know, in terms of like what sort of, like basically what I think I can achieve and how difficult I want it to be, you know, I guess, you know. So if I've got a really powerful faction where I know it's going to be pretty easy, I'll probably be quite ambitious about what I intend to do during the during the stream, you know? Whereas if it's quite a hard campaign or it's a new faction I've never played before or something, then my ambition might just be to, like, not die, you know? Um, this, I'm probably... He's not going to be able to underway over there far enough to be actually be able to attack, is he? Because I could initiate on him with that, but... I guess what I'm saying is, should I stay here and underway, or should I force march back around here? So we don't have any, we don't have a grudge. We don't have any artillery or anything. So yeah, it's like 28 grudges for that. Whereas if we go for like Scrag, well, I can't really see what he's got, but... Oh, okay. So the grudges actually are dynamic. I thought that, I thought the grudge number was just sort of like based on. Um, I thought it was just based on. Um, yeah, I thought it was just based on the value of the army or the value of the settlement. But yeah, check it out. It's actually really cool. So it's like they've got eighteen grudges because of this faction's actions. So these particular um, scabby eyed orcs have done some transgressions. They've trespassed or they've attacked some dwarfs or whatever. They've got eighteen. Key dwarf settlement. Um, oh, because this is like a settlement that the dwarfs want to conquer. I guess that that denotes how much we want it. So we continue. We consider Stone Mine Tower to be dwarf territory or whatever. So they get another sixty five grudges for that. And then because and then because we because they're greenskins, we blame them for all the transgressions of the entire greenskin race. So they get another 182 grudges grudges for that. That's pretty cool. I like I like blaming blaming individuals for you know the entire race's transgressions. That sounds like a good way to run things. Do, do Karak have a high dwarf score? I get. I would assume they would. Where's Karak eight peaks? You'd think that would. Yeah, look at Karak eight peaks. Key dwarf settlement six fifty, yeah, that's that's what yeah. So if it's like a settlement that you really want, then that makes it really high. Yes. Um. Yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, should I? I force march. I should probably just force march. Shouldn't I? I would have liked some replenishment, but. Onward, my anger burns bright, vengeful rune lord. Casting the runes. If you say so, Beardley. Armed and ready. All right. All right, let's um, let's get our uh, let's start getting our Grungni, Grungni system going. So we'll recruit this Grungni lord, and we'll do that. So we go Thane. Um, does 
is the this um Thomas Philpot, whatever his name, this guy Tom Philpot. He doesn't give you plus one capacity, does he? Nah. So we've already got maximum engineer capacity. So yeah, I would have if I didn't already have him, I would have built the um, engineer building and got the got the gyros to try them out. But um, but yeah, nah. But let's um, but yeah, we probably want to get some rune smiths. Because we can't get rune bearers without rune smiths, so that's kind of important. And then, um, mm, yeah, I might just go for melee. Pretty much just go melee, like long beards and stuff. And yeah, maybe we'll get some money. Pretty efficient. Not the Oath Gold one. Um, no, I wasn't really planning on the Oath Gold one. 30 per turn, 50 per Yeah, no, I don't think we really need it. Do we like... Uh, I guess we are getting Oath Gold pretty slowly now. I guess the Oath Gold one would. Mm. What do you want? Hmm. Is it worth um? Is it worth making stuff out of Oath Gold and selling it for money? Never really thought about that. But if we, if we um, if we stack up like. Actually, what's a build? There's probably a building that gives you oath gold. Like if we get if we get the gold settlement, if we take um yeah if we take Mount Gumbad, does that have like gold that gives you oath gold or something? Because yeah, if the if the gold if golden idols give you oath gold, and then we build the money building that gives you oath gold as well, the trade building, so we have double oath gold, and then we stick stack like twenty seven like uh. 27 runesmith heroes in there that give you plus oath gold per turn so we make like a mega oath gold factory but the problem is then like you have all these oath gold and you know like there'd be no point like you'd have all the items you want and you wouldn't have any other stuff to oath gold with but then if we could sell if we could make the oath gold into like green weapons and then sell them for like 200 gold each or something then we could potentially make a like a cottage industry out of melting down weapons maybe i don't know <laughs> Yeah. Can you salvage um, Oath Gold weapons? Some tech co tech cuts quite a bit. Yeah, the tech. So yeah, that's true. If we can get early tech, if we get early Oath Gold, then we can get those techs unlocked faster as well. Oh yeah, if we can fight this battle this next turn, then we could get some students out of this. But I don't reckon we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. Mm, alas. Um, all right. Onward. This action does not have my consent. Unstoppable. Tempt me not, dwarf. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly declare war on all the factions that are going to be wiped out. So I know that Temp I know that Sylvania will take out Temple off within the first five, six, seven turns. Um... Drippin' Fangs. Mighty am I, I. Eh? Where's that? <laughs> Horned am I. All right, well, I guess that's all there is. What? Oh, Barakvar's not at war with... Oh, Barakvar's not at war with these... With these guys. Did he... Did he just peace out with them, or did they take it when he wasn't settling it or something? I don't know. That's all right. Short! Exactly. Hey, Silver. Galbraz has something called an Oath Gold Mine. Okay. That's pretty good.
Oh, should I auto resolve this? Because if we auto resolve it, we wipe them. Whereas if, and then, because if we don't auto resolve them, then a lot of their stuff's going to survive and they're going to go back and they're going to replenish. It says low, but we know what low means, right? Fuck, we weren't taking attrition. Were we taking we weren't taking attrition, were we? Uh, I'll get I'll take how much captives we got? Oh, we only got 30 captives, so we'll get fuck all replenishment as well. It's gotta be one hit point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is what it is. Yeah, I was just, I mean, yeah, I was just trying to, like, <laughs> I was just trying to give these guys, like, a tiny bit of health. I know it was only 60, um, it was, you know, it was fuck all health anyway, but, yeah. Oh, we did make it. Glorious. All right, that's fine then. We're, we're good. It's all good. Bring them! Oh, we can underway under here. I kind of, yeah, I thought I got that idea from somewhere. I wasn't just making it up. Yeah, we should have just stayed there and taken the replenishment and then, um, oh no, we wouldn't have been able to attack then. No, no, it was all, it's all coming together. Plan's all working out. Oh, I forgot to disband the uh, Grungy guy. a healing potion or a uh, seed of rebirth or something. Five melee defense, five missile resistance. Missile block chance, physical resistance. I think... Mm, I think that... Yeah, we've got to go for the physical resistance, right? <laughs> Destroy them. Hey, Nathan. Oh, man. So generous. Thank you so much for that. Nathan just gifted. 10 most of the mad memberships on um, on YouTube. Much appreciated, buddy. Thank you. Um, I'm just, I'll be hot. I feel like I have to, I have to just, I have to just I can't use the gyro bombers. I feel like because they're gonna die for sure if I use them, and I can't. They can't bear the heartbreak. If if they died, it would just it would break me. Oh no worries, Nathan. Thank you for your support, buddy. You're really yeah, you're very generous. I appreciate it. I'd like to attack over here. Galbraz's Oath Gold Mine gives a thousand income for the High Elves. How is that relevant? Don't, don't bring, go and come in here with your elf love and talk. Fucking knife ear sympathizer.
Elf, elf love is like, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like being a communist in the McCarthyist era. Got to be constantly on the lookout for elf lovers. Knife ears, I know. What's he thinking? Uh, this battle, this battle doesn't look like it's going to be much fun. Um, this gun doesn't look like it's going to be much fun without the gyro bombers, I gotta say. All right, let's do this the old-fashioned way. We got no archers. Like, how do you cheese a how do you cheese a settlement with no archers? Oh, we've got a we've got a um, we do have a runesmith that's got wrath and ruin. One one runesmith with wrath and ruin. So we can just every like every like ninety seconds we can do one wrath and ruin until we eventually kill them all. Yeah, yeah, I've got one. I've got one dude with wrath and ruin with no cooldown reduction on it. Just a max max cooldown wrath and ruin. No problem. We got this. Handled. <laughs> Do you think the next DLC will be a rework for the vampire counts? Maybe. So, so many sieges are just wrapping around, yeah. Alright, let's kick the door down. I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna climb over the walls because I'm over that. Like fuck that noise. Buff their armor. Oh, didn't that buff their armor? Oh, physical resist, physical resist, yeah. so much trouble killing these I'm not sure why we're having so much trouble killing these pricks it's because of the it's because of the arc of fire maybe it's too high oh yeah that was a good hit Get it! 
Right, we're trying to stack up over here and then see if we can try and get some good blob going. I kind of want to put the coralers up on the walls because I think they get a bit of an advantage from shooting down the walls. Um, I wish I can serve. Yes! Debuff the, the trolls a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Thorgrim's gonna have a rest for a bit. Good call. Hey, Fizzman, did a five dollar super chat. Thanks a lot, Fizzman. You're a legend. Appreciate it, buddy. Really, uh, yeah, really helps out a lot. Hey, super chat. We're doing, I think we're doing alright. Still got a bit of less stuff left to work through, but. Any tips to avoid an itchy beard? Uh, no. Not really. Just, oh, I guess, well, yeah, no, you can't really avoid it. You just, the only way to avoid it really is to just never sweat you know, or anything, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, uh, you're pretty much going to get itchy beard if you sweat. I would say. Yeah, I guess it's like itchy. Anything, the more you scratch it, the more itchy it'll be. The more you irritate the skin, the more you grind, like, you know, grind bacteria into it and all that. It'll get more, yeah. Just don't, don't touch it.
but I get, but yeah, I feel like once you get an itchy beard, then it's too late. Then you're done because you're gonna keep scratching it. It's gonna stay, keep getting itchy. You know, shave it off, I guess. That's what I do, but I haven't gotten an itchy beard for a while. Actually, hmm. Actually, I was doing, I was doing a bit of, um, I was doing a bit of yard work recently. Um, on very hot days, so I was sweating a lot, and it didn't, yeah, it didn't get itchy. Yeah, so maybe it's not, maybe it's not about sweating. Yeah, I don't know actually. No, 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 no tips. I've gotten, I have gotten an itchy beard a few times. Maybe I've gotten an itchy beard like three or four times, and yeah, I just shaved it off. But I don't normally get it. The High King acts. Armed and ready. Our kin have come. Fetch the brewmaster. We drink. I suppose. Shaving off the blasphemy, yeah. If you have an itchy beard, you just do a um you just do a Vault Mar stream with full cosplay and with Vault Mustache. That's the only, that's the only, um, excusable reason to shave off your beard is so that you can, um, you can rock a Vulcan moustache. Well, we've dealt with Skarsnik. Oh, did I have a, oh no, no, that's right, yeah. The old grudge is you had to make sure you didn't kill Skarsnik because before you'd gotten like five kill, five, you know, battles and stuff and it was like, yeah. Yeah, the Northern World Edge Mountains. So we need Thorgrim to take this out. We need, so we need Hungrim to take out um, Azag. Oh yeah, so um what do we got here? Uh yeah, yeah, so oath gold so golden idols produce oath gold. So at maximum we could get fifty oath gold per turn at tier four. Or if we say just the base off tier three, so forty oath gold per turn. And then if we get thirty there is also seventy oath gold per turn. And that doesn't give us any oath gold. And do the th do the runesmiths have the same skill as the? Is Master of the Forge the same as what the runesmiths have, or do they have a weaker version? Can you get plus forty percent on the? Um, can you get plus forty percent on the runesmiths? Yeah, I feel like it's not really worth it. Like, um, it's like not really worth it um, stacking runesmiths because they're too useful to have in your armies and stuff. But um, but yeah, it is kind of a fun idea have like a squad just have a settlement full of runesmiths crazy buffing all the income and the rune rune um the earth gold and everything oh they don't have to choose between these three it's all of them okay cool Yeah, I think I'll save the rest of my points now so that we can get our unique skills unlocked. Is there any way to make it like... Um, is there any way to... There's no way to make this save it so that it does the same thing every campaign, is there? There's no, I don't, there's no new units in this Persian Immortal apart from the Grudge Bearer units. So this is the, this is the update, but without the DLC.
All right. Well, this is um, yeah, that's all pretty good. Um, should we should we try should we take this out so we can sell it to somebody for some extra stuff? I'm a bit I'm a bit nervous that we need to get back down south and deal with other issues, but then um, hmm. So I don't really want to hmm. I don't really want to have to take the Darklands. I'd rather give that to to Imric so that we could focus on the Badlands, but. With the with the um, grudge, so I want to. So basically, the main grudges I was. I'm hoping my objective for this campaign is I want to do this grudge. So I need to make sure we need to take these three these three regions, um, and that would be cool to get as well. Got to got to kill uh, Scryer and Clan Mulder, um, and this one here. Oh, this one's cool, actually. We just have to destroy these factions. We don't need to control the settlements. So we could potentially give... We could potentially uh, make an alliance with... Um, we could make an alliance with Imric. Let him take all of the uh, all of the Darklands. As long as he kills all these factions. Sword dwarfs control monolith, Grayling mute, doom keep, so Cameron. So, oh, so we just got to go to Cracker Drac and like conquer everything there. Silver Pinnacle, that's up near Ungram. Destroy Clan Moors and take Karakate Peaks, yeah. Actually, we could do that, would be a good one to do if you wanted to just quickly get some grudges. Because um, Carrick 8 Peaks is quite close. Yeah, maybe we should try and actually try and game for this one first just to get the extra grudges and stuff. Just because it's like achievable. Grungy Lord, he's not back already. Oh, five turns. Oh! Oh no, I disbanded him because we couldn't respect because he wasn't high enough level yet. That's alright. Alright, cool. Uh, I think we're good. We got recruit. We got recruitment going? No, we need to recruit. We need some money to get some recruitment going. Um, Ready to war. I am Iron Fist. Some call me a king. You are sure. It is what? Onward. Aye. So? I am glad. Yeah. Um. We kind of want. Ungram to get into a war with scary. Silver Pinnacle so he can take back those settlements. So I'm a bit worried that if I go into a war with Silver Pinnacle, Silver Pinnacle, then that will um, distract them from fighting Ungram. Um, we could go to war with Zardok, the overlords of Zardok, because they get wiped out usually anyway by Tretch or whoever. Speak up or I'll take your tongue. Maybe. They're pretty close and they could be pretty annoying to us though. This action doesn't Yes. Uh, I mean that gives me the recruitment that I want, so I, don't, I guess I don't really need to start any more wars now.
Going up to Zardo, put you in the scope of all the other doors, sir. Uh, I wasn't going to go after them. I would just, like, declare war on them for the free money and let them come towards me. But, um, but... I know I have done that before, and it was, like, not that much fun because they just showed up at an inopportune time, you know? Is the... What's... Is the Silver Pinnacle landmark, like, tier 5 or something? I hate those bullshit landmarks. How many re how many soldiers do you reckon these guys have got? 244. Oh, they've, they got nothing. They got nothing. Throw bearers. Let's march. Vengeful rune lord. Heading out. Send me to vengeance. Beards in belts. Oh, Ungram, you dirty bitch. Oh. <laughs> He's going to get it before me. God damn it. It's all right. You guys sit in here and replenish my gyros for me. Um... Yeah, we'll respect these guys out now because they're not doing much. Kick time to kick some Slayer ass. That's right, I'll just declare war on Hunger. Um, I'll get a military access with him now because he's just about to take this settlement and then we'll be trespassing. So um, just so avoid, so we make sure we don't get trespassed before we have a chance to do anything about it. That way from another holder. Roy Goliath. What? Is it time to war? Oh, he's got Slayer Pirates. How cool is that? He's got like a full squad of Slayer Pirates. Do you know where Malachi's faction is located? Yes, I do. Slave pirates, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, cool. I think we're pretty good. Pretty good here. Oh, we got these guys. Certainly. Do we not have those guys? Indeed. How, hmm, how come we can't see them? Uh, I'm not. I'm not allowed to talk about anything in the DLC for his man. Sorry, um, but I mean, if it's already been shown on elsewhere or whatever, then we can talk about it. But yeah, so I'm. Uh, I'm just showing off the uh, the free LC update stuff. But yeah, if if other people have been following the news and stuff, like you know, feel free to answer about that stuff. A lot of these questions that you're asking about the DLC, they have been answered already um, with. Um, you know other stuff that's been published or whatever but i haven't been keeping up on that so i don't really know i don't know what's been released and what hasn't you know so uh -uh. be really good if Ungram would just not take that settlement so that i can i mean i just want to take it so that i can sell it to him <laughs> like let's be honest but still God damn it, Ungram. I mean, I should have I should have maybe jumped over one of my other lords just to check it first, but I didn't want to suicide them in case there was a greenskin army there. It would have been worth it, actually, though. Like, uh, yeah, it probably would have, been, would have been worth it to, to potentially suicide an army just to make sure that we weren't going to waste it two turns. Because now we wasted two turns, one turn to get there and one turn to get back. Um... Yeah, unless I want to go after the vampires or something, it's like, yeah. My beard itches. There's trouble about. And his beard itches. I love it. I unwilled. I'm going.
Uh, oh yeah, we got new traits for our Thanes, and I, they got new skills as well, I'm pretty sure. Agile, speed, all right, Bibulus, you know, mass, charge, expert charge defense. Is expert charge defense... Hmm. I don't know if I want any of these, really. I guess magical attacks is kind of good. Yeah, I guess magical attacks and melee attack, because dwarf thanes don't really have very high melee attack normally. Make him a better duelist. Burn says the infantry. Oh yeah, because then he's got plus 15 melee attack against infantry. That's pretty nice too, yeah. Although, his primary job is to be a tank. Yes, ah. That is agreement. One rag. The clan honor. Um, oh yeah, and the new Thane skills. So they've got Keeper of the Gate. Oh no, oh no, there's actually no, these guys are still got the same skills they had before, aren't they? Oh, they got Fell Handed Warrior, Unfaltering, Dowie Authority, and Inherited Arms, and Physical Resistance and Glittering Scales. Oh yeah, built in glittering scales. How cool is that? Yeah, actually, I like Valaya because it makes it easy, harder for enemy heroes to wreck them. The runes are ready. I don't unlock the new airship. Um, the new airship's a DLC unit, so you have to buy the DLC. It's not out yet, though. Alrighty, um... What? Leave it. Finally get some Corollas up in here. Oh, I need more money for more Corollas. I'll cast the rules. An ad? Now we from another hold arrive. Tis a great day, yes. Ready. Wind shaper. Oh yeah, the burning wind nomads, they're at war with um they're at war with Balthazar Gelt. Hmm. For what reason am I disturbed from my experimentation? I suppose. Eh. It's great whenever Cathay caravans come along and you can trade with them and sell wars against all their enemies and stuff. Bit of free uh, free monies. My anger burns bright. Right. So we're nearly going to get some Grudge Settler units. 59%. So we're going to get Quarrelers, Slayers, Grudge Throwers, and Longbeards added. Nice. All right, I think we're pretty good. But yeah, so should I go out and should I go out and like bash Tretch and then try and give Tretch's land to Imric so that our east is safe? Or should I just like ignore Tretch, Tretch and just kind of hope that he doesn't attack us while we try and go south? Um 
expand in all directions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tretch, um, yeah, Tretch probably won't, is not going to be that dangerous, but it just means that we have to spend like six or seven turns dicking around in here. Um... Do you reckon we've got six or seven turns before Wurzag comes for us? Uh, he doesn't seem to be expanding too aggressively. Yeah, it's hard to say. How strong is he? He's pretty strong. He's only got three regions, though. Yeah, he's already he's already there, though. He's got this region, this region, and this region. So, like, he's one region away, basically, from almost being into my territory. Hmm... I do like the idea of killing some rats, though. Yes. So, uh, rats, you reckon? If you don't go for Tretch now, he'll go for your back door, yeah. Forwards. Vengeful Rune Lord. <laughs> On my way. Watch. Onward. Malia's will binds me to you. Doubtful. Runesmith. Um, oh, yeah. So we've got... I oh, have got Master of the Forge plus 40%. Yeah. Uh, runes are all pretty much the same, I think. Now we've got Runic Imbuement. Magic, magical attacks and weapon strength. Spell resistance for hero's army. So, oh, wait up. Spell resistance for Hero's Army. So that's stackable, right? So we could have nine of these bad boys and have 90% spell resistance. That's pretty cool. It's like, fuck you, wizards. Magic item drop chance. Intercepting underway. Ambush defense chance, Lord's Army. Bro, and that, that'd stack as well. So you can get like 100% ambush, am, uh, ambush defense chance. Oh yeah, that's yeah, because they have um, base, they have base um, cooldown for rune abilities, and more uh, cooldown for uh, master rune magic. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. I wonder if these hard of scouting, hardened armor, and sharpened weapons are still all messed up. Spell resistance does not affect magical attacks in one three. No. Kin, the aye, and what can what honor to you? I'd like to keep Barakvar and um, I'd like to keep Barakvar alive, time. but are oh, they now they're at war with those orcs? What good rug. Should I... How many of these are at six? Should I recruit some more units here as well, maybe? Hardy, physical resistance. Yeah, maybe. Calm down, Rick. <clears throat> Give something. Yeah, I I don't think I want to hold. I think because I I just really love the world's edge archway. Like I love having that as your like little gateway to your empire kind of thing, and just your impregnable mountain holds kind of vibe. I don't know if it really is impregnable, but it just looks like it is. You know, you know, what I mean? like it's got that fire that feel to it. Um, but um, yeah. So we can either take over Tretch lands and then use Tretch's lands as kind of like a wasteland that we're not going to really defend. Um, but it'll just be a blade of armor before anyone gets into our proper territories. Or we could... Um, Casting the runes. Come off. Or we could... Um, it is time. Yeah, 
Yeah, or we could try and meet up with Imric and give it to Imric. Ah, I can't make it. It's as good as done. Heading out. I answer to plan and hold. Yes. Nothing to do here. Let's go. <laughs> Clan Rea yeah, is a pretty, pretty mean looking army he's got there. But yeah, no, I think hopefully we'll have enough time to wreck Tretch pretty thoroughly um, and then get back down here and deal with... Um, I think that's just minor settlement Skaven there, so it's not... Actually, actually, yeah, this is actually not too bad, yeah. We'll come down here, we'll do Silver Spear, Crookback, um, Mount Greyhag, then we come back in through here, rescue Karak Azul, beat up these minor settlements. Yeah, that's not a bad little... Do a little circuit around here. Yeah, that'll work. I was kind of thinking of more as like I'd have to go in here and then backtrack, which felt bad, but that's that should be fine. Alrighty, um, money and stuff is good, but I'm really I'm pretty excited about this whole uh, shield wall situation over here. Uh, also, a one turn a one turn technology means we can potentially get students when we take this settlement next turn. Lord of Clan Morgrim. Take Apex and Wurzeg after Karak after Black Crag. Um, yeah, Black Crag, Karak Apex, Wurzeg. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I think like, I think uh, it, like just coming back to that difficulty thing again. Oh, what was that? Did he just was I supposed to listen to that? <laughs> oh, the forge unlocked. Okay, cool. Um, I was just gonna say back on the difficulty thing. I was gonna say so far this part like has actually felt like pretty fun, um, and not too hard, but in a good way. You know, like I don't know. Like sometimes you want it to be as hard as possible so you can, you know grind out every little every little victory or whatever but Retake the could jump under there yeah that might be the way to go so if i use him to initiate there um but yeah so i don't know it's felt it's felt like challenging and some of the a couple of the battles are a bit scary but it's been both it's like been a good level i think in terms of enjoyment i'm done ready but just for me, obviously. You know, it's in max difficulty with Ultimate Crisis. No, no, my point was it, feel, it feels less hard, but more fun. You know? But I don't know. It might just be because I've been lucky, a bit lucky in this campaign or something. What's your orders? Um. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him in, in camp stance so that he can get a few extra melee buffs. I'm going to put these heroes in here so they can potentially get a level up. We've just finished a technology. That means any level ups we get now give us a, ch a percent chance to get a student, uh, which will increase our tech speed, which should be nice. Is there any new ways to increase your speed of your tech gain? Send me to vengeance. What? If you say so, Beardling. Can I help mm. you? All right, we'll get uh, one of our other existing lords back in. Lord. So that he can continue leveling up. I 
Um, oh yeah, what's the rats? Twitch. Who's here? Call me guys? Lord Craven. Don't think to outsneak me. Tagrus kubelu ut damas. All right. I say, <laughs> I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send Joseph Bugman, my secret agent dwarf. He's gonna like dress up with like fake horns and shit. And then he's gonna go and like sell a deal to these chaos dwarfs that we're that we're like some chaos dwarf mercenaries, like outlaw dwarfs, and uh, we're gonna fight these sca these skaven for them. Why is it? The, the joke's on him because once we've we've done that, we're just gonna attack him as well. Haha! -ha. Out we out we outsmarted him. Dwarf lord inquiry man. Yeah, oh, yeah, the same as before. I know. Saying is there any like new stuff? Oh, last turn for the grudge meter. Oh, this is the last turn for the grudge meter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, so, yeah, no there's, the, there's the blue line for the dwarves, but yeah, I was just wondering if there was anything new in the update that gives you, like, extra tech opportunities or anything. How many menaces they got? Six menaces. Is Oath Gold... Is Oath Gold off captives? No, Oath Gold's just off money, isn't it? If you're above 50% grudge, you're not getting any malices. Yeah, we'll be above 50% 50, 50 I think, because we were already at like 49, 47 or something before when I was checking it. So yeah, do you reckon we should confederate uh, Gromby first because this, so then we can have Gromby? Or should we... No, I... Mm, mm, yeah, I'm kind of thinking we should confederate Ungram so that we can um, do the do those northern regions that we need to get for our underway grudge. When you um, when you <laughs> kill a bag. <laughs> Check it out, super fast dwarfs, we're outrunning them. We're outrunning Skaven. Our hero, our hero hammer is uh, much stronger now. the ammo on this crap. Lego Chewbacca makes a person happy? What's Lego Chewbacca? Is that like an anime? How many more underways we got? Uh, menaces we got? Like two, three more? Oh, there's one. Was turning off fire at will. Did I turn it off and then turn it back on again? Oh, 
Oh, the Lego miniature of Chewbacca. Oh, yeah. Lego was cool. The kids still like Lego these days. Is Lego still cool? Like, is it is like, yeah, do kids actually play Lego now or is it just like 35 year old people that remember their childhood that play with Lego? Your nephew's into it? Oh, yeah, how old's your nephew? Ages 3 to 39, yeah. But it's like, I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm just a nerd or whatever, but like, there's definitely something, I don't know, like, like when you're a kid, like having little dudes is fucking sick. Even as an adult, it's pretty sick. Shit, I, maybe I should have been paying attention. I feel like I'm now feeling regret. Like, I wish I had been paying attention before to this battle that I am in. Yes! Shield bearers, hold! We are relentless! Oh, bro. Gyro bomber! Go! The clans unite! Understood, Lord! Come! Right! Ready to serve! Strike out! For the ancestors! Yes. Yes. Oh shit, I just gyro bombed. Oh no, that was. Oh, I thought I bio gyro bombed myself, but that was him. It was him uh, lightninging me. Oh, this is really. Um The Skaven have a spell that can freeze you in place for flyers, and uh, yeah, they did it on me, and uh, my guys were getting wrecked. Wow, that was a, a very chill battle that's just turned into a complete fucking nightmare very quickly because <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Oh, bro. What a schmuzzle. Thing where they just then I just did shift one and I just selected group one. It's a really weird little thing that happens. Axe is out! 
Joe got to be alone in group one to circumvent the bug. Oh, that's a brilliant idea, Nelson. You're a legend. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's so, it's sort of, you know, it's like any, like all genius ideas. It's like, it's kind of obvious now that, you know, I, now that you've said it. <laughs> 30th of April, I'm playing dwarfs. I like it. I'm glad to hear it. Well, that was a complete fucking mess. Total mess. Main problem is the the gyro bombers. Not only did we lose a heap of health, we actually lost entities as well. That was super bad. What if they actually heal faster if they lose entities? Weirdly, somehow. Yeah, they seem to have a pretty established, um, yeah, they seem to have a pretty established formula for their, uh, marketing stuff. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think the reason why they drip feed the information is because they don't want to overwhelm you. I think it's because they want to, they want to keep the, they want to keep the topic kind of trending. You know, so it's like if, like if they released every bit of information, like about every single detail about everything that's going to be in the DLC straight away, then the story would last for a couple of days, but then the story would be over. But if they release like, you know, part of the story, then that story runs for a couple of days then they read a bit more of the story and that goes for another couple of days. And yeah, so the point of it is, the point of it is to just, to keep the story running in like, to, to like trending for long enough until like everybody's heard about it you know what i mean like it's like um when something happens on the news like you know when there's like a i don't know when there's like a some event that happens or something um and like the next day everyone will be like talking about it around the water cooler or something like that so even if you miss the news you kind of hear about it from other people because they'll be talking about it the next day and then maybe even the next day after that they'll still be talking about it so you might hear about it but if you kind of missed the news and you were working from home for the next two days then you wouldn't hear you wouldn't hear about it and so you'd miss out on the never know that that event happened you know so i think that's the way it works like they basically want to keep it trending like for long enough like for two weeks or whatever so that you know even the people that only sort of check on gaming news maybe once a month or once every couple of weeks because they're so busy and they've got other shit to do i just play games all the time you know like they just basically like you know yeah just keep the, they want to just keep the whole topic of the dlc trending for so long that basically no one can miss out on seeing it you know what i mean i think that's why it is or at least that's part of it King 586 kills on one dwarf warrior was there that's cool that's awesome i kept um i kept popping um i kept popping um the the melee um buff rune oh, we got one we got one student so that's not too bad casting the runes retake the realms hi this way looks better <laughs> using guild roots Beards in belts. Send me to vengeance. Okay. So. This settlement's got an army inside it, right? But it's like, it's not going to be their main stack, is it? Yes. Or is it?
Do you think I should... Did Messi see the Reddit post with him in it? Am I in a Reddit post? Is it is it a flattering Reddit post or is it a post I don't want to read? The forge fires glowing. I don't usually get uh I usually don't get mentioned in uh in things. Master of Runecraft. I don't know. Don't see anything in uh, go on Google. Um. Yeah. So I could. Um. I can pity we didn't hit ten, 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 ten. Then I could have. Um. I know that. But yeah, so I could jump, I could jump onto here. And if he reckons he could win, he might come out at me. I'm going to have no, the only problem is I'm going to have no runesmith. I could, um... The runes are cast. Hmm. Retake the realms. Rune Lord. to vengeance um uh thrones of the decay they uh we think it's coming out in about two weeks ish i'm loving these dwarves they're um this is a good fun campaign although yeah no, I'm, I'm enjoying it yeah although i think the gyro bomber has a lot to do with why i'm enjoying it so much see if i have these aura of endurance yeah, this is, it only affects allies in range. It doesn't affect him. So if we gave him missile resistance, that'd be really good. April 30th is what CA said. Oh, have they actually announced it now? I just don't know... usually counts as an ally the unit counts as an ally oh okay because i thought i tested it with some ability and it didn't but then yeah i thought i tested it with another ability and it did so i don't know hmm. they announced it yesterday with the intro to elspeth oh, okay cool all right so the 30th the high king acts. gather the throngs 
Oh yeah, did they make it so that um did they make it so that research rate rounds down now? Because I think it's like if you get ten percent research rate, oh, I don't know, maybe not. I maybe I have to pay more attention, but I feel like it's like you know if you had like something to take four turns, then you get ten percent research rate, then it takes three turns. Like it goes, you know, even though you haven't actually got enough to get it. Researching interlocking shield. Yeah, I'm trying to get interlocking shields. I want to get them shield walls happening. Sounds awesome. So that's another kind of example of what I was talking about, about the whole like kind of storyline thing. It's like the rounds up. Well, no, well, the number of turns rounds down. But yeah, like the, um, yeah, no, the number, I was saying the number of turns required seems to round down. But I don't know. I, I don't really know. I, I don't really have enough evidence to really say that, actually. I don't know. I just, I thought, I remember thinking that once, but I don't know if it's, if I've got enough, uh, if I've checked it well enough to actually know if it's true or not. All right, so what's this going to cost me? 3.8k. Ooh, another Grungy. Now it's 3.1k. Cool, that's right. We basically got that Lord for almost for free. I reckon if I move to there, I'll be able to... Yeah, I'll definitely be able to. Alright, All right, I'm going to move to there. Uh, I could jump, like, right on top of it, and then he'd probably attack me, but I don't know how... I don't know how strong his force is, and he's got... You know, he's got the settlement there and everything, whereas I think in here, you know, we got replenishment, we can still make it next turn. If we have to retreat, maybe we'll be able to get out of range. Vengeful I just hope this guy doesn't get ganked and lose my gyro. But um, hopefully it'll be all good. What do you want? <laughs> Welcome to my. <laughs> yeah. Is it? I. Right. Play everything without a beard. Indeed. Hey Sammy, this is vanilla. This is just um this is just the next update. I got early access to the next update that's coming out in a couple of weeks. So it's just, just to give you guys a bit of a preview of the coming stuff. Oh yeah, so we got our we got our age of reckoning and we got to this level. So we get squirrelers, slayers, grudge throwers, long beards. Plus 10 growth all provinces, plus 1 control all provinces. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So why, I don't really get this, like why would you ever want to delay the next stage of Reckoning? Is that so, does that, is that mean that you get like, does that mean that it, do, like it doesn't, it doesn't stop it from starting, it just takes longer. So does that, does that mean that it'll take 20 turns, so I've got longer to build it up, basically? But just the cap, the, but all the caps will be twenty percent higher. Is that what that does? If you need a recovery time, I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, so because because you might get penalties if you don't get it, like in case you didn't get the. Oh, okay. So it's not so. Uh, so it probably doesn't. Hmm. If you want to get it higher. I'm not sure, like, yeah, does anyone know from watching other content confirm whether 100% it does actually... Because I sort of, you could read it two ways. Either it's going to make this so it, instead of 10 turns, it lasts for 20 turns, or it could be that it's going to wait 10 turns with no reckoning at all, and then and nothing we do will count towards it, and then after that, it will start, which is not as good. It deactivates it? Oh, okay, thanks, Ticken and Nerd. Yeah, yeah, so it deactivates it. So the point of it is to 
the point of it is to um because if you if you only get this level or this level well, you get like penalties don't you you get like negatives or whatever so it's like if you think that if you've just gotten smashed and you've got no armies or something and you think you'll probably get penalties because you won't be able to make it to 50 percent then it like lets you just pause it and not do it this time hey um i said a swap um i ends i ends the swap um I, I don't know if they've fixed anything through with the sieges or open gates and ladders and stuff. They haven't released the um, they haven't released the patch notes yet. Um, so this this is just an information page, right? This doesn't actually do anything, does it? it doesn't tell you how many you've got or anything. You just have to go into the um, recruitment. If you delay it, wait 10 turns to start again. Yeah, cool, cool. No, I think. No. Just a cool looking book. Yeah, it's just a cool looking book. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but yeah, but now we've got this. This is actually quite cool getting the grudge throwers so that you can just make siege attacker on any army that you want. Ah, uh, I thought Tretch was going to be in there. To battle. Oh yeah, what's, what is the maximum number of grudge settlers per army? Does anyone know? Is it four? Five. Oh, okay. So we can get seven if we get the plus two. Can I help you? Onward. Lord of Clan Borgrim. If you say so, Beardling. Master of Runecraft. Bring them! Armed and ready. It's as good as done. Get him out of here. Yes! I'll cast the runes. Grudge throwers are indeed very solid. Um, we can save. Um, we can save up as many as we want, can't we? So we can just keep doing grudges and just keep stocking up more and more dudes in here until we've got twenty of them, twenty of them, twenty of them. So wait, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we could have eight full stacks stacked up in here and then just splam out eight full stacks in one turn instantly that would be crazy there's also a lord skill that increases the cap by two. Oh, okay free grudge settler army is pretty decent yeah nice oh yeah forge unlock sorry yeah i was gonna check that out wasn't i um don't know did anything change with the forge Oh, well, yeah, the cost. Look at these runes. 300. 500. Five hundred. So instead of being 50, they're like 500 now. It's 200 for these. Oh, shit. So, does, so can you still do the infinite um, oath gold thing? I mean, this is the only thing we need to know about. How much, how, many, how much oath gold do we need for the tankards? Oh, check the tankards out. 
You don't, all you need is beer. You don't need, um, you don't need... Oh, that's crazy. You don't need, um, you don't need, uh, pottery anymore. We're like a self-contained system. Bro. It's all around, it's all about getting more oath gold now. Fuck pottery, yeah, exactly. Alright, let's quickly, let's trash all of our buildings. Convert all of our buildings into oath gold production immediately. We need maximum oath gold. Maximum oath gold. Oh, I got another Grangny Lord. Fucking hell, they're just. Oh, I got no. Oh shit! Now I got no money. All right, we'll fight this battle. Get some more Oath Gold. I got excited about the. the um, I got a bit over excited about the um, Oath Gold possibilities. So this is the. Um, the Sk this it's the Skaven map, so they haven't added any new maps but to this for the Skaven, unfortunately. Rune Smiths give you forty percent increased um, oath gold production in their skill tree. Hey, Fizzman. Mm, no, nah, I don't think the Nemesis Crown really seems like it's very important to my my dwarf storyline. Battles, he was saying you get more Oath Gold from battles. Oh, I haven't really noticed it. I've been getting not much Oath Gold from most battles. But, I mean, yeah, maybe I haven't really been paying attention, though. If, obviously, if he was said that, then he was probably paying more attention to it. Yeah, so we need to uh, we need to recruit as many runesmiths as we possibly can, and sit them all in the most oath gold producing region, and just get as much oath gold as we can. No sort of cane. Why would I want to get the sort of cane? No, nah, um, no, nah, I don't really go for the sort of cane. Um, the thing with the uh, with the nemesis crown is I don't really know what it does. So I don't know why I would want it. So there's not really any incentive for me to go after it. You know, if um, if I knew what it was and it was like really awesome, then you know maybe I'd want to go after it. But but yeah, it just doesn't really seem like the kind of thing that Thorgrim Grudgebearer would be interested in. Nemesis Ground is a really strong Mortis engine. Oh, okay. So it's like a master rune of spite. Is it like the um is it like the sort of cane where it turns into a weapon that's appropriate for whoever wears it? So for Thorgrim it would just appear as like a wicked Yeah, it's different for each race. Ah, uh, wicked. So it would just appear as a wicked master rune of spite for me. It just appears as whatever you want it to be. Yeah, nice. That's what I do. I'll just go and get it and then just immediately delete it. Because um, it doesn't take an item slot. Oh, nice. We've got about six of these to get rid of while we're waiting for our uh, reinforcements to come on. Just got my guys all stacked up so that none of my troops take too much damage from the um, from the menaces. Shut up. 
Um, this one's Silver Horn of Vengeance, gives you charge bonus. And this one gives you melee defense debuff. It is a reckoning! For the ancestors! But yeah, I don't know, yeah, maybe we should, um... Once you reach tier 5, you lose it, and it'll randomly appear somewhere later. That sounds pretty cool. Alright, maybe we will. If we if we can confederate Ungram, we'll be up there closer to it. So maybe we can do a little dwarf crusade to go and get it. Are there any, um, there's no grudges to do in the Empire, is there? Oh, actually, there is Help It. We could, if we were decided to go after Help It... We'd be kind of in that in the neighborhood but yeah i kind of feel like we should bury it because i feel like that would just be a thorgrim kind of thing to do he doesn't care about these stupid demonic items he just like smites it with his hammer chucks it in it with his axe and chucks it into a hole I think that's I think that's it. I think I think we've killed them all now. Oh, is the Nemesis Crown originally a dwarf weapon? A dwarf item? <clears throat> is it made by Alaric the Mad? Oh, okay. Is it, was Alaric the Mad, Alaric the Mad was a runesmith? Ironbreaker shield wall can deflect cannon fire. Yeah, apparently. Pretty cool. What sort of shields have Ironbreakers got? Silver shields or have they got gold? I love Ironbreakers. Ironbreaker is probably my favorite you know, dwarf unit. Dwarf infantry have silver shields. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, some units have gold shields. I had, a, I got a unit the other day that had a gold shield. Can't remember what it was. Nothing can stop us. Gold with shield wall active. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Ah, oh, cool, cool. Um, what sort of magic have they got? They got warp lightning, yeah. Fuck. I hate warp lightning. Um. Hmm.
Oh, how did those guys get damaged? Man, even though I started them stacked up, I still got ravaged by the uh, menace blows. Not putting any ladders down. Yeah, I know. No, like I just don't even touch the walls anymore because otherwise you're gonna get ladders, and then it's like a nightmare. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's still the same. I put, I'm pretty sure I put down some ladders and it was a pain. Yeah, I'm just waiting for him to, like, stack up some more. We've got Wrath and Ruin and a couple of guys. Did they fix the gate bug? Which gate bug? <laughs> yeah, the short answer is no. But yeah, depending on which gate bug you mean, there might be some nuance to the answer. They got me at a bad time that time. Nothing can stop us. No. Move now. Move. Move off. On. Go. All right, that'll do. Done a bit of damage already. Attack the axe! Give me vengeance! I will do it! You're fucking about! Go! Oh, baby! I am strong! There's Coral is coming in. Oh, 
vengeance. Alright, I think we got this pretty much under control. No wobble lightning. I haven't sent any units in. Oh, now he might be coming to try to wobble lightning my Corollas. I wonder if we can melee him so that he can't get him. Oh shit. So many Skaven bodies, just so many thousands of Skaven just murdered. Why? The humanity. Like, why do they keep fighting? Why don't they just stop fighting so we can stop killing them? Won't somebody think of the Skaven children? Like, how the- why do they keep fighting? Why do they keep fighting? <laughs> there we go. Finally. Yeah, I like rangers with Belagars, um, Belagars ranger army with the rain sniping, sniping rangers with the Thane front line. Have them all invisible, it's pretty cool. Stalk on Williams rangers, yeah. Even just the normal rangers I feel like are pretty good though, because... I feel like Bugman's rangers, the, re the regeneration is cool, but it's like, it doesn't bring them back from the dead. So if you get into serious any serious damage, they still die, you know? It's just good for like chip damage basically. But I guess if you if you might really careful with them and you micro them and stuff. 
feel like one of the things the things with like one of the things with the dwarfs is that it's just it's really hard to react um it's really hard to react in terms of blocking stuff because you don't have heavy cavalry or monstrous units so if something comes for your weak units like you can't like stop it you know um but yeah coral is kind of the answer actually because they can focus fire on something that's pretty much the only thing you can do as a dwarf you can like try to make it die but you can't really like you know what i mean you can't really like block things very good like, sorry, if you've got, you, you have, you, you obviously you have your shield wall front line that's hopefully going to keep things out, but like it's, sta it's sort of static, like you set it up and then like, that's it. Whereas, um, whereas, yeah, like you don't really have like, um, yeah, you don't really have like dragons or monstrous cavalry or trolls or something that you can use to just body block shit. Um, but you can use, yeah, you can use Rune of Slow. That's a good call, Marcel. Rune of Slow is pretty short range, though. Um, you can only use it, like, if, if it's close to your, uh, your Quarrela. Like, do you know what I mean? It's a, like this thing, like, if, if you suddenly see some shit happening over there and you need to stop it, like, fucking too bad. <laughs> like, you can't get over there, you know? You got, you know, like, I mean, you can send, you can send over your, um, your gyrocopters that can maybe shoot it, but they can't, like, but they can't, like, you know, like melee a unit they can't like body block or melee a unit or whatever with not without getting wrecked although i have done that before as well i'm sure slayers aren't that fast yeah i mean yeah like yeah like whatever i don't know i just mean like compared to other factions like i feel like that's just a that's like a trait of dwarfs i guess What do you think Tretch is? What? Lord of Clan Morgan. 600 Oath Gold for sacking is pretty good. Yeah. That do. What do you want? Yeah, I should have done it. Should have sacked it so we could have got a um, tank it, eh? Stretch is at war with the blue dwarfs. Can I help you? Retake the realms. Wish dwarfs had a motorcycle gunner unit like Empire Outride, Outriders, but dwarfs on motorcycles. <laughs> hey, Christopher, how you going, buddy? But yeah, you can you can sort of like yeah, if there's an enemy coming in, you can like point all your quarrelers at it and shoot it, or you can like debuff it, or you can like you know whatever. But yeah, but you just don't have, you can't like. Yeah, you can't like dynamically like run over there and like kill that and then come over here and do some stuff, you know, you just it's a lot more static. Good. Grimnir's axe first. Much love from Melbourne. Alright. I feel like I need to um I need to protect my protect my dudes. All right, we'll get. I'll just get one Thane just so we can show them off. But yeah, so this is what I mean. Like, so Thane's got a bit of an upgrade, right? So they've got this special line here where they can get um, experience for Lord's Army, recruit rank for miners, dwarfs, and warriors, physical resistance for those same guys, local recruitment capacity plus one. That's kind of cool, I guess. Recruitment, um, campaign movement range, which is good, and. Um, melee defense for dwarf melee infantry weapon strength for dwarf melee infantry yeah actually no, i suppose that is pretty good especially with the movement range as well so yeah i guess they are kind of like a dwarf a melee dwarf war leader 
Especially if you don't have warriors and long beards. You can double stack that for like 5% missile, 5 for the physical resist, melee defense, and weapon strength for long beards. Um, and the extra movement range just makes them better in the general as a gen as a general, plus the replenishment. But then, yeah, down here you can choose between one of these three. Um, makes him tougher and more shieldy. This one gives him an aura that protects his warriors, I guess. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's, yeah, I guess he's all right. I guess what I was trying to, what I was saying, my initial thought was if I wanted to have a general, I'd probably still take the runesmith um, because they get... They get uh, this one, melee attack for Lord's army, or this one, physical resist for Lord's army. But yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess this one's better if you're not gonna, if you're using like iron breakers or something like not long beards, not, not warriors. But if you're gonna use warriors or long beards, then the thanes are better. Hmm. About time to actually get actual lord skills. Yeah, they're they're pretty good, I guess. Physical resistant armors, yeah, that's good. Send me to yeah, no, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe they did get a pretty good rework after all. I'm done ready. Yes. How much does he cost me? Two ninety plus or a quarter of so four ninety. So this cost me four ninety per turn. Did I just... Yeah, I think I just used him to save... I just used him to save like 200 gold or something. Or less, 100 gold. Oh, nice. We can recruit Corollas here straight up. Five turns, four turns, okay. Uh, it's pretty cheap. I might just wait for our Grungni because we could save 150 gold, but... Uh, are we going to build anything else soon? Three turns. Mm, yeah, I should probably save him for three turns. Yeah, do you reckon iron here? I reckon iron seems pretty good. Oh, unless we want to go oath gold. Got to get that oath gold. <laughs> but nah, I'll go. I'll go iron. The um, yeah, the runesmiths buff. Just a local region, right? Local province. Oh, okay, local province. That's pretty cool. Hmm. So actually it would be better to get like a four region province because this is this is like a double, basically a double double stack because you got like 40 there and 30 here. But if you just had a region with four, four, um, four regions, that'd be even better. The Lord skill don't have don't help Jairus. Now you got to like Grom Brindle if you want Jairus. Eh? Should I disband this guy because he's definitely going to get ganked by uh, Tretch, or should I risk it? I feel like, I feel like we should disband it because he's definitely going. It's Murphy's Law. Like, if you desperately don't want him to get ganked by Tretch, then Tretch will be there and gank him. That's how that's how, that's how shit works. Um, I wouldn't mind getting another couple of Corollas, but we're pretty broke. Oh, we got we got we got vision on Karakazul now. Honor to your ancestors. Hmm. 
short on cash right now. That's uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I'm saying. Sylvania's gone great guns. Chosen. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> yes. One rag. Should I go to war with Azag? Discovered faction. How strong do you reckon Azag is? Yeah, I might go to war with Azag because that way. Um. All right. That way, if he does try and go after me, then that'll take a bit of pressure off Ungram, hopefully, and make it easier for him. What's Zafar's deal? What are they butthurt about? I don't know. Why are they butthurt? What can the Dawi do for you on this Treaties with Karakadron. Oh, no. They don't like that we're, they don't like that we're friends with Karakadron. Oh, that sucks. There's a, there's a bit of a... Uh, consternation in the dwar Dwarven community. Throw banners! Let's march! It's heresy here. I mean, 200 gold is 200 gold. Fuck it already. Ah, oh, man. No, whatever. Get it going. Right. I gotta quickly go to the toilet. In one second. All right, sorry about that. If you ally Belagaris Thorak, then Thorgrim hates you. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter though, does it? Because you can just confederate the other, you can just confederate whichever one hates you. Well, he's got 1,500 settled grudges. How many settled grudges have we got? Okay. And how much better that we have to be? Oh, we have to have 16,000. Oh, crazy. So it's going to take us a while. So it looks like... Looks like Thorgrim's... I mean, the Grumbrinder looks like he's going to be the easiest to confederate. Looks like a badass rework. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's good. Um, I 
What's Tretch looking like? Tretch got 107. And he's got three. He's got three settlements. Where is he? Is he? Is he in here? Did he? Hmm. Do you reckon he? Hmm. The price, no, I don't think the price goes up or down depending how much settlements, no. It's just, you just, how many grudges they've settled, you need to have 15,000 more grudges settled than them. So yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it's nothing to do with their settlements. I think that's just telling you how many settlements you'll get if you confederate them. Um, Oh, that's him there. Oh. Thanks, Silver. Fucking what a pain in the ass. I don't have to go over there. Um, that's right. I guess we'll kill these blue dwarfs on the way over there. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, I've actually seen him do that a bit as well, Madeline, yeah. Yeah, go go up here. The demon stump and whatever. Um See, now this is, yeah, this is kind of what I was worried was going to happen. Now I feel like we're going to get drawn in here. Like I'm going to go here, then I'm going to go there, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to kill this guy. By that time, I'm probably going to be in a war with Draz, and I'm going to go fucking all around here, and it's going to be like 20 turns later before I get back over here to where I actually want to be. Um, yeah, I don't really want to occupy all this land over here. I want to sell it to Imric, ideally. Um, or I guess we could sell it to Greasus, maybe. He, Greasus could be a kind of semi-law friendly. Uh, I'm not really an ally, but, you know, uh, whatever, a neutral party. Yes! One rug! The High King moves. Move the throng. Very well, Bora. Better, an, better an Elgi neighbor than a Chorf, yeah. Not enough warpstone. Is that is he? It's, oh yeah, so it's tier two. He's trying to put it up to tier three, so it's still going to be tier one when when we get it. Um. Let us begin. I up. I suppose so. Ah, setting off. An ad? My axe thirsts for war. My axe thirsts for war. Trespasses. Yeah, Greasus, I was thinking, could be an ally or at least a neutral party or whatever. No, blame you, you. What's the sack value? Sack value 1000. So, how much oath gold is that? Like 50? Make Karak and score great again. Any grudges are settled when we take a city occupied by Skaven? I think we're going to get about 100 or something for this one. Not a huge amount. I think if we want to make really good grudges, we need to go around and take all that stuff in um, the mountains to the south and the um, Badlands and stuff, because those are all the settlements that um, we really want. Yeah, the new grudge system is pretty cool.
Stop firing! Fight! It an order! The pettiness. It's not petty. These are serious grudges. How dare you? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Mm, I mean, I suppose if we. Yeah, I suppose if we go for. Um, I suppose if we go for the Darklands first, it might be quicker or easier or something. this concentration problem I've got again. I still need to kill this lord. It's pretty, it's pretty badass. Hey, Colbin. Um, I'm only allowed to tell you stuff that's already been released. I can't tell you anything that you don't already know, essentially. But I have not really been keeping up with the news, so I don't really know what, what's been released and what hasn't. What do you think would be a better co-op campaign? Franz and Elspeth or Gelt and Zhao? Personally, I think I'd rather do Gelt. Uh, I'd rather do um, Franz and Elspeth, or Franz and Gelt, or Gelt and uh, or Gelt and Elspeth. Um, it's really easy for Gelt to get back to the Empire, like super early. So you can still do Gelt as a co-op with uh, Empire partner as well. You could do yeah, Gelt, actually Gelt, Elspeth, and Franz co-op would be pretty cool. All three of them. Cool. 
Ended him rightly. Yell and then back to, yeah, say that you're playing co op, but say that you want to just do it as a head to head campaign just so that you can do like um, cheese settlements and stuff, and then just backstab them. Gyro squad, yeah, the gyro bomber squad seems pretty good. The shooting's not is not bad as well, yeah. Let us begin. My axe thirsts for war. Time for a reckoning. Shoulder axes, lads. We move. Move. Um, Fibulous or ancient or grim now. I'll just go get a grim. I'll go another one. Attack. Let us begin. One rug. Um, yeah, I really don't want to be dealing with this uh, Drazoth situation, but I guess we've got to. Daniel moved slightly east. Oh, did he? I thought somebody said he moved all the way to a village to start position. Is it not that far? Tamakan, indeed. I still haven't hit 12. Daniel's on the other side of the Zeech faction that has was to his east before. Okay. Retake the realms. Send me to Alright. So I think we need to. Yeah, we haven't found him Rick yet. Nope. Am I winning? Um, yeah, sort of. Oh, yeah, we could do some shenanigans with Ungram. Oh, no. Ungram's getting bashed by Azag. Fucking dick. Why can't you? We can't find good allies these days. Everybody's getting wrecked. Emmerich might be dead. It's only turn 12. Can't be dead already, surely. Maybe. I don't know. If you say so, Beardley. What do you reckon Tretch is? He's surely Tretch is up here, right? So he's not gonna be able to gank me. I'm, a rude lord, not some I'm gonna risk it. Because I wanna keep this lord in, I don't wanna keep changing him all the time. I don't want to change, change him out for getting more Quarrelers as well. Trying to satisfy some grudges up north? Yeah. Hmm. I guess, like, in, instead of going south and coming through here, 
we could go here, here, and then come out, come through, you know, Silver Pinnacle, and sort that out. I guess that would be the way to go. Yeah, yeah, finish stretch and then go north. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Except we got we. That's the thing. We had a time. We got a time limit on this because Wurzag's coming. It's gonna be not too long before he comes for us. We could we could just split and make two two sets like two armies, one north, one south. But um, yeah, it's a bit a bit hairy. Wall up, Karaza Karak. Yeah, I was talking. We were talking about walls the other day. Do you reckon like if I built walls on Karaza Karak, it would actually be able to hold off like serious. Serious opposition. Yeah, my original plan was to take out Tretch, then sweep sweep through here and get Karakai Peaks. But um, but now we're like, oh, but Ungram's gonna die. You know, or I mean, I guess that's the way of thinking. So on the one hand, it's like, oh no, Ungram's gonna die. We should go save him. Like another way you could think about it is Ungram is gonna die, delaying Azag from getting to me for a few turns, which is gonna give me time to deal with Wurzag, and then uh, and then Azag will conveniently be right here, so I can just kill him instead of having to go and chase him. Yeah, it's got a pretty good garrison. Thought the move was to immediately expand, expand to Black Crag first. Uh, I mean, you could go after Black Crag first, but I think ever since Skarsnik moved here, the move is to take out Skarsnik straight away, because if you don't take out Skarsnik, like... Black Crag and this area, I think, is just owned by like a minor Skaven settlement or faction or something. So yeah, you could probably take it pretty quick. But yeah, you gotta you want to take out Skarsnik first because he's a legendary lord and he's right next to you and he doesn't like you very much. You know, that's my that's my take on it. Also, you can go from Squeakhorn to High Place in one turn. So you just go like first turn, take that. Second turn, take that. Third turn, take that. Fourth turn, take that. Fifth turn, take that. You know, it's just really nice, like, boom, 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 boom. Whereas if you go here, it's like one, two, three, four, or maybe even five or something. You know, you miss a turn, so it sort of doesn't feel as good. But I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should have gone Skarsnik and then immediately gone back after this and just wait, let Tretch, like, left Tretch alone for a while. Like, yeah, I don't know. I thought Tretch was going to be easy. Well, Tretch was easy, but I thought Tretch was going to be quick. That was kind of why I went for Tretch. Mighty, don't think to outsneak. But now I'm like, yeah, nah, Tretch is a pain in the butt. Oh, no, it's all right. He's going to go down pretty quick, I imagine. Did I just... Yeah, I just raised that lord in the wrong place. God damn. Getting enough Tretch early was the right way. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the thing. Like, you got to think about it at least in terms of knocking out legendary lords. Like, if we can, if we can at least get rid of him, then we will have taken out Skarsnik and Tretch you know, both fairly early, which is something, even if we can't hold the territory or whatever. Master of Runecraft.
The Slayer Shrine no longer gives untainted. Oh, okay. No, I didn't. I noticed that the um, that the um, the inn does now, though. The refectory or whatever it is gives you um, public order and untainted now. Yeah, so Slayer Shrine just just gives you Slayer recruitment. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the the building browser is definitely a bit funky with the dwarves. Um. But yeah, but yeah, the the refectory now gives you control and corruption. And corruption in adjacent in adjacent areas. I don't really get why Slayer like the why the Slayer Shrine, like yeah, it's so weird, isn't it? Like they moved all these all these things down to tier two, and the Slayer Shrine is like tier three and tier four. I feel like straight like I don't know like what do you what hmm. I don't know as us do you think Slayer should be a low tier or should they be a mid tier or what? I thought I think I sort of think, especially in view of where everything else has been moved, I think this should go down to two three instead of three four. But yeah, I don't know. On my way. Oh shit. No, blame you, you. <laughs> we 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 um, outmaneuvered me. Crap. Well, if he goes this way, we should be able to catch him, but if he goes this way, we won't be able to catch him. That sounds pretty good, Ashen Squirrel. Yeah, just play Evil Gelt. Return to the Empire, get all the power artifacts. Honor to your ancestors. Oh, nice. We can sell it to uh, Karakazul. Karakazul's doing good, too. One, two, three, four, five. Five settlements. They normally just get wrecked straight away, don't they? Hmm. Do you reckon, yeah, do you reckon I should sell all this stuff to Karakazul? Like, it'll probably ruin them. They'll probably lose it straight away and get into wars with everybody and get messed up, but it means that I won't have to um, worry about them. Better than Imerica. Agreed. Runes. Aye. 
Let's hear what you have to say. We'll hear it before Oath Gold. Should I keep Silver Sphere maybe just so I've got a little bit of a bar barrier before people come after World's Edge? Because I kind of like to have a settlement. Hmm. Yeah, public order there, yeah. I mean, I could always farm the rebellions there. Ready. And what can the Dowie do for you on this fine day? All right, I'm kind of ruining them financially, but um, they should be all right in a couple of turns, hopefully. Both bound. Keeping settlements to get them stolen away seems like a good way to get grudges. That's a good idea, actually. That's a good idea, actually. If we can get settlements that are worth, like, a heap of grudges, like, just as a default. Like, how we we're looking at Carrick 8 Peaks, because... Yeah, so Carrick 8 Peaks is a key dwarf settlement. Oh, we can't see it because it's scavenified. Um, what's another... What's one that we can actually see? Uh, oh yeah, Barrack Vart, Barrack Vart, yeah. So, Key Dwarf Settlement 260. So, even, you know, even at a bare minimum, it's always going to be worth heaps of grudges. And it doesn't matter how busted the city is or whatever, the grudges will still be there. So yeah, that's, um, that's a good idea, isn't it? Oh, you know what we could even do even worse than that? We could sell it. We could, like, so, like, I could go... Um, I could go and take Doors, Barag, Dorzag off of these guys, and then I could immediately sell Barag, Dorzag to, to Wurzag, which would move my settlement, my guy outside, and then I just take it back off him immediately with no garrison or anything and get the free, get free, um, free stuff. Yeah, I'll farm Carrick Eight Peaks, yeah, I'll just keep selling it. Like, so I take Carrick Eight Peaks, and then I sell it to Queek, and then I take it again instantly, and then I sell it to this guy, and I take it again instantly, and then I sell it to that guy, and take it again instantly. Just fucking <laughs> law friendly gameplay, yeah, exactly. There's some real scaven energy coming on. <laughs> going on. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's definitely some scaven energy for sure. I would agree with that. Minor defense. All right. I can't really afford to go for the next level though because I need to get that tankard. Alright, let's see what happens. Should I recruit another lord here as well? Can't really afford it. These lords, lords are all getting expensive. I need, once I get the lords up to level 2 so that I can respec them out, then I'll be able to recycle through them much faster. They're, just, they're all out for like 5 turns at the moment, so I'm like struggling. I should have cycled them out earlier, that way we could have more level 2 lords. But I was trying to get them up to get the um, get their runes unlocked. All right, I think we're good. Already cracked the go code for door strategy. Level two, because once they get to level two, you can spend a skill point, which then which then uh, makes the um, makes respecking available to you. You can't respec a, a lord that's level one because they don't have anything to respec. Bloody Karakazul, been allies with him for two seconds, and he's already pulling me into wars. Any long most efficient. Oh, sorry, Deeper Meta. What I was talking about was um like so what I'm doing is like I'm 
I'm, I'm constantly recruiting lords in different places for different reasons. So I'm recruiting like a Grungni Lord over here because the Grungni Lord gives you 15% reduced um, construction cost. So I need him there, but I only need him there for a second just so I can build the building and then I can disband him, right? Because I want to, uh, because I might want to build a building somewhere else and I want to use that same Grungni Lord to make it 15% cheaper in somewhere else, right? So if I disband him, he's out for five turns, but if I respec him, he's only out for three turns. So yeah, so I've actually got three Grungni Lords, and if they were all only out for three turns, I could be cycling one of them every turn. But because they're all out for five turns, I'm like missing a turn, right? They're missing a couple of turns where I don't have them. And then, you know, and then like I might force march a Lord, but then I don't want him to be force march. So I switch him out for a different Lord. And, you know, and so I can put him out of force march into normal stance and, you know, blah, blah. So I've got, yeah, so I've got all these. So I've currently got. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine spare lords all all cycling that I'm just using to you know I need to recruit here. I need to do this here. Yeah. So if I if I had them if they were all respecking, I'd only need five lords probably, five or six. But instead, I've had to recruit nine. <laughs> It's a bit of a cheese that's of a yeah. Just because of the way that Yeah, it's just it's an ex it's an exploit basically. Oh, these guys seem pretty fucking cozy here. Oh well, these beastmen are only worth two grudges. Be some grudging soon enough. How come? Doom left. The fuck? These chaos dwarves aren't worth any grudges, like zero I grudges. Like, what about the fact that they're fucking chaos dwarfs? Sixty, twenty, sixty. Oh wow! So yeah, so oath gold is totally destroyed now. You can't, yeah, you can't do the oath gold cheese anymore because you can only get when you recycle them. You only get twenty, sixty, one thirty, the same as you got before. Um, but you know, to make the items, it costs two hundred. Where this used to cost thirty to make it, now it costs two hundred. So yeah, so smelting, uh, mel smelting items down is no good. Um, and also, yeah, and also using oath gold to make money to make items to sell for money is no good anymore. In the old system, it might have been all right, but in the new system, definitely not. I'm sort of think I don't know. Do I want to kill this stack just to get? Um, And traitors, ready by axe. They don't have a dreadquake, so it's something. Um, what level is this? Level two, so it's gonna be level one. All right, so we'll sack it. Yeah, so we'll sack this first, kill the dwarfs, then we'll move him there, attack this guy that way. Oh, actually, no, we could attack him that way because we're going to go that way anyway. Wait for them to raid me so I get more grudges. Lower the throne. We're gonna do war with these guys? No, we're not. Speak, dwarf, before I have you kill Throw bearers, let's march. Can I help you? Yes. Oh. Did they change Thorgrim's magic items? No, I don't think so. Why? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know what he had before. 
looks about the same. Don't see anything crazy. Uh, crazy there. Attack the cows dwarfs, sell their settlements to the greenskins, get more grudges. Yeah, actually, that's, that's a good idea. I could sell it to those greenskins that I just went to war with, these guys. Oh yeah, these guys are worth shitload of grudges. Greenskin actions, 453. Oh yeah, sweet. All right, let's, we'll do that. Alright. So they don't have any dreadquakes, so they they got nothing. Alright, this should be pretty good. So yeah, we can sell it to those weak neutral greenskins, and then we can just immediately take it again. And the trade settlement turned this game into real estate tycoon. I know it's so it's so cheesy and broken, but you know, it's gotta be done. Yeah, it's like, it's sort of, yeah, this does remind me of what I was saying the other day. It's like, I just like randomly, like in some ways I'll like, I'll be, I'll play like law friendly or like role play or whatever. And then sometimes there'll be like an exploit or a cheese or whatever. And I'm like, oh no, I don't want to do that because it's like not law friendly or it ruins the game or I don't like that or whatever. And then other times I'll just be like, yeah, that's cool. I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think, I think one big thing is like, if you think, if you figure it out yourself, like live, like it's there's like that added excitement of like just wanting to test it out and see if it works which makes it quite like a lot more um harder to resist whereas if it's already like an established cheese like there's no there's no joy to be had by showing that it works because everyone already knows it works you know and so then it's just like it kind of takes the shine off it a little bit Rush the reinforcement to avoid having the blunderbusses. What do you mean? What blunderbusses? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think like sometimes I um I think yeah that yeah, I don't know. It depends like if I'm playing for like immersion or what. I think also like because I'm streaming um then you know i also want to demonstrate like techniques and stuff that other people can use to make their campaigns easier or whatever um and i think a lot of people like to watch for that sort of stuff as well um so yeah i don't know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a complex issue but yeah it's weird it's like certain things i won't do because i don't think they're law friendly or because i don't think they're I think they reduce the fun of the game or something. And then other times I'm just like, yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with that. <laughs> random, random uh, moral code. I'm like chaotic neutral. You've learned how to play the game exclusively from watching me in Legend. Then you've learned how to play the game in, in, a very naughty way. <laughs> You've learned all the bad things. We probably, I, I imagine we've been an extremely bad influence on you. <laughs> you're a naughty boy. Yeah, I imagine you're not. An, if you learned from me in Legend, I imagine you're not an exemplar of cheese and exploit free um, fair play. Um, 
I'm really not whipped. Like, how do you cheese this settlement? I don't really know what to do. I mean, I think we're just going to have to do it the hard way, you know? Take a few take a few tower shots to the face and get in there. Um, I suppose we could... Um, I suppose if we hung out over here... I suppose if we hang out over here, we're outside of the range of all the towers. We can kill this dude on the way through, I suppose. Wait for our reinforcements. One's man, one man's cheese is another man's normal gameplay. Yeah, that's it. talk about the dlc stuff sorry new eden the deal the um embargo for dlc is on the 23rd so that's when we'll be able to show all the dlc stuff and answer all the questions about it and stuff otherwise i can only talk about stuff that's already been released by creative assembly Learning how the AI believe, behaves and learning cost effectiveness of units and stuff. Yeah, no, that's fair. No, I'm glad. I'm glad if I was uh, I was helpful to you at all, man. Um, yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's yeah, it's like a like a, a yeah, a mate, a mate was saying basically you have to you have to you in Wemmer three you have to determine your own challenges and the way you want to play. You know, it's not really it's not really the sort of game like. I don't know, like some games are like just, they're so hard that like the only thing that matters is just trying to be able to play it to win. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah, Wormer 3 is just not like that. Like Wormer 3 is a bit more of a sandbox where, you know, pretty much anything that you want to do will work probably. You know, you can probably figure it out. It's just a matter of you deciding what your goals are and how you want to achieve them and stuff, you know? I mean, if, you, if you're very new to the game, then obviously that's not going to, it's going to be a bit harder, but once you like yeah it's not like uh like uh, what was that game that everyone used to like um dark souls they dark souls is that what it's called um yeah like you know like dark, dark souls or whatever it was like it was like that was kind of like the fun of the game that people like enjoyed about it that was so hard that you had to like really try super hard and figure out how to get through each part and all that like that's not really what Wham is about. Like Wham is more about just enjoying all these like cool things. But it is a strategy game, so there is some like there's some element of actually, you know, using strategy to win. It's not like just completely brainless or anything. Well, we screwed up this guy in particular. But yeah, I think it's cool. It's kind of cool with it not the difficulty level not being too extreme because it means you can actually have a bit of creativity and play around and do different things, you know? It doesn't have to be like the most try-harding all the time kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I like sometimes I like to play like role play. Sometimes I like to just try to cheese the crap out of the game as hard as I possibly can. Sometimes I like a game that's really hard, you know, like a challenge campaign or something where I actually have to try and figure out how to win, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I feel like yeah, I get I get a lot out of different ways of playing the game. I love I love good fights as well. Um, I, I, don't get me wrong, I love an easy fight as well. I love a shooting gallery where you just got a choke point and you're just blowing the shit out of the AI and they're completely helpless. I love that as well. But um, but I do like a tough fight where you just you know getting your ass handed to you and you got to like try to pull out all the stops to try to get a win. That's good fun. But strictly speaking, it's not really ideal on a strategic level to have close fights like 
ideally you want to just have every fight be completely easy but yeah oh yeah this is pretty cheesy actually this is exactly what i was looking for i'm like don't tell me i'm gonna have to assault these walls legit i want to i want a method where i don't have to do it legit Like these um, hobgoblin archers have got some range on them. Are there any new items you can build with oath gold? I don't think so. I think it's just the oath gold is just super. Like everything that you build with oath gold just costs like ten times more now. Yeah, like all the things that were thirty and now two hundred. All the things that were... I'm gonna... Uh, actually, I don't remember what tier 2 was. Whatever tier 2 was, that's like 500 now. Something like that, anyway. Yeah, it's just way more expensive. I kind of like that, though, honestly, I've got to say, because... It's the oath gold cheese before, like, I don't know. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of cheeses, like, you'll use them, but they're sort of cheap and they don't really make the game more fun. But it's just hard to have the self-control not to use them because they're so easy. Like this, this new way with the Oath Gold, um, even though I haven't even had a chance to interact with it yet, like just the concept of it that Oath Gold is hard to get, and I'm now I'm now trying to figure out how to get Oath Gold, um, is making that a way more fun mechanic for me. You know, like if this was a if this was a live game pre pre 5.0 i would have already um recruited gotrick and felix i would have suicided them and sold their weapons for oath gold and i probably would already have like a bunch of o a bunch of iron waters tankers and you know the game would be sliding towards steamrolling and i wouldn't care anymore like but just that change of making oath gold not you know that's like that's basically made the game better for me you know just because I didn't have the self-control to do it myself. So that's actually interesting. So even though... Shit. What was that? Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's the, it's the hero. He's um, fucking nailing my gyros. Yeah, just because the, um, yeah, it's interesting, like, although the the dwarves are a lot stronger now in a lot of ways, that oath gold actually feels a lot more satisfying because you have to actually figure out how to get it. And there's actually a, yeah, like, get you need, you want lots of it. All right, this seems to be working pretty well, apart from me getting one of my gyro shot. No, that's not right, Sven. No, multiple entities still operate the same way. It's just that these particular gyros are bugged. So they're not operating the way... So the way that you understand it from the live game is the way it is. It's just that this unit is bugged and it's not acting the way it's supposed to. This this unit this unit has been changed to a four entity unit, but it still thinks that it's a single entity unit. So it's still like the rules. It's still applying to the rules of single entity. Oh, that door open, and now we're getting the shit shot out of us. Yep. Is that a barricade or is that just them just standing there?
Oh, what do we got here? We got a bull taurus. Right, smash it. Kill it. Kill it with fire. It's a living barricade, yeah. We're getting damaged pretty hard in here. Um, Alright, let's just, just do this. Yeah, we're getting wrecked pretty hard here. Um... Fire, fire. Warriors. Such shooting. Some... No, we can shoot through there. That's something. Why can't these guys shoot over there? They just can't get line of sight. Oh, yeah. This is kind of bad. We can't get in there. Oh, here we go. Those guys are getting over there now. Get a bit of shooting in there. Maybe we should just bring in the melee. That way we've got more, we've got more guys getting buffed. By our heroes. Philipson's getting a bit screwed up there. For the ancestors. The ancestors watch. No, he got routed. I'm not sure if we're going to want to take on the Beastman immediately after this. Oh, there's still got a lot of shit in there. How's the ammo going? Ammo's getting low. Surprised they bothered to nerf those pump gun chaos dwarves. What pump gun? You mean the blunderbusses? Those dwarf and legs. 
Right, put some um, put some corals on the walls. Oh, we just killed a. Oh no, we killed a. I thought we killed a lord, but it was just the barric. We just killed a barricade. Did I just hear blunderbusters shooting? I think he got in, he got killed or he got routed or something. Yeah, this is pretty ugly. Grilling some lamb burgers while uh, watching Mercy. Oh, nice. Sounds glorious. Man, this is such a... I was going to say, this is a real grind. They could have a nuke, yeah, yeah. Now I checked carefully before I went in there to make, make sure there was no Dreadquake mortars involved. check it out we've taken out all their brave units all their disciplined units all their cowardly units just hit at the back and then ran away the blunderbusses were a bit too strong so the blunderbusses got nerfed today So now, we attack this guy from that direction. Oh, bro, look at all our dwarfs, they're all effed up. Oh, nice, we got our Oath Gold. It's time, let's go shopping. Our first Iron Warden's tankard. A lot, they're a lot, it's a lot more hard-earned now, but it tastes so much sweeter. I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like a 500 Oath Gold, a 500 Oath Gold, um... 500 earth gold tankard feels a lot sweeter than a 200 earth gold tankard somehow and you don't need pottery anymore yeah should we give it to tom
Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not like spam. I'm not just like as soon as I get access to the forge and a few oath gold, I just buy like every rune like in the you know first few turns. Like yeah, ba yeah. Basically, what would happen before would I'd get a bunch of oath gold. I'd buy a master rune of spite, rune of fear, rune of parrying, grumble rune, the other one, the iron one, the plus twenty rune. I get the three physical resist banners, the um, ward save missile resist banner. The um, one eye, uh, what's his name? One eye, the the one that does the um, the uh, the um, the leadership debuff, um, you know. And I just like smash out all that stuff, standard things like same same seven or eight items, and then I would just kind of forget about it after that. I'd kind of occasionally just remember to go in there and try and buy some stuff, but like there was only a few items that I really cared about. And yeah, now I feel like it's kind of extended that. It's extended that whole excited about oath gold phase for a lot longer, which is, I don't know, kind of cool. Good. Grimnir's axe thirsts. Your, your in real life um, productivity is doomed. Uh, apologies. I mean, it's not my fault, but yeah. I just got five levels out of that. Oh no, I already had I already had some saved up, I think. Alright, cool. Let's do Age of Reckoning Grudge Settlers Army Size plus three. So we can have eight. And then if we get that tech, we can have ten. That's pretty cool. Oh. The High King. Was did the High uh, the High King used to be like if if um Thorgrim was losing in combat or something, didn't it? Something weird like that. But now it's just if um, <clears throat> if Fulgrim's in melee, in melee, then everybody gets it. Yeah, they, yeah, it, might, it probably was ages ago they changed it, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Perfect Vigar when fighting against enemies with a thousand plus grudges. Oh, for the whole army. Unbreakable when fighting against enemies with 1,000 plus grudges own army. Campaign movement range. Oh, my God. Campaign movement range 20% after winning a battle. Thorgrim is Scarbrand now. Fuck, I didn't even notice that. Thorgrim. Thorbrand. These new dwarfs are relentless. There we go, Thorbrand. Hey, Lewis. Yeah, no, we've been having a really good game. It's good fun. Excuse me. He's all of his. A lot of his things are all melee bonus bonuses, aren't they? Melee attack, melee attack, melee attack, weapon strength, melee attack. Yeah, none of these grudge bonuses are for, for ranged. Hmm. Can't believe they left in the nine leadership skill. Whoever take. You know, leadership is like a dump stat for dwarfs. Like, dwarfs never break. They don't need leadership. Oh, uh, no, you don't get it at the start, Andrew. You have to unlock it. I have to, I have to, um, you have to unlock it by doing epic grudges. So this is one I'm trying to do. 
Um, we have to take over well, all these four for all these factions. I think we've actually lost some of. Them. I think we actually started off with more of these and we actually lost some. I think Blood River Valley that was Barrack Var. They've lost part of that. But yeah, there's that one. There's this one. We've got to just destroy all the Chaos Dwarfs and Grimgore. Um, and then there's this one that you got to take over all of Norska if you want to speed up your travel. You don't actually start with any of them. Yeah, I don't think you start with any of them. Like, the whole underway thing is just completely defunct. So, if you do the main grudge, do you get all of this and all of this? Like, is this, this is not separate or anything? And then you have to do... Fallen Ones. Retake the Realms. Retake the Realms. Retake the Realms, yeah. It's just so uh, Retake the Realms gives you all of that and all of these. Whereas this one over here is Fallen Ones. I thought there was two. Oh, this one. Fallen Ones. No, that's Retake the Realms as well. Oh, this one here is Fallen, right? fallen Ones. Yeah, that's all of them, yeah. Hmm, all right. Let's, um... I suppose so. I... <laughs> um... Should we get some shotgun action happening? Does actually does extra ammo give you more auto? Mm, does it make it more likely that the enemy is going to get army losses if you've got more ammunition? Or oh, not really? Did you get the grudge settler army? I didn't get the grudge settler army. You only get that if you max out your grudges. But I got um I got grudge settler units. Armed and ready. Fuck. Should I? Shotguns could. Yeah, I love shotguns. They're fun. Um, the three below is personal. Yeah, they're um, they're the new they're the new Thane skills. Um, Slappy Monk. I think the Thanes can choose one of them, and Thorgrim can get all three of them. Um, we can. Yeah, I'll, we can have a look at them next next time. Um. Yeah, I guess we'll fight this twice. Yeah, I want to fight this twice because then I can give. Um, I can. We can just sit around and let the um, let the engineer regenerate, and then we can fight him again, and then give the, give the tanker to somebody else and let them regenerate. That'd be a tall order. Is that a short joke? Hey, Theodorus. Um, you'll be drunk. That's oh, alright, you can be a bit drunk as long as you as long as you can still be polite and friendly. I am well. You are welcome. Um Hmm. What about if I put him here? 251. 251 is not too bad. I'm pretty I'm hoping they're not gonna come for us anyway. They're gonna sit there, that's fine. 
Oh, the Grudge Settler unit's really good. Um, they're slightly better than the normal ones. They've got they've got the same stats as normal units, but they've got like each one's got two special abilities. Like the Slayers have armor break on them. The the um, hammers have like frost uh, contact effect and um, something else. I thought I did notice some new maps, Monkey Man Fu, but I didn't. They didn't seem. Yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it, yeah, I feel like I did notice some new maps. They didn't seem weird though. Somehow, like they seemed like they were meant to be there. But yeah, I don't. Rem I don't really recognize this map. Um, and there was a few. There was a couple of um. The first, yeah, the first, actually the very first battle. That's, is that a new map? The very first battle of the Karl Franz campaign? Is that a new map? I can't, I, I've fought it a few times now, but I think it's just because I've been, I've done a few Karl Franz starts. Did they have, um, they didn't have any artillery, did they? Yeah, we're basically just waiting for this guy. Basically, just waiting for that guy to get um, regenerate to regenerate his. Um... Oh, this thing they just had minotaurs. I don't think they had any. Don't think they had any artillery. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was. Um... Hey, the heavy metal accountant. Bro, you tease me. I'm selfishly dying. Do you see the new dwarf faction bonuses? You're doing a bit on them. By the way, the beard is looking glorious. Hey, man. Um, what? What new? What? What new dwarf faction bonuses? Um, no, I wasn't. I didn't have any plans to do a video on them. I didn't know there was anything new about them. I haven't. I, I haven't really played much dwarfs. I just. Um, I tried to play. Um, like a quarter of a campaign each of. Karl Franz and um, Gelt. This is the first time I've had a really good go on the dwarfs. Uh, I played a bit of one campaign of dwarfs, but... But yeah, so, well, sorry, what are you... So are you telling me that they... That the dwarfs have new faction bonuses that are cool, or... Uh, Thorgrim's have been changed. Well, yeah, I was looking at Thorgrim's bonuses um, yesterday, uh, or earlier today, or whatever, and... Yeah, we weren't sure what some of them meant because it said that he gets extra bonuses from grudges, but I assume that that's still the old system. Um, I assume that's still the old system where you would have those little grudge quests and he would get extra rewards because the new system, yeah, I don't know. Unless it means like the Age of Reckoning bonuses, like does Thorgrim get extra Age of Reckoning bonuses? Like more than everybody else gets or what? All right, he's nearly healed up. Ah, <coughs> oh, bro. It's unfortunate. an eye on everything. Ancestors. 
So we drop some bombs over here. I think we've uh, pretty much violated these guys now. Our engineer is nearing completion. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's heaps of new stuff for the dwarfs, um, heavy metal. Sorry, I think I didn't understand your question probably. Yeah, there's heaps of new stuff for the dwarfs. Their whole faction mechanic of grudges is totally up, totally changed now. Um, yeah, each of the lords have got... Uh, yeah, Thorgrim's slightly changed his faction mechanics, plus his skill tree's changed. Ungrim's got some skill tree skill tree, skill tree changes. Um, yeah, there's shitloads of new stuff for the dwarfs. Don't worry, you'll be well pleased. If you're, uh, if you're a dwarf main, you'll have plenty to keep you entertained with the free LC. That's not even including the DLC. The DLC's got like so much Slayer stuff in it. We've got Slayer Pirates, we've got Doomseeker, you know, Axe Chain Slayers, we've got Slayer Heroes, dra like, yeah. Dra what is it? Dra no, what are they? Yeah, dra Dragon Slayer, tra Slayer Heroes, Demon Slayer, um, Slayer Generals. Rune magic has not changed as far as I can see. I haven't noticed anything different about it. There might have been something different. The runesmith skill trees have changed. They've got some extra skills. I suppose that's one thing that's sort of changed about rune magic. The runesmiths have extra cooldown reduction now than they had before, I think. Man, it's really nice to see so many um it's really nice to see so many people back as well like um yeah just yeah last couple of days has just been like yeah you know, the, well, the streams have been really big there's been like heaps of people watching the streams but also just you know lots of people lots of names that i you know hadn't seen for ages and stuff so so welcome back everybody hope that you're all as excited about it as i am yeah gyrocopters and bombers both had model increases 30% replenishment. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. Dwarfs now get post battle replenishment. Yeah. So dwarfs get post battle replenishment from every faction. You can be killing beastmen, orcs, whatever, and you can replenish your army. So if you want to go full melee, melee dwarf action, then um, it works a lot better now. Yeah. If you want to, yeah. If you want to go full dwarf melee, melee, sorry, it actually is pretty, a lot more doable now with the post battle replenishment. That's actually nice. That should heal everything. I don't think it'll heal the gyros, but maybe. Oh no, it won't heal the gyros because it still still thinks they're single entity. Oh, he went over there. A dick. Armed and ready. For Karaz and Core, I am will. Alright, Zadok's destroyed. Now we'll give the Ironwoods tankard to Gutri. It is time. Lord of Clan Borgrim. Good. Grimnir's axe thirsts. Ready. 
Rune Ricky. <laughs> Destroy them! Alright. You always already went full Longbeard Hammerer with Thorgrim before? Oh, uh, really? Well, it'd be even more crazy now. Because the post-battle replenishment lets you just keep your um, keep your melee units up as long as you uh, spread your damage around a little bit, you know? Yeah, Shadows of Shadows of Change was a bit like yeah, I was never going to be that excited about Shadows of Change because I don't love the those factions as much. Uh, whereas I really I love uh, Empire and I love Dwarfs. It feels like oh yeah, this DLC does like a few people have said it like this DLC feels like it feels like the old the good days from Wyma Two, where you know they just like an update would come out and it had heaps of cool stuff in it and you're really excited about it and you know like yeah Shadows of Change was like even when they even when they did the second release when they added all that extra stuff it was still just like yeah <laughs> I didn't really care about any of the factions even with the I mean I, I definitely thought it was a big improvement when they added all the extra stuff but it, it it didn't like I didn't like it didn't elicit an emotional response from me you know what I mean I was just like yeah, that seems like a good amount of stuff. That seems like a fair amount of stuff or whatever, you know? Like, it wasn't like I... There was no jizz. The jizz was lacking. It was lacking in jizz. The, but now, 5.0, there is jizz. The jizz is overflowing. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to stop saying that word now. Sorry. <laughs> But hopefully you got you get what I mean. That's a review. That that is not a review. That is not a review. Are you just um, what are you saying, Ashen? Are you just saying the opposite thing of what I just said, just to annoy me? Hey James Fox, um, you've definitely become my favorite Total War YouTuber. You're so much more relaxed and positive. Just keeping doing what you do. Oh yeah, no worries, buddy. I'll I will keep doing what I do. Don't worry. I also like I also uh, like Legend, and um, 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 but I would agree that yes, I am probably more relaxed than him. But yeah, it's not, I don't know, I, I don't really like to, yeah, I don't think you need to like really compare people too much and stuff, you know, it's like, everyone's just got their own thing going on. But um, I'm definitely grateful to Legend, as probably a lot of the community should be for all of the, all of the cool things he has taught us. Jeez, <laughs> we, I said we were going to stop saying that, OG. Oh, sorry, Eshin, I mis I misunderstood what you said, yeah. Yeah, no, um... Yeah, the, the, the thing that was missing with Shadows of Change and the thing that's been missing with the last few DLCs is faction reworks. There's no faction reworks with... Deal with No significant faction reworks with Shadows of Change. Not even for the DLC factions themselves. And definitely not for any other factions. Um, you know, and, like, that's... Uh, yeah, I feel like faction reworks are... are the shit that makes... You know that that makes DLCs exciting, for me anyway. Like, I feel like yeah, I feel like that's probably the, one of the major factors. Apart from me loving the fact the factions, like the fact that they actually went back and reworked some of the factions. The only thing that I'd like to see even more is for them to do reworks on factions that aren't part of the DLC. Like, if you know, the only way they could top this DLC for me in that regard would be if the next DLC has a couple of faction reworks for the DLC factions and it has a faction rework for like Norska or, you know, some other faction that needs needs an update, you know, Lizardmen or something. How's our, how's our bro going? Yeah, he's, he's healing away. Lizardman Jinx, yeah.
Yeah, Norska needs it. Like, Norska's like... Yeah, like, Norska's like very playable, but they just like aren't like... You don't get excited about playing Norska like the way that you do with Dwarfs and Empire, or for me anyway. Oh shit. <laughs> Incoming! They're attacking us! I thought it was just gonna be... We were just gonna sit here until we got all of our health regenerated. That was the plan. Wait, the wrongs. All right, so if we don't wipe out, so the wipeout, the wipeout for, so if, I think if you're in a settlement, like if you're in a settlement, I think the wiping out of the units counts towards the post-battle calculations um, because they get wiped out during the battle. But if you get wiped out, if they get wiped out, from retreating the second time the second retreat happens after you leave the battle resolution screen so you don't get like basically we're only going to get these kills are only going to be counted if we kill them during the battle if they do, if they get wiped out by the re second retreat after the battle we won't get it um you know but um but yeah but the other thing with the settlement battles is that it seemed like what was going on with the chaos dwarf campaign the other day it's like the kill will be counted for this post post battle but because it's a garrison battle it doesn't fucking care about the kills anyway it just does it based off like the buildings in there or something Not just that. Oath Gold is nerfed if it's of units killed post battle by chasing down fleeing units. So, what are you saying? So, you get Oath Gold from kills, but you get less Oath Gold from the kills you get after the end of the battle? Hmm. Yeah, I was wondering what Oath Gold was based on. I, I was sort of assuming that it was just based on the total gold value, like the kind of like the instant money that you get after the battle. Did he... Did he... I don't know, he's still healing. Got a couple more points to get. If you attack with one army reinforced by an army, you get a crazy low amount of Goth Gold. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Seems like you make way more from buildings than from combat. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't actually paying attention to the first one. Away from another hold. Isn't it? Doesn't it feel nice just to say the quotes from the game sometimes? Especially the dwarf ones. I feel like they're the best. 
97 oath gold. Uh, that's not too bad, I guess. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it's like, where's my earth gold? I thought it wasn't gonna give it to me for a second. Alright, so we just gotta all we gotta do is get over here to Demon Stump and Gates of Zar, kill those two settlements, and then we're good. Hey Vasily. Yeah, we already we've already done the old buildings thing a few times, but let's hit it again. So the feast hall now does control still does control and gives you beer but it now also gives you corruption and max level gives you corruption in adjacent provinces so no ones like this and like that, and like that then this thing now gives you money but also gives you oath gold but you can now only build either the trading depot or the trinket maker they're mutually exclusive so this one gives you money and construction cost reduction so yeah i guess that's pretty cool um so if you have three of them, that's like 45%. Well, no, if you have three of them, it's like 30% construction cost reduction. Um, whereas these give you Oath Gold. Um, also... Oh, yeah, I feel like these look at these um, Skaven buildings have got more shit on them now than they used to have. Um, Plague Immunity duration, one turn. Oh, yeah, Plague Immunity now is different. Something about... Yeah, Plague Duration, minus one turn... Hidden armies will be visible, armies in region. Um, I wonder if that means that includes st st stealth, or that includes ambush, I guess. Oh, that's cool, actually, for multiplayer, head-to-head -head multiplayer campaigns. If you're worried about enemies trying to ambush you, you build this so they can't ambush you. That's really cool. This, if you're fighting against Skaven. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool, isn't it? And it gives you control and corruption as well. So it's quite good to just if you want to just stack control. Three control from level two building. Three control. You can put these two level two buildings for six control. Beastman camp direct detection, yeah. Um Enemy hero success chance, yeah, blah, blah. Um yeah, all the heroes have moved down to tier two access to get you just to get your first hero, but the but um capacity still has to get still tier three. Um, a bunch of the units all got moved down to tier two. Iron Drake's a tier two. Thunder is tier two. Oh yeah, um, dwarf warriors are tier zero now. So you get dwarf warriors and miners from here. I'm not really sure why you would build miners though anymore. Like I guess the miners have armor piercing, but yeah, I don't know what if I would ever really build miners now. Thunder is a tier two, yeah. Thunders and Iron Drakes are tier two, pretty crazy. And um, Trollhammers are tier three, and Trollhammers now have 170 range, longer than archers, so they're pretty cool. Give miners Warbreaker, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, like, yeah, like the dwarfs are, like, yeah, like this, 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 um, yeah, like this rework for dwarfs is pretty cool. These do we drink weak ale. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember that one, Clemens. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye out for that one. So I don't think I want to keep Tower of Gorgoth. I think I'm going to sell that to our little our allies who also don't want to be here. But I'm just going to make them. I'm just going to force them anyway. It looks like we could hit that in one turn. If we if we move it in camp to there, we should be able to take it and occupy it next turn. I'll recruit an uh, allied... Um, yeah, I'll get another one in there. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, the growth building as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, the growth is um, 20 now. Instead of... What's the normal growth? 7 or some shit? Yeah, it's 20, 30, 40. 
they're like dwarfs having slow slow replenishment and slow growth was boring let's just give them heaps of growth and replenishment Yeah, the dwarves just feel a lot more like fun now, you know? Like, yeah, like you can, like before it was kind of like, it was cool. Like the dwarves were like a challenging kind of campaign and you had to, yeah, 7, 15, 22, that sounds right. Um, they were, it was like a challenge campaign, a challenging campaign that had like these different things you had to overcome and stuff like that. Whereas now it's just like, they're just awesome. They just have heaps of awesome shit and all of their awesome stuff goes together to be awesome. You know, like that's kind of how it feels now. I think I'm going to go for Guardian. Yeah, we don't really need a stalk. Stork guy. We can always respec it and change him up if we need to later on. It's probably at some point uh, pretty soon I should probably actually take uh, sharpened weapons on this guy. Oh yeah, so missile block chance plus ten percent and physical resistance ten percent. So he's got missile block chance ten percent because he had zero missile block chance prior. Um, plus five melee attack, plus fifteen weapon strength, and aura of endurance gives him an aura thirty five meter aura that gives plus five melee defense and plus five missile resistance. So yeah, that's all good stuff. Yeah, I kind of like I like I remember talking about blue line before, and I was like, I was kind of agreeing, like, yeah, I do want to get some blue line. But then I just got totally distracted by all these other things, and I'll, I'll probably never get any blue line now. Uh, hopefully, I will. Onward. Do you reckon I should put them out I just in case there's a lethal ambush? On my way. Yeah, I'll put them out just in case there's like a lethal oh, ambush God, army right. floating around here. Oh yeah, we totally forgot there was an army here. I was gonna check, ah, uh, bro. I was gonna check that before I did all that, but I forgot. It's as good as done. Got. I, I suppose so. I'm ready. Asking the roots. Hmm. I don't know where his army went. But yeah, he's probably over here somewhere. Vengeful rude lord. It's as good as done. I'm going. Lord of clan. I just did it to him again. That's alright. Force mark face, yeah. Um Vengeful Rude Lord. What? Oh, where's my Grungni Lord? Did I just recruit him over the other side? Um. No, oh, it's not that much. It's not that expensive. It'll be fine. 93, fuck, maybe I should uh, sort out the public order a bit. Oh man, um... Yeah, I really like Vallejo because I like the I like the uh, hero action blocking. We need to try and get some rune bearers as well. Send out some rune smiths on um, hero action patrol. 
Yeah, Valea. You summoned me. Valea's will binds me to you. Aye, it is time. Sixteen oh four. Man, I really want a. One turn growing knee, two turns growing knee, three turns growing knee. Should I wait for one turn or and get the discount before I build like or every building under the sun here? I guess I should. Grand Journey's into all slayers. That'd, that'd be pretty cool, yeah. Um, Ungram get, has um, Journey's up. He, Ungram has a special skill that... So he starts off with Journey's End for slayers in his army, and he has a special skill that gives him Journey's End upgraded for slayers in his army, which we don't know what it is, but I assume it puts it back to the old Journey's End, the 50% one. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Hey, Wills Paul, what, what are you, what are you, what are you saying to me? Mm, no, nah, I didn't notice anything with the dwarf. Oh, with the forge, yeah. Everything's super expensive now. I didn't notice any of the runes changed, but the forge, um, but the forge prices are super expensive. Tankers cost 500 instead of 200 now. All right, um... We need diplomacy. You may... What? Ready. We've got a goodly amount of cash out of some of these battles. By the I think we need to keep doing... We need to keep sacking more. Because that seems to be working for us. In terms of economy. I already have little patience. And let's solve for the traitor kin of the East. Oh, this guy's going to declare war on me. be quick and spit out your offer. <sighs> not peace, just not war. We're not at war at the moment. Um, and I was prepared to ignore him. I was prepared to like, I was prepared to be like, I'm just not going to look over there. There could be some chaos dwarves, but I'm just not going to look over there. And you don't look at me and I won't look at you and we'll just walk by. That was, I was prepared to let that happen. See, the thing is, it cost me 1,300 gold to go to war with him, but I know it's going to cost me tens of thousands of gold to deal with him. Although, on the other hand, I do get to take all of his shit, which is an important, which is an important part of war that's not to be overlooked. People focus too much on the human cost of war. They don't. They don't make enough out of all of the, uh, out of all of the other re nations' resources that we can plunder. <clears throat> and when it rains, it pours. See now. Now, if I knew that Warzag was going to declare war on me exactly at that same moment, it's like, hmm, maybe I would have paid the. Maybe I would have paid the money. 
See, yeah, that's yeah, that's one thing I've noticed. I used to always say no out of hand whenever somebody did that, but then I learned that it's actually almost always cheaper to pay the money. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. That one was a bit like. So that's what I mean. I can be like, oh, I can do one thing that's like totally cheesy, but then another thing I can't do. Oh yeah, we didn't end up doing the um, the grudge cheese on the green skins. Send me to vengeance. Retake the realms. Thronebearers. Ooh, he's Tritch. So, do you reckon that they'll, if I sell this Tower of Gorgoth to those, these guys, I can't sell it to them. Yeah, if I had paid, then Wurzag might not have declared war on me, yeah, uh, because he would have seen that I had didn't have that many enemies. I had more enemies. Can we increase the grudges by entering battle, insta retreating, and then defeat? Maybe, but it, mm, I don't think it'd be the same as it was before. It's more like. See, if you look at the grudges, it's like faction actions. So the faction, their faction actions is only 39. So even if they beat one of my armies, I don't think it would go up to like 200 or something. You know, that's their whole faction actions is 39. So I imagine retreating from the once isn't going to drive it through the roof, but maybe, I don't know. I kind of want to auto resolve this. We're going to lose. Um... That's all right. We're going to lose some stuff. We knew that was going to happen. Um... Uh, this army is just, you know, whatever. It's fine. Uh, okay. So. What? If you say so, So. Now these guys. Yeah, so we're thinking that if... So this guy's there's 435 grudges for this, mainly because we hate Greenskin's guts so bad, right? Um, so... Oh, oh, check this out. Positive Diplomacy, 36. So if we hate them more, we get more grudges. Or if they hate us more, we get more grudges or something. Let's see if we can manipulate that as well. Wait up. So first of all, let's sell them Gates of Tsar. Message. For all their money. Yeah, good one. All right. Now, how do we feel about it now? Has our positive diplomacy minus 72. So they because they love us now, um, our grudges went down even more. Oh, there's no grudges. Oh, you don't get any grudges for these. Hey, James Fox. 
You deserve yourself some Bugman's 5X. I'm so stoked to play the new Dowie myself. Thanks for all the great content. Uh, no worries, James Fox Rocks. You, are, you do indeed rock. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. That helps me out a lot. Um, yeah, thanks, everyone, I, and as well. <laughs> but especially you, James. Cheers. Legend. Um, all right, let's um, rip these dudes off. Maybe it takes turn to kick in. Nah, I reckon it's because there's no garrison. Because the whole point of doing it was because I thought I'd be able to sneak attack them because they got no garrison. But, um, but yeah, I'm guessing because they got no garrison, that means no grudges. Well, yeah, well, maybe you're right. Maybe it does take a turn to kick in. Yeah, it could, that could be true. What's your message? <laughs> yeah, no grudges there either. So we could wait a turn and then they would get a garrison. No garrison or a turn to kick in is the same outcome. Yeah, exactly. We won't be able to tell. Once the garrison comes, we won't be able to tell if it was a turn to kick in or if it was the garrison. But yeah. I kind of suspect it's the garrison thing, though. But I don't know. I mean, I guess we don't know. It's the same. Yeah, we won't know the difference. Um, so, do we want to cheese? Are we more? Is it more important to cheese the grudges or more important to get replenishment so we can kill these fuckers? Hmm. Oh, no worries, KT. Um, yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed it. There's some, um, that's some, uh, some dirty region trading cheese right there, but I think that's a cool video because it should have, well, it shows you about region trading, but also shows you about I don't know. It's just, I thought it was an interesting topic, anyway. But yeah, I'm glad it helped you. Um, helped you get started with your Kislev campaign as well. That's awesome. So positive diplomacy, 108. If this is bad news, I'll poke at now. What do they think about that? Still positive diplomacy, 108. Okay. I... My anger burns bright. How's their diplomacy now? Still positive diplomacy 108. Okay, that's weird. So, hmm. So just doing any sort of positive diplomacy ruins your grudges. But then just fucking them over again doesn't doesn't ruin your grudges. Lord of Clan hmm, that's Morgan. weird. The High King acts. Retake the realms. Throw banners. Let's march. Everything goes in the book exactly. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if we could raise that with hero actions. Hmm. No. All right. We'll put Rorik. Heading out. Put Rorik over here. But we will switch him out for Garazin. So we can get out of force march stance. But it was, but when I was trading the regions, it was, I was, it was updating real time. It was like when I was doing positive actions, it was updating real time. But then when I started doing negative actions, it didn't update. This is bad news. 
Jesus, I'll poke out your eyes. Yeah, see, look how many negative things we've got on there. None of the negative things seem to count. Only the positive things seem to count. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Good. Grimnir's axe thirsts. How to beat Castelton in the motherland. Um, oh, um, we know a cheese for that, actually. Was that Nick Claw that was doing the cheese? So the cheese for that is actually exactly what I just did here. So basically up the top, you know, up the top here, you've got those different invocations that you got. You choose the invocation that gives you five, five devotees or whatever in the race for the motherland every time you take a settlement. And then you recruit a lord at every single settlement in your in your whole faction. Then you sell every single settlement in your whole faction to like Azag. And then you just reoccupy all those settlements. And then it gives you five it gives you five points for each one. And then you sell all those settlements to you know fucking Ropsman clan. Then you declare war on them, retake all the settlements for another five points for each one. And then you resell all those settlements to fucking Azazel, you know, you just do it over and over again. But yeah, I didn't come up with that. I think it was, uh, I'm not sure who did come up with that. Nick Claw, maybe? But yeah, did that, do you get what I'm saying? Uh, I, I haven't tried it, but yeah, apparently it does, yeah. Uh, somebody showed me a screenshot of winning the motherland in like six turns or eight to ten turns or something. Yeah, nice. Can you confirm for me um, if it works, KT, if you're able even just if you can do it one with one settlement? Actually, back up your save before you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then email me that if it works then email me the save so I can do it as well alright yeah I'm a bit worried this guy's going to get ganked but I think he'll be alright should I keep recruiting we've still got a bit of um, still got a bit of income left there's no point having income if you're not going to use it for killing people What's the point of having money if you aren't going to enjoy it? <clears throat> Retake the realm. All right, so that's all good. But now we've got this whole Wurzag situation developing over here. Onwards. Should we like raise a new army or? We've got so many Grungni Lords now. Should I should I keep this or should I convert it into an oath? Should I get rid of it and get an oath girl building instead? I kind of feel like I've gone too far now. I can't like, you know, it's too late to go back and build an oath girl building now. First step is to get enough devotion to invoke Urson. Is Urson the one that gives you the five devotees for each um, settlement capped? For a last slot, I don't think we need walls really. 
growth, maybe. Artillery. I don't think we're going to need artillery. We can just use grudge throwers that we get from... Um, thing, unless we want to get flame cannons later, maybe. Oh, yeah, let's get some flame. Let's get some guns. Oh, yeah, we need to... If we're going to do all... If we're going to spend, like, a million gold, then we need to... Um, we need to recruit some dudes. broke extremely soon it's gonna we're gonna rapidly get broke To say, we'll hear it before Oath Gold. <laughs> Jesus, I'm trying to sell all my shit to this guy, and now he's just going to confederate. Strength rank 80. Strength rank 80 is pretty good. I mean, we're strength rank 82, so he's got like nearly two full stacks. Um. What do you want? Oh wow, he's got like, some grudge settler slayers. These look really cool with the red pants. The yeah, he's got a bit of an army. Um, who's he at war with actually? Honor oh shit! Yeah, no wonder he's a bit alarmed. Should I take the Confederation or? New post battle replenishment. Yeah, he's got, they've got the same post battle replenishment as like high elves and dark elves now. They're like taking slaves type one. You can just, they can get replenishment from any enemies. Um, all right, let's game this out. So if I don't declare war on him, I mean, if I don't confederate him, sorry, then um, that'll delay That'll delay um, these guys. That'll delay uh, Queek getting to me, and he's sort of a barricade against this guy. But he's going to get wiped out by Queek pretty fast, and this guy, and Draz. If we do confederate him, then my economy's immediately fucked. But for the wisdom of Valea. Mm, I get these two crappy armies, but he's not like, yeah, see, he's not close enough to anything to like immediately strike out and give me value back. I could take Black Crag, but oh, if we want to get real cheesy. Let us feast and drink. I 
think we're gonna take I think I'm gonna take the Confederation. Because we get Karaz Ankor. I mean we get um Are you a dwarf? I am a dwarf in this in this scenario I am. Which one's World's Edge Archway? Oh this one. Wait, I have to be a bit careful about this. So what about Gates of Zar? Doesn't he want that? Got Gert Kerberon. Dowie from another hole. Hey, Gates of Zar. Tis a great day. No, no. So giving giving him a him gaining a settlement will does lower their willingness to confederate by about usually I think by about twenty or twenty five or something like that, but. Um, once you've lowered it once, like it doesn't go any lower. So I've already sold him heaps of settlements. Like, so he's already got the minus 25 on there. He still is, he's still wanting to confederate. He's still at 16 plus to confederate, even with the 20%, the 20 penalty from trading regions. And because I've traded in regions recently, I can still keep trading in more regions. It doesn't make any difference because he's already got the penalty on there. You know what I mean? Like if I waited five more times, if, if I waited five more turns, then like he would be like then the the then he would be yeah if i waited like another five or six turns then that 20 point penalty or whatever would go away and so then so then he would want to confederate even more he'd be like confederation plus 35 or 40 or whatever but then if i traded him something you would see the 25 penalty or whatever come on but because the penalty's already on there you can't see it that makes sense <laughs> Okay, so, so yeah, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to confederate him, but only after I've cheesed the absolute shit out of him and just taken thousands and thousands of gold from him. And all of our buildings will get, we can trade him our entire, like, our whole faction because all of our buildings are the same buildings as he's got. So we won't lose anything, you know? Um, like, nothing will get destroyed. From another hold arrive. Tis Although I just realized we don't actually have that many buildings to actually trade. Aye. Um, Mount Squighorn. Actually, the high place we can trade as well, right? More monies, yeah. Your strength rank went up due to giving away settlements. <laughs> nah, it wouldn't have been my strength rank. Um, it would have been... Um, um, it might have been... Hmm. It might have been um, like him, like because once I gave him these regions, he's like got more enemies in contact with him and stuff like that. Might have been something like that. Like he feels more threatened now because he's closer to more enemy regions. Hi, let's hear what you have to say. We'll hear it before Old Gold. Very well. No, I don't think they fixed the latter thing, uh, total entropy. I'm pretty sure I've been still having that same problem come, come, in this patch. Let us feast and drink. Mount Squighorn should still be good, right? Yeah, see, all this is still only going to give us enough money for maybe like one turn. Maybe. And what can the Dowie do for you on this fine day? All right. All right, so we could probably trade. So pillars of Grogni for high place. Agreed. High place for pillars of Grogni. Ah, oh, no, not quite. Mm. 
Mount Gumbad. Yeah, we can't really give him Mount Gumbad. Because that's partially got a partially completed building in it, so we don't want to get that destroyed. Yeah, I think that's about all we can do. I don't know. I could try and trade some of the regions. Well, I'd have to. Oh, yeah, I have to get better in first. Yeah. Aye. Let's hear what you have to say. We'll hear it before Oath Gold. So yeah. So basically, I just sold my entire faction to him for about twelve thousand gold, and then we just confederated him and got it all back again. So, yeah, so that's it's like not that much money though, really, because we're rocking minus 4.3k, so we've only got enough to go for like three turns, three, four turns before we run out of money. Vengeful room, Lord. But we've now got Kazador Kara Dragon Slayer, unique legendary, well, not legendary, but yeah, he's like a unique dwarf lord who's got a special. Um, Ability called a special trait called the Thunderhorn causes fear. He is plus five melee attack when fighting against ogres, greenskins, and skaven for all units in the army. Um, he causes terror when fighting greenskins and terror when fighting skaven. And he's got this new trait, Ranger Trained, which gives you plus five campaign movement range and plus fifteen percent speed for his own army. It's actually pretty cool. What did the AI do with him? He's only turned to level two. Yeah, I know. What's he been doing? He's been soaking his hands in ivory liquid or something. I feel like I should have inherited. I should have inherited all of his grudges. How much supply lines are we rocking? Two point two k. Um. Yeah, I guess we can get rid of this one. I suppose so. I'm ready. Got rid of that one already. Yeah, I've only got five armies. Those two are full. That one's recruiting. I kind of need him. And then we've got these two. What? Oh, we've got an extra dwarf thane. Confident. Scaven denier. He's a scaven denier. Uh, should I kill this guy off? Oh, we're three out of two on Thane, so I guess I'll keep it. So, what are we going to do? Um, these... Uh, so we're not, at, we're not actually at war with that minor. We're not actually at war with this minor faction here, I don't think, unless... Yeah, that's Clan Verms that's there, right? Or is it Clan Carrion? Or maybe both. There's only four settlements. Fifteen percent is a lot, yeah. And the five percent campaign movement range is really good too. Yeah, they changed some of the mechanics a little bit, I think, Ruby. No, that's all the same, I think. But uh, maybe, oh, uh, actually, I don't know. Maybe Thorgrim's Send me to personal trait might have changed. No. Hmm. That's Clan Verms. The white one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Clan Carrion's the one that's in Nagash's. Ah, okay, cool. Because they're actually pretty strong. Um, yeah, I don't know. Should I go after Clan Verms? I can't believe I just declared war on these greenskins and Draz and Wurzag in the same turn. That was uh, unwise, wasn't it? Glowing. A rune smith's duty is never done. Time for a reckoning. 
This is not a bad little army. But I feel like if I take it up against Wurzag, it's going to find out. Going to find out pretty quick. God, must be settled. Who is Verms at war with? No one. Verms at war with no one. Still has a hammer bonus, yeah. The main thing I was wondering is because he's on the title screen, it says that he gets increased bonuses from grudges. So I was just wondering if these are any different for Thorgrim than they are for any other faction. But I don't think so. I think it looks pretty much the same as what the other factions get. So I don't know. I feel like it might be just a holdover from his old, his old faction bonuses when he used to get um, bonus rewards from grudges. But yeah, I'm not sure. Puzzle from sending heroes to ruins still exists? No. That was really cool. I like those. I like that mechanic. Should I bring this army in to attack Draz? Or should I keep it over here to defend? Try and slow down the encroachment. This Karakate Peaks, that, surely that, that's not Verms. That must be... Are these three would be Verms. That must be Queek that's take Karakate Peaks already. Freaking hell. Queek's going to declare war on me soon too. Oh, no, I'm already at war with Queek. Oh, shit. Where's Thorak? I need to find Thorak so I can sell everything to Thorak. Yeah, it's Queek, yeah. So, ah, fuck. I feel like, I feel like we're going to lose all this. Take our cave peaks. Like, there's an army in there, though. He's got a stack in there. Um... Watch. Lord of Clan Morgrim. Did you just make this a disaster campaign? Yeah, I think so. I think I just disaster campaigned myself. Sell the Imric. Yeah, I can't really bring myself to sell the Dwarven realms to Imric. If uh, these Badlands places, I could sell that shit to Imric for sure. But I can't sell Karakazul to Emmerich. So I'm going to have to just let it get abandoned. Get it, let it get taken by um, Queek. Emmerich will lose it. Yeah, I know, yeah. So how about, yeah, should I bring these two armies up to here with these guys? And just have a little doom ball up here and like lose Karakazul and stuff and then we can retake it later. There's nothing tier 4 or anything is there? No, there's nothing tier 4 or anything. If we lose these three settlements, or these four abandon the holds well I'm not going to willfully abandon them I'm just going to, you know they might something bad, something might, bad might happen I'm sure you can win against Queek um, maybe. Oh, you, oh, you reckon I should take Karakate Peaks? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. If I want to actually, if I want to actually defend Spike Peak, something like if I want to defeat, if I want to, man, I must be getting tired. If I want to defend Karakazul, the way I would do that is by just attacking, like conquering as much of the shit as I can. Because I can't, that's kind of like how we're talking about walls. Like, I'm not going to build walls on all these things and hope they survive getting attacked. Like, that's not going to work. You just try and make, just kind of conquer as much shit around it as you can to try to make it safe that way. But I don't know. I don't think, yeah, I don't know. I'm scared. Karaoke peaks, you reckon? I could set a, I could set an ambush trap. Like I could, um, I could set an ambush trap, put him there, put this guy like somewhere here in force march or whatever. Can I help? Let us begin. Rune Ricky. If you say so, Beardling, I'm off. I'm leaving. Um, get rid of that piece of shit. For starters. A couple of dwarf warriors, some slayers, warriors. It's all good stuff. And we get rid of the miners. Yeah, that's pretty, that's kind of like almost a pretty good army. The 
setting off. Mm, I'll see. Yeah, do you reckon I should leave him in ambush stance or no? Nah, I won't leave him in ambush stance. We'll um. I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have moved him back, but that's all right. Things going well. Uh, not going that well. Yeah. Do you want me to send you the save file? Blah, blah blah. No, like if you if you get it set up so that you, and you confirm you can do it, then then I want the save file so I can check it out. But no, I, I can. I've got my own saves where I can set it up myself. So yeah, like I was saying, if you've already got it set up, like you've got all the regions and you're about to sell them to somebody and you know that you know that you can sell them and take them back and all that, then yeah. But yeah, I've probably got a save already that I could check it out on. But yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, if you've already got it like done sort of thing, then you can send me the save and I'll check it out. He's got another army in Black Crag. There, that's not his though. That's, that's Verms. That's Verms there and that's weak there, I'd say, as a guess. Oh, it did work, KT? Nice one, yeah. Yeah, if you've got a save where you've got all the settlements ready to sell before you sell it, like, that's, yeah, that was, that was it. My email is just mercythemad at gmail.com. <clears throat> oh, yeah, our, um... Oh yeah, all our public orders fucked now because we confederated. Forgot about that. Oh, thanks, look, KT. Uh, nice work, and uh, yeah, I'm glad you um, glad you were able to do some sciencing there. Hopefully, um, how's that? So, is your are you your is your Kislev situation solved now? We're like saving disaster campaigns via like advice. Phone in. It's like my it's like Mercy's helpline. Call in for campaign advice. Can we trade this to um, Emric? Trade anything to Emric? Well, what is it? Do not some pit. The dragon is some pit a dwarf place? It sounds like it sounds like an orc place, but it sounds like a dwarf place as well. Some pit, dwarf key dwarf settlement. Dwarfs will add grudges to anyone who occupies the settlement, but them. Because <laughs> it was absolutely doable now. Oh, nice. Did you want to save before I recruited the lords outside of the settlements before selling them? Uh, yeah, either, yeah, either way, yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. Or, I imagine it took you a couple of turns to recruit all the lords. So I guess I'd want the save from, like, after you've got all the lords ready to go, when you're about to sell it. Yeah. That's some pit, all right, it sure is. This, the name some pit implies a pump, so it's absolutely a dwarf settlement. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it's got, this, got this book next to it. This is a dead giveaway. All right, cool. Oh, it's still the same turn. <laughs> like, after all, all this stuff's happened, and it's like it's still the same turn. Um, all right, cool. I do. Words. Master of Runecraft. What's our hero capacity? Yeah. All right, see what happens. Yo, the prince. Greetings. What do you require of the Karazhan Corps? Yeah, all right. Let's be friends. Yep, 
Yeah, do you reckon I should... Um... Oh, so I guess Queek was not in Karakai Peaks. Does Imrek have dwarf settlements? Oh, maybe. Does it ever have that starting enemy that's like those minor dwarfs? I am the High King. I will hear you beg now. Yeah, probably one of his armies. Oh, they declare war on me. I was just thinking about declaring war on them, but they jumped the gun on me. Sneaky Skaven. Clan Helhein, yeah. Clan Helhein's got a cool name, don't they? Uh, so he just looted Spite Peak. That was that was Queek himself, in person. Oh, we hit level seventeen. Got um, Gotrig and Felix ready to go now. The Gotrig and Felix battle is actually pretty hectic. You've got to like kill these three demons and stuff. Um, if we could, if we had the Gyro Bomber pretty healthy, then we could maybe do it. The quest battle looked kind of rough, yeah. It's um, it's not very rough if you play as Gelt, but yeah, I reckon it'd be pretty rough for these guys. Um, show you the tick tree. Uh, there's too much stuff in the tick tree. It'll take forever. I can give you a general vibe of the tech tree. Um, most of the techs are similar, but they're like all moved around and stuff. Um, but yeah, but basically you lock, you can't go past here until you've got seven technologies out of this first section. So you've got to kind of unlock this stuff before you move on to this stuff. Um, and what else is exciting about it? Uh, yeah, some of the techs require Oath Gold, some don't. And the thing that I'm most excited about right now is this interlocking shields. Gives shield wall ability to all of your um, longbeards and dwarf warriors, which gives them 20%, 20 extra missile block chance, 10 extra missile resistance, and 100 mass so that they, when they get charged, they don't bounce off as much, which is pretty cool. And, um, and then there's also this super version of it that you can get for your, um, get for your iron breakers your shield wall of Gromeral, which does basically the same thing, except also gives them ballistic plating, which means that they're able to block cannon shells with their shields. Yeah, it's not just shield wall, though. It's super shield wall. Shield wall of Gromeral. And that means that normally normally artillery can't be deflected by shields, but, but I think with their, uh, with ballistic plating, they can actually block cannon shots with their shields. So, yeah. That's those are my two texts that I'm excited about the most. <laughs> Thanks for telling me about those guys. They're awesome. If you say so, beardling. Ah, oh, fucking hell. All right, so so this army is the one that was out of Karakate Peaks, I assume. He just took Spite Peak. At least he's starting at the bottom, I guess. Should I sell some pit to Imric? Well, what is it? Do not squander the Dragon Prince's time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I should sell it to him. I mean, I would, I mean, it probably makes sense to sell it to him, but it feels bad. Hey, uh, Aranthal, Aranthiel. Take, take a look at the last guild tree tech. Ah, all right. Since you're literally paying me to do it. Guild Grand Throne Chamber. Population surplus two for newly captured settlements. Oh, nice. Hey, we have to still figure out whether that um, you can cheese that growth um, with the new uh, with the settlements.
Uh, thanks a lot, Arantheo. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. Um, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, 28 turns is all it takes to get there. Um, yeah, we were talking about this before with Geld because Geld has the same thing. If you take his dilemma, he gets like he only gets one though. He gets one population. We wonder if you can cheese it by abandoning settlements. Like if you if you've got heaps of gold, just keep like abandoning a settlement, recap, abandon, recap, abandon, recap, and then just get one growth per turn from that. Seems like that'd be pretty good. We're like just quickly pumping up a settlement, a province. We've got to defend the holds, don't we? Buster arms. The runes are agreed. Made. I've cast the runes. Three K grudges? What do you mean three K grudges? Uh as in like how many grudges we've done. Three point four K uh getting there. Assume it would only work on settlements you take via conquest. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good idea if it works that way. But I just thought it'd be something to check out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking about just taking all the growth settlers. Uh, I've only got four, but yeah. We've got to defend Karaka. We've got to defend Karaza Karak, though, don't we? There's no choice. Past us. So if we sell him, if we sell him some pit, nah. If we sell him some pit, we'll never get it back from him. Um, A moment can be spared, but no more. If we could take, yes. Yeah, if we could just take this settlement, if we could take Darkhold, then we could give him, we could give him Grey Hag, we could give him all this stuff then. Alright, there's not going to be... Yeah, Demon... Demon Sump... Whatever is... is uh... Alright, he'll take that next turn. We'll stay... Leave him invisible so... Draz doesn't go after him. We'll smash this... Smash this bastard. Oh, I forgot to put the regeneration on the Thane. He meant 3k grudges on Wurzag. He's begging to be squished. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So I thought it was like, oh, okay. So, hmm. All right. Maybe we'll have to look at, so, oh, maybe it's like, maybe the ones we've been looking at are, are like saying faction grudges because, ev because everyone in the faction gets a percentage of evil stuff that other dudes in the faction do. But because Wurzag is the primary doer, he's got like, you know, all of the grudges. I'll have to check him out, check out his grudge breakdown and see what it says. Well, I've got a very melee orientated army. Because Wurzag killed Barak Bar, yeah. It would make sense that it like, the individuals that actually do the stuff get the most grudge. Yeah, it wasn't Wurzag actually, it was those um those brown brown green skins. No, uh, he's not a caster, is he? Oh shit. They've got a bunch of heroes. Hmm. Yes. 
satisfy the brooch. Very well. Get moving. I think she crashed. That's a crash. PC's going in the book. Yeah, I'm interested to see what, check out Wizag's grudge breakdown and see what it's all about. Yeah, like the ones that I looked at, they all seem sort of generic. Like, um, you know, the fact their factions had done things to offend us or their race had done things to offend us or whatever. Um, but yeah, I wonder if Wurzeg's got a whole separate category of like things he's personally done or something. Because it's not like every, it's not like every one of Wurzeg's forces, like each of them has, we could just auto resolve it, but Should I just order is over? Man, that gyro bomb is trying to die so hard, isn't it? See, it doesn't get any replenishment. That's the only that's the other thing. Like it doesn't every time I take the replenishment, it doesn't do anything. So is Tretch like totally busted now or is he still? Nah, he's pretty busted. Send me to vengeance. For the Karazan Corps. Throw banners. Let's march. Put a bomber in a different army to heal up and then bring it back to that army. Um, I don't know. I feel like the safest place for it is wherever Thorgrim is. Like, whatever army Thorgrim's in with his heroes and his elite units and everything, you know, like, well, not really elite units, but it's, yeah, I feel like it's the safest place, basically. I mean, it is, it is going to constantly get abused while it's with Thorgrim, but at least, you know, he'll never lose a battle. Hopefully. If Thorgrim loses a battle, then we're in trouble. Maybe I should, um... Do this one-pointer. It's pretty good for auto-resolve, I'd say. Alright. Yeah, he's ready to take that next turn. I have Gorgoth. Uh, should I just build, like... I don't know if we're going to hold it long enough to be worthwhile, but... These guys are probably going to take that. Yeah, if... If... If Imre could just get off his ass and take that... 
Oh, so all these Ashridge Mountains is dwarfish. Oh, no, just Ashridge Mountains. It's a grudgeon. I don't know, space doors. Oh, yeah, so what was, what's Wurzag's deal? Oh, shit. So this is not actually Wurzag himself, but he's got, like, all these things. Acts of aggression. Yeah, yeah, so he's... Yeah, these guys got heaps more stuff. So before I was looking at, they just had faction actions and um, green skin actions on the settlements that and stuff that I'd looked at. Um, whereas this p dude personally has done acts of aggression, like this this guy Nasher Dribble Chin has been taking stuff out, so that's why he's got so much. A negative diplomacy five hundred eighty five. <laughs> so that's because we hate each other's guts. Cool, plenty of grudges, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's gonna siege us next turn. Lord of Clan Morgrim. He's a library wizard. Right, he's probably going to get siege locked anyway, so I'll put what the recruitment, the normal recruitment on this guy. Oh, yeah, I can put. I might have some pretty epic, epic sieging going on this turn. Four, level four, he's going to have Wrath and Ruin. So if we survive one more turn, we can switch him in. I wonder if there's a cap I can go to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we don't really want a rebellion up here, do we? Or do we want a rebellion up here? Hmm. No, we're getting pretty, it's getting pretty expensive. I guess we'll just have to forego, forego the money there for a turn. The axe thirsts for war. All right, yeah, I think we need, I think Karakate Peaks is like, like Karakate Peaks, basically. Um, oh, he's got another army in there. But how strong is he? I don't know, 12. Yeah, he can't be that strong, can he? Alright, fuck it. I'm gonna jump this guy to there. Oh. Well, that happened. The council is disappointed. It's like, oh. Oh, I feel sad now. Um. Fuck me. Um. Kazador. I don't know. Should I leave Kazador in there? I don't know if we should leave him in there. Feeling like we should not risk him. We'll let, uh, we'll let. Um, you will let Bikram Redmain try his luck in that one. I wonder if these guys could... Black Iron Mine's got seven units. Yes. We've got 10, 17. So yeah, if we if we popped an ambush there, maybe we could get them. Man, we're so fucked. I need to sell, um, I need to sell all my shit to Imrik, like, immediately. Otherwise we're gonna run out of money. Um... Yeah, I think we're gonna have to sell stuff to Imrik. There's nothing else... I was born to nothing else for it. Not lesser beings. The shame. It's too much to be born.
This will be masterful. Should we sell Karakazul? I feel like Karakazul's like like we still can't even get can't even get a military alliance out of it. I think if I wait next turn, he'll probably get more he'll go up by a fair bit and then we'll be able to get military alliance at least. Uh maybe. Or we could sell him that in exchange for making him go to a war with Clan Moors, but I don't know if that's a good idea because he might just get wrecked. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good idea though because he's not. I don't know, he's strength rank 46, so he's pretty strong. Moore's a strength rank 11 though. Yeah, I feel like we. I feel like we screwed up here. Yeah, I feel like going after Tretch was a mistake. Because. Yeah, if we had have not gone after Tretch, like sure he would Tretch would have come for us, but we could have just kind of let like just fought him here and just like kept breaking him. Maybe, I don't know. Well, by the end of next turn, I think our upkeep's gonna be substantially lower, so that's good. This ain't looking good. It is not looking good, that is true. On the other hand, and suckers. It's a pretty sexy army compared to their shitty army. Uh oh, lightning, whoop lightning. Fuck, how much magic has he got? 100 magic. Free money, yeah. I'll just take the auto because I think if we fight it manually, we'll get zapped a fair bit. Ah, that was pretty brutal. I don't know, maybe we would have done better if we had just fought it. Kill Tretch, hold Kara as a Karak, then one problem at a time. Grudges will be settled. Ah, oh, they didn't get they didn't get my ambush. Yeah, I think I was too far back. Right, we'll try and do some damage. Yeah, I'm not sure how well. <laughs> Yeah, we kind, of, we kind of need some mobility to disrupt those flame weapon teams, but um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see how we go. Oh, thanks, KT. You got your email. Yeah, I'll check it out. Um, check it out when I get a chance. Looks winnable. Yeah, well, we'll try and fight it. We'll try and fight it at the edge so that we can route some of their units like instantly. Um, if we can get them to go really close to the edge, then yeah, we can hopefully get some instant routing. This could be nice here because it's got this little uh, bump here to guard one flank as well. And this is where we're coming in, so. Yeah. This is a new map. Oh, is it? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Doesn't look doesn't look familiar particularly, but yeah, seems cool. So there, so there are good new maps apparently. Are we are we agreed? There's definitely new maps. I've definitely played on some that didn't feel like I'd played on them a hundred times before, but I couldn't say a hundred percent surety that they are new. I think so.
Hey, Arson. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't really notice the lag. Um, oh, yeah, you can fast forward the AI turns. Yeah, there's a little like fast forward button thing that you can click and it makes the AI go faster when they're having their turns. Yeah, good one. Good call, Silver. I'd totally forgotten about that. For the ancestor gods! It is a reckoning! For the ancestors! I'm not sure why I'd bother doing that, but yeah, alright. We What's the new nerf of London buses? Yeah, I don't know. Somebody just mentioned they got nerfed. I, didn't, I haven't played Chaos Dwarfs, so I don't know. I wonder if Chaos Dwarfs got any, um, like, fixes, or they just got nerfed. I feel like a lot, a lot of people get annoyed with that stuff when it's like, like, you go into a faction that's got a bunch of bugs and stuff and broken things, but they've got a, a few things that are kind of overpowered, and then they just nerf all the overpowered things, but they don't fix any of the, bu the bust and stuff. But I think Chaos Dwarfs are you know, in a pretty good state. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I do love my blunderbusters. I hope they still. Um, I hope they're still effective. Yeah, I don't know if I like this setup too much, but the bolt thrower is going to be pretty useless anyway. I think bolt throwers are meant to be for shooting like large targets, aren't they? I don't think they're particularly good against um, infantry. Uh, but yeah, if I put it on the hill, it should be good. So we've got two units of Corollas. We've got two units of Dwarf Warriors. Go in the middle. More Dwarf Warriors. It's just doing like that just killed one dude I suppose if we kill like one dude out of this it's only out of 32 it's a bit better some good damage on those flame flame dudes get those flame those these two flame turrets that's like number one number one um priority
No, it's gonna be a good hit. I don't know. Not really. Bad timing. Yes. Kill Urch. Shoot the Wadogs. The next kill is ours. Shield bearer. Oh, here's the artillery. Yeah, uh, fuck. For the ancestor gods. For the high king. Nothing can stop us. Miners. It is a reckoning. Select target. For the ancestor gods! Whirlings! Get them! Kalox! Charge! Take him! They have wronged us! Take them down! Oh shit, we Did that work for you, Sun King? Yes, vengeance. Quarrelers. Almost worth a blade. Another wrong but right. That was brutal, but um, but the uh, the Dowie prevailed. This is probably the first time I've seen anyone build a bolt throw. Yeah, no, that's the first time I've ever used one. It's because I confederated it. And I've got to say, after having used it in battle, like, I know a lot of people talk about the bolt throwers, but now that I've used it in battle, I can confirm it is totally shit. <laughs> it was terrible. I don't know. Was it? I mean, yeah, I don't know. It felt, it seemed pretty bad. <laughs> I really wish it had been a grudge thrower. They should make both throws tier one. I don't know what 
like bolt throwers are even for. Like, I'm, they must be okay. Like, I imagine people use them in multiplayer, maybe, or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know if they even pierce. Like, it was she was killing like one in one Skaven slave per shot, or whatever, or one one clan rat per shot, or whatever. When I was firing, it might have been because it was aiming at the corner of the unit, though. They're for bolting, yeah. Anti large, yeah, yeah. I guess it's for shooting dragons and stuff. They were pretty good against the wolf fires. They were pretty good against the wolf fires, yeah. But don't you, don't you reckon a grudge troll would have been better though? Anti artillery, artillery. Yeah, that's probably what they're for. Yeah, against ogres. Yeah, maybe it'd be good against ogres. Yeah. Yeah, see, I. Th no, I blame you, you. Oh, it's under siege. What? But it's not under siege. That's weird. We've got a be. We got a. We got. We get a attrition due to being under siege, but we're not under siege. What's that about? Could it be like there's an undercity that, and the undercity gives you attrition, and the attrition counts as siege attrition? Maybe. For the wisdom of Valeria, Lord of Clan Morgan. <laughs> Onward. The attrition thing doesn't update to next turn, but it was never under siege though. He didn't siege it. This is a new army that's coming from somewhere. No trophies today. Oh, it's bankruptcy attrition. It says it's siege attrition, but it's actually bankruptcy attrition. But we didn't take bankruptcy attrition this turn, did we? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Vengeful Rune Lord. All right, Rictus is dude. Did. Not dude, dead. Can I help you? We've uh, taken out one, taken out one faction. Um, I feel like yeah, out of these three, the you got to go for the armor and physical resistance, right? It's like yeah, I mean replenishment's cool and everything, but master of runecraft. Yep, everyone's got the same attrition, so yeah, it's just bankruptcy attrition. Hey, dog, okay, dog. No, I haven't. I haven't got access to it. You've got to. You can't use the underway. It's like the underway thing is like a late game kind of reward. So the two ways you can get underway is by doing retake the realm grudge, which and we have to ensure dwarf factions have all of these regions. So they've got to get Azag's region up here. Got to get Peak Pass over there. Death Pass. Blightwater all the way down the bottom. Southern Water Edge Mountains and Blood River Valley Barrack Fire got taken out. So basically all of we've got to take all of that and that unlocks the the um, underway met network. Or we can wipe out all of the Chaos Dwarfs and Grimgore, and that gives us um Azkalak and Karak Azon. It's like the world roots mechanic, yeah, exactly, yeah. There's no way we'd be able to auto resolve that with that, is there? Lord of Clan Morgrim. Yeah, it's two different underways, so there's 
Can we see him on this map? No. How do you see him? I was looking at him earlier. Oh yeah, you can see him there, yeah. yeah. So is Karak Azor, that's Karak Azor, right? Yeah, Karak Azor and Uzkalak. So the, those, so, the, so they're, yeah, yeah. So you can go between Uzkalak and Karak Azor, or you can go between any of these ones. You can see when they zoom when you zoomed out to max, yeah. So this one's vastly less useful then because you can only go from there to there. Whereas this one, you can go from there to there, to there, to there, 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 there. There's like heaps of places you can pop out from it. It'd be cool if they were all, if they were connected to the other one there. But yeah, I didn't realize they were separate though. Thanks for explaining that, Musa. I think you can also see the icon next to the settlement. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, right. Cool. Unrestored location. Underway network location. Are you sort of confed via diplomacy? No, I don't think so. Anat, the slaves of Karak Kadrin greet you. Um, oh, we might be on cooldown still. Oh, yeah, we're still on cooldown, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll check it out and returns, I guess. Um, I mean, this army doesn't look that good, but there is 40 of them. We're only going to have 21 units. Pronounce the word melee. It's it's pronounced melee, but um, but I when I learned that word, I was about 11, and I learned it from reading a book and not from people talking. So it was melee to us. And um, and I had a group of friends who were all none of us knew how to say it, so we always said it, we always call it say melee. But yeah, it's it's pronounced melee, I believe. But yeah, so if you hear me say melee, I mean melee. Thanks, Harry Butler. Stop pushing it. It's melee. Thanks, Luke Monkey. Melee. Melee. Do you pronounce melee as melee or melee or melee? Melee. Interesting. Any idea when the official Elspeth showcase video will be out? Um, didn't they already do that? Wasn't that yesterday? No. Nah, no, I guess not. <laughs> I don't know. I thought maybe it was yesterday, but I wasn't, I've been really following it. Yesterday was the blog? Oh, okay. Maybe soon. It looks like we did we already took we already took bankruptcy attrition, right? No, we didn't take bankruptcy attrition. So how come why are these guys all busted up? Hmm.
Why is Ungram such a loser? God damn it, Ungram. Threw my lot in with you. Is the rating causing it? Maybe. I don't think so. Nah, because... No, I don't think so. Anyways, um... Good old Vikram Redmane. Is there anyone better that we can put in? We can put in Craig Redbeard. Oh, I've got another Grungy Lord. Fuck it. I'll grab him as well. But we'll switch him out for... Craig Redbeard. What? I suppose so. All right. Um, six, six minutes below. Six minutes below is quite a lot. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it was um Yeah, I don't think it was a true I don't think it was um Bankruptcy because some of my units are not Oh no, yeah, it must have been yeah, it must have been bankruptcy. Yeah, the reason why those units weren't um damaged is probably because they were recruited after the end turn. Never went bankrupt in the game. It's alright for some. I've only gone bankrupt two or three times in my playthrough. Yeah, I've done it a few times, but pretty rarely. Good map? Oh, yeah, yeah, the good map. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, should we go on this side so we can utilize our reinforcements? Or should we go on this side so we can utilize this badass hill? Mm, yeah, that those reinforcements are pretty useless anyway. Oh my god. I didn't realize how many grudge showers we had. This is sexy as sexy as all hell. Um The only thing is the menace below's is gonna be a real ball like Actually, yeah, no, nah, maybe we'll go over here. Because the more time we've got, kind of the better, I guess. Oh, no, that, uh, I don't know. I want this choke point here. We could go on this side, but... Yeah, yeah, we'll stick some dwarf warriors on the artillery for sure. Um, we can go on this side, but turn off the artillery until... Turn off the artillery until they start attacking. Could be a way to do it. Thunderous. The thing is, once they're... Un once they... Um Once a few of their uh, menace blows die. Mm, yeah, no, nah, I guess we'll just go to this side. We'll just 
I'll forego the height advantage. Jesus, some carnage, some carnage being laid down. advantage is key it's true it's two uh, two menaces. Yeah, this is looking pretty good. Looking pretty solid. Evil wizard, we you missed us. Nothing can stop us. Oh no. Uh, so I thought it was going to be right near this super high packed blob.
Gas of bad, gas of good. Move off. What on us? Gas of good, gas of good. Ha! Uh, mostly dodged it. Fuck, I feel like I've dodged so much, um, dodged so much warp lightning in this battle compared to how much I, well, I dodged two, which is two more than I normally would dodge. Looking pretty good. Yeah, it seems like there's definitely some interest in this DLC, um, which I'm really glad. Um, I hope that I hope this DLC does like massive sales and really just kind of you know brings back um, Sega's confidence in the in the Total War franchise again. Because I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much of it's true, but you know. Keep hearing all these stories about like Sega, like basically not being very happy with Creative Assembly. Well, obviously they weren't happy because they sacked half their mem their fucking employees. But yeah, hopefully I don't know. Hopefully this DLC will be a quite a nice uh, you know revival for Creative Assembly after they've had a rough time lately. Oh shit, it's a warp grinder. It's like, what's going on? Why is everyone dying? Thanks, Steve Invader. That's awesome, man. Glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, the most the most optimistic viewpoint of it is that basically they just um, got rid of all of the non-Total War teams, like all the teams that were working on, um, you know, side projects, like. Fucking like Halo Tactics or Hyenas or whatever, you know, other non Total War games, all those teams got kind of closed down. Um, you know, maybe if they had some team working on some other, you know, eras, Total War eras, Thrones of Britannia type shit or something, they like shut that down, you know, and they basically just kept the core team working on Total War Warhammer and they've devoted all their resources to Total War Warhammer. If that's, that's like the best possible version for me, so. Hopefully that's what happened. <laughs> I kind of want this oath gold. Then again, I want this replenishment too. So you, you pretty much only get... Haven't had a proper force match to glory yet. Yeah, I know. Um, it seems like you can't really get Oath Gold unless you specifically execute and loot, hey? And you don't get that much. Like, you probably get a bit more, but it's like the prices are so much higher now that it's like... Uh, um...
No, I didn't notice any new items. The runes. For Kara's Antor. Valiant defeat. Valiant defeat. Is Valiant defeat like... Vengeful Runelord. Like good? Grimner is with us. Dumb Grimmen. To battle by the Forge Father, Thumbit. Hmm. There, oh, there are no new units, Will. So, the, this is not the DLC, this is the free LC update. So, the new, the new units you only get if you buy the DLC. So, I haven't got the DLC installed on here, this is just the update. So we've got all the new skill trees and all the new uh, your new updates only. Hey hell, it's about time. Yeah, I made I made a video. Uh, I made a couple of videos about all of the um, updates to the Empire. Um, but in general, I love them. I guess would be pretty much how I would pretty much how I would uh, you know characterize my feelings about the Empire update. I, I love it. But um, but yeah, no, I did a video about the um, Empire. Did a video all about the Empire rework and um, and uh, and stuff, and uh, how to use it. So yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen some other content about the Empire rework. But um, you know, if you want my particular take on it, um, then uh, yeah, that's my that's a link to my video that I did about it. Yeah, the updates to the Empire are really good. So good. I love everything about it. It's, um, yeah, it's great. Um, I also did another video yesterday as well about the, um, about Gelt's rework and his, um, crazy hero hammer wizard power action. <laughs> I might play some Gelt tomorrow, actually. Um, we're trying to figure out how to cheese the, um, Gelt start so you can basically get the both, of, the best of both worlds, like get the advantage of staying in Cathay, but also, Go back to the Empire. I'm really enjoying the Dwarf campaign, yeah. The new changes are cool. It's funny how the Dwarf changes are quite different. If you say so, I feel like the Dwarf changes are quite a different flavor from the Empire changes, Good. if that makes sense. Grimnir's axe thirsts. Um, I reckon if I sold Black Iron Mine, I'd be able to sell him that. Thing is, I'll never get Karakazul back. Oh, to look upon you. Gotta be done. We gotta make some hard decisions. Imric, we sign a blood oath. You better not betray us like that other time you did with the War of the Beard and all that. This is like a serious oath. We're bound together. Ties of honor. Make a, a sacred promise to uh, fight the Thagoraki and the Dawizar. 
side by side, like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, yeah. I mean, no, Sylvester Stallone and that other guy. Creed. <laughs> honor with honor amongst elves. What? No one does it better. All right, we'll just te we're temporarily putting the uh, stewardship of Karakazul into his hands. Being an elf, he'll probably, you know, immediately screw it up and uh, give it to give it to uh, Queek. Classic elf behavior. Observe my skill. Oh yeah, cool. So now we can get into Crookback Mountain. For military alliance. And we can have a Kazuba. No. How's some pit not worth as much as All right, whatever. I will not fail. Yeah, no, I can't really get anything else going. No. All right, fine. This will. I'm be just, lost. I'm just cheesing this, just cheesing this, the this uh, region trading so hard, trying to keep my head above water. Well, what is it? Do not squander the Dragon Prince's time. Uh, what else do we want? Tower of Gorgoth. Um, we could maybe keep Black Eye in mind for now, I guess. Oh, what's going on here? I wonder if he's gonna win there. I do. Lord of Clan Borgrim. I wish that, um, I wish that, I wish that, um, no more attrition. Yeah. I, I like how, um, that's, that's a cool thing. I like how the attrition actually updates immediately. Like instead of like, you remember how it was weird before where it shouldn't show you the attrition, uh, but now it actually predicts it. Yeah. It's cool. It's just a little thing, but yeah. Can we trade back for Karakazul? Oh no, we're not going to get it back, are we? You are privileged indeed to have the ear of Prince Imrin. Am I going to go... I'm sure if I'm going to go up here or... It is time! Like, should I take him out? entirely and try and get him Rick to stretch up there I don't know if it's gonna work out too well but Aye, it will better our cause Beards in belts this crown how come we aren't getting fuck all replenishment here oh, it's just how it is hmm okay Born to commune with dragons, not lesser beings. 
I want to commune with dragons, not lesser beings. Behold, my friend. Not sure what to do here. I'm going. If we can auto resolve this somehow by some miracle, then I'd take that. But otherwise, I don't think I want to fight it. Valiant defeat. Ah, oh, it's so close. Um, no, we're all gonna die. I feel like it's sort of doable, ish. Ah, mm, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of almost doable, but then, like these pump wagons and the all the wolves and everything, it's like, hmm. Is that like, is that like some super cheesy? Is that some super cheesy corner that we can cheese? In that case, maybe yes. They've got no magic, but we don't have any magic either. We've got, uh, we've got a fair bit of melee infantry, I guess. I think it's just going to be really hard to keep them out of our archers. Unless we, um... Oh, crap, was, um, yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. We need to corner camp uh, pretty hard, otherwise they're going to get into our backyard and backline. Yeah, that's it. We maybe just need to do some damage. Yeah, I, I, Pyrrhic victory is fine. I don't really care if we lose the entire army as long as we disable this. As long as we disable this. Um... Yeah, I mean, I need to get rid of some armies because I've got way too much, I don't, way, way too much, um... Deny their second army, yeah. Might have been a better, better way to do it. Problem with the grudge throwers is they have a really flat, um, a really flat, uh, trajectory. So it's kind of, you need to have, kind of have them on high ground or for pretty far away to be able to shoot over stuff. And like, yeah, it's not like, more, that's, why, that's why I was saying the other day how I love mortars, because with mortars, you can just um, shoot directly in front of, like, if you've got a front line there, you can be targeting mortars, like, right in front of them. Whereas with the grudge throwers, like, yeah, you can't really, you can't, like, if you try and aim for there, you're just going to kill all your own dudes. What is my second army again? Oh, it's from crossbow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if we cheese in this corner pretty hard, that'll be pretty good. What do these do again? Oh, this does the... Um, monstrous impact. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is going to be good because we can just route all of their shit off the side here. Um, and yeah, I think that should be pretty good. Hopefully. Um, we need our reinforcements to come in behind us up here, though. Yeah, that's pretty good. Turn off the miners. Slayers. 
Oh, Silva. It's time for you to earn your pay. Such as it, well, or your no pay, as the case may be. But if you were getting paid, you would have just earned it. Oh. oh, I just realized I have to activate them, don't I? Fuck. Um, fuck. How are we going to activate them? Oh, it's just some like bot trying to sell us, sell us free views or something. He's trying to hook me up. Damn it. Um. Yeah, this sucks. How are we gonna activate him? I might. I. Mm, I could like suicide. I could try and suicide Maker and Minders, Miners. But knowing my luck, they'd probably go over there and get suicided and they wouldn't even activate. And just be like feeding my units in one at a time. Followers only chat with Oh, it's only, it's not too bad. It's only like, we only get about like one or two of those bots a day. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't really like how people have like followers only chat and stuff like that. Cause like if you're like a new person to, a, to the stream or whatever, and you drop in and you just want to ask a question and then it's like, no, you can't join. You can't ask Christian unless you're a member or you know. I don't know. It just seems a bit like I see. I get the. It's a good idea though. Thanks, Silver. Like I think it's like I can see the wisdom of doing it to stop bots and everything. But I just feel like it feels a bit unfriendly to people and like yeah, like some people just they just want to you know just want to watch a bit of the stream, ask a quick question. They're not necessarily looking to you know join a fucking cult or anything. <laughs> so you know. I feel like, yeah, you shouldn't have to. Your questions were answered. Very welcoming to me, people. Yeah, do you reckon you would have been put off if it was like, no, you can't talk unless you're a member or some shit? You don't have to pay to be a Twitch follower, but you have to pay to be a Twitch subscriber. So subscribing on Twitch means membership on YouTube. So this is a cult, yes. This is the cult of Total War Science. Uh, so yeah, the plan was perfect until I realized I need to activate them. How are we going to activate them? Scientists? Total War Scientists? Tell me the wisdom. What are we going to do here? How am I going to make this work? Um, hmm. I feel like this, the plan's pretty good. If we could just get them to come over here. Crossbows plus a speed rune. Maybe. Uh, you reckon we should sacrifice the unit of crossbowmen? I can shoot at them, but they've got heaps of fast units. What about if I just send a unit of slayers and then just have the slayers just fight to the death in the in the forest but i'm not sure if there's there, there used to be a thing where it used to be a bug where melee damage wouldn't actually activate them the grudge throwers now nah, the grudge throwers are way out of range but i could uh i could move one grudge thrower forward to like here shoot a few units and then move back grudge throw with a speed rune yeah for sure You reckon keep the Slayers? Send the Slayer or send the Artillery? The thing with the Artillery is like quite often they'll dodge the Artillery and they won't take they won't take that much damage. And then they, you know, we might waste heaps of ammo. I don't know, we'll give it a, we'll give the, we'll give the uh, Artillery a shot. Because yeah, the Slayers might be able to like just fight to the absolute death at the end, you know, and really save it for us. So that could be, I don't want to like, you know. The runesmith doesn't have wrath and ruin, so. The AI dodge if you aim at the ground with the artillery. Yeah, I think the AI still dodge if you aim at the ground. I think the grudge throwers are pretty inaccurate though. So, um, so yeah.
Oh, we've got so we've got one guy with um, Wrath and Ruin. Game on! Oh shit! Speed Ruin. Bring death on him. Oh yeah, twenty nine speed. Fuck yeah! Check it. Look at it move. Look at it moving. Tearing it up. 10, 29 speed, super, super speed. We are relentless. We are relentless. We are relentless. You don't have to keep going on about it, though. There's only about so much relentlessness that we can take. I don't feel like we should rotate it around a bit. I feel like if we go across there, it's going to be better. Understood, Lord. Targets, Lord. Rage far, rage fast. Slayers. Nothing can stop us. Dwarf warriors. All right, this should be glorious. I'm not sure if I should turn off the fire at will on these grudge throwers, because like I said, if they target close to our front line, the grudge throwers will completely destroy us. So I'm a little bit, yeah, I don't know. A little bit dubious about it. We do have some miners with blasting charges. We've got them turned off for the moment. Just aim, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I'll turn them off and main them, aim, aim, aim them manually. I'm letting them shoot on the approach here. Yeah. Once they get close, I think I'll turn them off. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, once they get once they get close enough, we should be right. Grudge Throw is going to hit the character much, but... Shit. It's going to backfire. damage on this orc lord? Oh yeah, we're punishing him. Yeah, he's getting wrecked. That's good. That's going to hurt their morale quite a bit. If we can get a good um, next Wrath and Ruin into that blob there, that's going to be good. Um, I think we need to switch our angle on these guys though. To send the slayers in. Slayers. Slayers. 
Oh shit. We just hit our own troops. That was brutal. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work out too well after all. Yeah, see, they miss. They miss quite a lot on the up, like the up down direction. See that? Just fucking yeah. It's we're destroying our own guys with the artillery. Fuck. The next kill is ours. Yeah, that sucks. That got that did some did some work. Shit, we got routing uh ready. Get him Axis out watch Fire the Lord Fire Dwarf Warriors Miners Trying to get fucking eat it. Suck it, green skin scum. It was looking pretty grim there for a bit, but they pulled through. k grudges yeah for sure it was huge huge grudges i don't know the, the thing is like i don't think that was really cheese though you know what i mean like if if you're up against a massive horde of greenskins like that that outnumbered us like three to one then you know this is exactly what you would do you'd find a hold like this is a, this is what dwarfs do they found they find a hold in the mountains that's impregnable and then they um they fight shoulder to shoulder So yeah, so if it was, if that's what I was trying to say, explain before, like if you were playing a PVP battle, which is like kind of like a sport game where you want both sides to be fair and even, so it can be a like honorable test of your skill and shit, then then it would be cheese. But if it's, but against the, against the greenskins, it's like, you know, it's war. It's just trying to win. 
There's, there is no cheese. There's no, there's no like, you know, there's no concept of trying to make it an even and fair battle or anything like that. Stuck. That's my take on it anyway. I mean, if I was, if I was playing green skins and I was fighting, I was fighting the AI and they were playing dwarfs and they corner camp, then I would, I would be, you know, I'd be calling them every name under the sun. Did keeping the can keeping the slayers back and not suiciding them turn out to be a good idea in the end? It did indeed. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that we were going to be able to um, the grudge throwers like because they had really long range. They were able to activate it quite easily. I was I thought maybe they wouldn't work, but like they'd keep dodging and just not activate or something. But no, it was fine. <clears throat> well. I don't think we're going to get to kill any more Dowie today, unfortunately. Oh, our Slayer, our Grudge Settler Slayers got wrecked. Fulfill our oaths and die! Oh well, what can you do? Poor two slayers. They, yeah, I didn't look at it. Yeah, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, those poor two slayers. Like, all of every other slayer, like, all of their friends, they all went out, like, with high hopes, you know, adventurous spirits, thinking today's the, the, today's the day we're going to find our beautiful death, our perfect glorious doom, and all the slayers are in high spirits. They probably all got drunk last night. And then, um, and then, yeah, they got to watch... They got to watch all of their mates go and get glorious dooms, except for those two slayers that missed out. I guess they commit sui they committed suicide out of desperation afterwards. I guess that's pretty sad. But they gave this they gave their lives for a good cause. Um, I think I'm going to take the oath gold and the money because we need it. Did any other factions get reworked effects mechanics, like Ungram getting something? Um, I don't think any of them got reworked mechanics exactly that I noticed, but they, but yeah, Ungram got like some tweaks to his skill tree and stuff. He got like an extra, he got a special ability that gives him um, special like upgraded journeys end that he can unlock when he gets to a high level. So I'm pretty keen to check all that out. I really want to just have a whole, a whole um, band of Slayer pirates and see how good they are. Casting the runes. Stop pushing it. If you say so, Beardling. Run, Lord. They aren't allowed to off themselves. Yeah, no, that's true. They're not. Hundred. Run, Ricky. They went MIA, yeah, that must want? be it, yeah. Do you reckon we can take him out in order as well? Or just in battle in general? Yes. Maybe. Damn Grimmon for the ancestor gods. I don't think he's gonna be able to make it, is he? It's just no, it's not no. Um 
Lord Fuck, I don't know if this can do it. I don't know if we can do it. Um, but like I said, we only we don't really need to kill them. We just need to. Oh crap. That's right. Oh, how many grudges? Oh, look at our grudges now. Fuck you. Grudged out. We're max grudge. Look, oh, we're over. We're 6,600 grudges out of 4,600. Oh, does that mean in four? That means in four turns we're going to get like a sweet, great, a great, sweet army. Where does the. Where does this. Where does the army of um, grudge settler units spawn? Can we choose where we spawn it? Or does it just spawn in a random location? I do. By your faction leader. Oh, no. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, thanks, Krentaris. So we've got to make sure our faction leader is somewhere good. Because I think the Grudge Settler army only lasts for a certain amount of time. What? I could... I could give the... Jog off. Stop pushing it. Nah. Yeah, I reckon we could win this. What about if I, I'll give this guy our... Um, I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit... I'm a bit scared about doing this because if he dies and loses it, that'll really suck. But yeah, I'll give him the Iron Warden's tank it and I'll give him the Master Rune of Spite. Um, and maybe a Helm of Discord. And, well, Executioner's Axe. We can, let's just tool him up. He's going to be... Magic resistance, don't even need it. Fucking may as well. He's fully it's gonna make him fully tooled up. Um This guy can have some things. Don't need that stuff. Uh another helmet discord. And a I don't know. Whatever. All right, let's see how this goes. Mm, excuse me. Master of Runecraft. Decisive victory medium. Um. Should I just take the auto? They're going to get wiped out anyway. We lose the dwarf warrior that we don't want to really want to lose, but. Yeah, a quick game is a good game, I guess. Oh yeah, I could have moved the banners around to try to move the banners around to try to get the um, better result. Quickly reclaim all my uh, oh shit! Go reclaim all my junk before it gets stolen. Doesn't look like he can reach us this turn, so that's good. Uh, unless his wa ends, so then he might get a bit more movement. Iron weld. Tier five and six. These guys are both leveled up, so I don't really want to. My anger burns bright. I do. Leave a little bit of cash there. Armed and ready. Alright, so we got this battle going on as well. Do you reckon we could... Grimner is with us! By the Damascron! 
We could do the same thing, actually. I could give this guy a. I could give this guy a thane. Uh, not a thane. Uh, I've got. I've got Rune of Wrath and Ruin, so I guess we kind of want to keep him. Oh, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's tool him up. It's now that it's time for another montage. For a montage, montage. Hey, I see. Don't know if you have input in this, but may I ask if what's your take on Endgame Crisis, especially the Laura Unfriendly Dwarf one? Any info on CA if you want? No, I haven't heard about them overhauling in the future. Um, I kind of feel like they're just really. I don't know. I, I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes too much, but I kind of feel like they're just very like. I don't know, overworked, but like you know, like they've got a lot of work to do all the time. And there's not not much time, and you know, they don't have time to be doing extra stuff, kind of thing. You know, a lot of the time. So, like, yeah, I imagine that the end game scenarios are not a very high priority because the end game scenarios were just like an extra thing that they just made for free. They didn't sell it, like they didn't sell it as a DLC or get any money for it or anything. So it's kind of just like, a, you know what I mean? Like they, it's pretty hard to like. I can imagine from a business point of view, it's pretty hard for them to say, hey. Let's just stop working on that new DLC that's going to make us millions and millions of dollars. Let's just go and work on this other thing that no one really likes and that, you know, we didn't get any money for. And you know, you know what I mean? It's like, so yeah, I don't know. I think like it's one of the, yeah. If they could, if they could figure out a way of like making some very easy changes to the, to the um, end game scenarios that would make them much more popular. I think that would be, it'd be easier for them to sell that, you know? um because like you know what i mean like every time they do something like they've got to sell it to the team as like a worthwhile spending of their time but yeah but no i haven't um i've talked about i've talked to i've talked about what i think about end game scenarios a fair bit on stream but i haven't tried to talk to um creative assembly about it and they i have never gotten the sense that they were interested in getting feedback about it yes by the forge father yeah i think uh, like i uh, yeah it's a, it's a real shame because i was really excited about the end game scenarios and the potential that they could have like if they wanted to invest in them like they could make them really really cool um and so i feel like it's a bit of a shame that they haven't but yeah it's a pretty easy fix if you don't like the end game scenarios just turn them off so you know it's i feel like it's hard it's kind of hard to sell the idea of um getting them to invest in fixing them all right let's see if we can cheese this shit I really wish they would make Endgame Crisis like the ultimate battle between the Chaos and the Order. I want them to make them kind of like the same kind of inspiration that Battle Brothers has for their Endgame scenarios. Basically, you want to have a little bit of a story to them, like, you know, told through a few dilemmas or whatever, multiple dilemmas, not just one thing that pops up and says Endgame has happened. You want a little bit of a story. The most important thing is you want to play a reward. So currently the Vermintide is the only one that gives you a player reward. There's a little quest battle that gives you a cool, really cool free army. Like that, every endgame scenario has to have that, in my opinion. Like, it doesn't have to necessarily be a battle that gives you a free army, but a unique item that you can get from it, a special unique hero, like a Crusader hero that you only get if you do the um, vampire um, endgame. You know, like, yeah, basically there's a few elements to it, I reckon, yeah, but basically every endgame scenario has to offer a reward so that the player actually wants to do it. Um, if you want, if you, like, some people do like the idea of, oh, I just want the endgame to be really, really suck and just be a real pain in my balls. Like, there are people that, are, that want that, but it's not like the majority of people, you know? Whereas if they just made it so that every endgame gave you a really cool thing that you get out of it, that would massively increase the amount of people that would want to do it. Um, and, um, and, um, and yeah, and make them a bit context sensitive. So like, if you're allied with all the dwarfs, then, you know, all the dwarfs shouldn't necessarily just declare war on you for no reason, you know, and like there should be a bit more, yeah. 
it, like yeah and yeah it, like i think yeah it'd be really good if there was some context sensitive stuff to it but i think there's like i think beyond the basic like it starts getting more, more and more complex you know like what you could do to fix it but yeah i think like i think the getting including a reward um and having having them be a bit more complicated like having like two or three different elements to them instead of just one like I th yeah so i think this the skaven one i think is the best one so far like it's like they were in they were going in the right direction with the skaven one if they just didn't kind of go far enough but the the way that the skaven one has like two phases like it starts off with um some foreshadowing and like skaven undercities appearing everywhere and then you get this phase two where they actually they actually pull pop out and it's got a reward that you get from it whereas you where you get the special units and stuff so the skaven one was pretty good compared to the other ones that are just most of them really just nothing you know but um but yeah the, even the skaven one i think it still needs a bit more Oh shit, stop firing! Hold the fire, god damn it! They're shooting our own men! They're shooting our own dwarfs! Oh shit! They're into the artillery! Stop them! Yeah, the army spawning stuff and yeah, it needs to be a bit more um I don't know, like this is obviously very ambitious and like probably not something that's realistically you could even hope for to get, but the way that it works in Battle Brothers is that just say you choose like um like just say you choose an in a, a end game scenario like the undead undead rising or whatever, right? Basically, it would, the scenario is that there's like a big, a, a, a sort of necromancer dude, and he's um, he's risen up, and he's super powerful, and he's like raised all these undead, like more undead than we've ever seen before, kind of thing, you know. So it's an undead crisis, right? So you have like something like that. So what we'd have is first of all, you'd have like um, there'd be like rumors or something. You'd have like a little dilemma come up saying there's rumors of a necromancer in the east or something like that, blah blah, you know. And then after, like, that would be the first thing that would happen. Then you would have, like, this sort of um, precursor phase where you have these little dilemmas and quests and stuff that are kind of, like, related to it, but they're not the actual thing. So it would be like, uh, you know, you've heard reports of, you know, people, dis children disappearing in, in, in outlying villages or whatever, and you get, like, uh, a negative growth debuff or something and then you have it and you have another like these are sort of random there's like a pool of like seven or eight different ones and like two or three random ones will happen each so it'll be different each campaign um so one's like a, a growth debuff because children are dying or some shit another one's like a traveling a traveling expert witch hunter comes and offers these services because the end times are coming or some shit and you get like this unique witch hunter character guy or whatever or you get a mini quest battle that you can get to like save this witch hunter or something you know and if you do it then you get him and like there's another one where um uh, you know a retinue of knights wants you to fucking pay them five thousand gold and then they'll fight the undead for you whatever yeah so you have a few like these little weird little quest things dilemmas and shit that have some storyline precursoring some sort of vampire thing going on then you have like a phase where um you know there's certain little like random armies you know like those ones that happen in the empire where you get beastman attacks on different settlements and stuff have a bit of that or whatever and then finally then like the armies start appearing out of the east or the west or wherever it is the armies are coming from you know but it's not like you know so it's just yeah i don't know like the whole thing's kind of like an event you know that's got unfolding and storyline kind of to it and stuff but still like in a way that's not too that still lets you kind of have the sandbox thing, you know? Have we done all... It was that... Yeah, we've done all of the underways now. 
Um, hey, Fizzman, had a chance to fight against any Chaos Dwarfs. Do you plan to see how they match up against the new Dwarfs? I did fight some Chaos Dwarfs, but I am... But, um, and they gave me a good old flogging, actually. But we we defeated them. It was, we had, like, just... We basically just had this one epic siege where we fought them. But, yeah, yeah, it was all sorted. It was all resolved without too much fuss. But that was just a really minor faction, just a single settlement. Doesn't Stellaris have a similar mechanic? Yeah, I think Stellaris does have a similar mechanic as well. Actually, yeah, yeah I think you're right. But I haven't, um, I haven't played it extensively enough to get a good idea of how it works. I haven't really played that many of the end games in Battle Brothers either. I just, um, I just know that it's a cool system. But yeah, the end game scenario is like. Yeah, um, like, I share I share the frustration that other people have with the end game scenarios that, that they're kind of crap, but I don't, but I don't share the, like, at, like the, kind of anger about it, you know, because, to, to me it's like it's disappointing because I just I can imagine like the uh, the end game scenarios could be so fucking cool, like the end game scenarios could be like the coolest thing about like Warhammer Three, I reckon. Like they could just, if they did like little scenarios every now and again with different unit packs and fucking different enemies that would come out that we hadn't seen before and you know what I mean? Like it, it could be wicked. You'd have to, they'd have to sell it though. They'd have to sell them for like five bucks or something. But um, so I am disappointed, but I'm not like angry because like we never paid for it. It was always just a free thing that they thought they might add because they thought it might make people enjoy the game more. It's not like, do you know what I mean? It's not, yeah, so it's like, yeah, if you bought a DLC and it was like a ripoff or whatever, then I can understand people being angry with that. But I feel like, yeah, although it's disappointing that the end game scenarios are shit, it doesn't, it's not, I, I'm not angry about it because like, yeah, we never paid for it or anything. In Warhammer 1, the Chaos Invasion so it felt like such a core part of the game. Yeah, that's what, what I really want is like the Chaos Invasion, but like there's a whole bunch of different ones and they're a bit more complex and stuff. And yeah, you can have you can have different, ra like you never know which one's going to happen in your campaign. Different random ones can happen or you can have it so that multiple ones will happen, but they'll be spaced out a little bit. So different challenges will pop up and, you know, or you can turn it off entirely. Like, yeah, but I just think it'd be cool if like, Kind of more like a, an RPG, you know how like you have a band of adventurers or whatever, and you have a scenario that you play through like an adventure. Like I reckon it'd be, I, I was sort of imagining with the end game scenarios, they could sort of sell them like little mini adventures, and you can sort of add, so you can add them on to your campaign, you know, that kind of vibe. But yeah, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, that's pretty much my my take on it. But um, but no, I haven't tried to talk to Creative Assembly about it because yeah, like I said, I don't really feel like. Yeah, you know, like, I don't really feel like they owe us an endgame scenario. Like, I, I feel like it would be really cool if they made them better, but I don't think it's something they really are required to do, you know? If they ever asked me about it, though, I'd be happy to give my feedback. But yeah, no, nah, dev I've never gotten the sense that they were interested in um, investing super heavily into it. But um, I'm sure if they had some time and they could do something quick and easy and effective, they'd be interested, but yeah. But I think most of my ideas, you know, I kind of want it to, I want them to invest in it, really. And yeah, I don't know if that's really, you know, realistically something they're interested in doing. Can we... Let's see if we can get some effective artillery shots over here. Oh, actually, let's um, see if we can block this wall and kill this hero. That'd be pretty sweet. Actually, you guys just chill. Stop killing that wall. Are we shooting at the... Oh, yeah, there we go. I was really hoping this wall would... Oh, I hope this hero doesn't move. Don't move, buddy. Don't move, don't move. Oh, shit. All right, you stay there. Try this one. I 
I wonder if the AI knows not to go on the walls when it's damaged. Hmm, they seem pretty onto it. Yeah, I feel like shooting far away is good because it just scatters them around randomly so they can't really dodge it. Oh, here we go. Oh shit, no. Oh, bro. <laughs> it's cool, I executed the hero. Suck it. Dickhead. Um... Fuck. It. Where is it? Oh shit. I don't know where it is. Alright, let's just send these guys in here and see if we can, um... Do some damage. He's melting all those guys now. Let's see if we can get some damage there. We've got these guns over here. Oh. No, the, it's that, that formation that makes them immune to artillery fire. It's only for, um, it's only for iron breakers. So we need to get to tier four before we can use that. Pretty happy we deleted that um, hero. That's cool. Um, I don't think they'll be able to hit him. Ah, oh, fuck. Where is it? I hate how you can never tell where it's going to land with a lot of landing. Like, it's really hard to see it most of the time. Out. 20 seconds. That's pretty cool. I think they hit mostly his guys. But... Yes, I think we're getting. I think we're getting somewhere. Uh, oh, that was a rough one.
Um, hey, Golem, my precious. First time on your stream. How is the reconquest of the world at Edge Mountain going? It is going uh, pretty precariously, actually. We've had some. We've had some good victories. We make. You've made some. Definitely made some progress. Um, but um, everything was going swimmingly until I declared war on this minor goblin faction, thinking I'd take them out. Drazoth, and then I um, also refused to pay off Drazoth and declared war against him. Then Wurzag declared war on me, and I'd already, I'd already gone to war with Queek. And yeah, so suddenly I was like surrounded by three major factions that I was at war with. And um, then I confederated my only strong nearby ally. Um, and so now I'm even more exposed. So yeah, I guess I did it. There was a series of things that I completely did to myself that have made it uh, a lot more challenging. But hopefully in a fun way. Oh shit, these guys are too close. I wonder if those guys are going to come down soon. But yeah, I don't know. I think the end, I think the end game scenarios was a good idea, and I applaud, I applaud whoever came up with the idea of, you know, doing it. But um, but yeah, it just needs it just needs a lot more um, it just needs a lot more resources thrown at it, basically. And um, yeah, I don't know if that's really something that's realistically going to happen, which is a bit sad, but. But yeah, I mean, if it if it if you know if it never happens, that's not the end of the world. We will have if they just focused on the core gameplay, you know, fixing up the sieges, fixing up the you know improving the AI, you know, tweaking the diplomacy system, you know, there's heaps of other stuff they can work on to improve improve the game. Um, and honestly, it's probably a better idea if they just work on the core stuff. The, the core nuts and bolts, you know, the bones of the game. Make sure that stuff's like really perfect or as good as they can get it rather than trying to add in extra features and stuff. Yeah, I don't really know what's going uh, Yeah, obviously I don't really know what goes on at CA, but like I said, like worst case scenario is it's like, you know, Doomsday, Total Wars, you know, on its last legs and and you know and like because there's been all these cutbacks and blah blah but but yeah like i said there is like a kind of like a a, a super positive way of looking at it a way of interpreting it i guess which is that maybe they've just stopped doing all the stuff that we don't care about and they've just put all of their resources into just total war um and um you know so we've actually got you know although creative assembly as a total entity is like less there's actually more of it that's now on Total War Warhammer, you know? For, for, uh, maybe, I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, that's just like, you know, that's like the optimistic way of interpreting, you know, the information, I guess. Yeah, because they said, they said that um, Sega basically had said that they sort of told Creative Assembly to just focus on their core um, core IPs or whatever, you know, focus on the what they're good at, strategy games, Total War strategy games, you know. 
So that's cool. If that's what they told them to do, then that's good because that's what we want them to do, basically. Because we're all, you know, we're all Total War fans here. None of us give a shit about any of their other projects. All we want them to do is just make Total War. So, you know, I mean, obviously it's bad for the people who are working on those other things, but I'm saying like, you know, in terms of purely our own selfish desires, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I'll just say, I got no idea what it's really like on, the, on their side. I don't know any secret informations. Well, I mean, I, I know some secret information about the DLC, but not about Creative Assembly. I'm, um, I'm not too worried about it, by the way, if you were concerned about how much I'm getting this army smashed up, it's not too bad. I mean, I'm, I'm planning on getting rid of it anyway. I just want to make sure I, um... I just want to take the settlement, basically. Still using those slayers. Oh yeah, should I rescue the slayers? Should I force these last 10 slayers to live in shame, having failed to achieve their doom? Fizzman was like, don't let them get their, don't let them get their honor back. Force them to live in shame. <laughs> oh fuck! I just I never know where the freaking thing's gonna land. I couldn't see where it was gonna be. Into like a crazy top down. Right, we did it. We nailed it. Give them some more health so they can get even more honor. Yeah. There'll be other battles, exactly. Those are the veteran ones. They're the ones that are going to progress to become giant slayers and then um, dragon slayers, and eventually one only one of them will survive to become a demon slayer. I find it weird how there's like generic, generic characters sometimes. Like um like like demon slayers so like out of all the dudes that have out of all the dwarfs that have you know been so shamed they had to shave their beards and stuff shave their hair shave their heads and dry, dye their beards orange and stuff out of all those slayers you know some of them were like just these epic fighters that just couldn't basically die in battle or whatever so they became giant slayers or no they became troll slayers sorry so all the ones that are troll slayers are ones that have already been slayers for a while and failed to die and they've killed trolls and stuff then they become troll slayers right and there's like the, the troll slayers aren't like just fresh dudes that have just like you know immediately like just did some sh they were like a baker beforehand and then they just shaved their head and now they're a troll slayer so I, so I assume all the troll slayers have already been out slaying stuff for a while you know so they're already failed slayers and then out of them the ones that are even failed even harder at slaying but have killed heaps more stuff they're giant slayers and then out of them there's like this minuscule like tiny few that are that are that are dragon slayers you know what i mean like imagine the percentage of dwarfs First of all, the, the Slayers is only a small percentage of the total dwarf population. Then imagine how many, like, how many of the Slayers could possibly have killed a dragon. Like, no, like, literally a, killing a dragon is impossible. Like, no dwarf could kill a dragon. It just physically is impossible, right? So, you know, in real, in real terms, you know, so, like, in, in order, so there must be only a very few that could have killed a dragon, right? And then out of those guys, some of those dudes have like killed demons, which is like even more ridiculous. They could. Have. So what I'm what I'm saying is like that you can get a generic demon. You can hire a generic demon slayer to be the general of your army. He doesn't have. He's not particularly well. He's a lesser known demon slayer. You know, he's not like a named demon slayer. You, he's just a generic one. Then that yeah that's 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 what I'm getting at. Like if there was a demon slayer that existed, there, there's one demon slayer and his name is Gotrek, right? <laughs> if there was another one, like we would know his name, right? That's like that's what I'm getting at. Even if there was a dragon slayer, I feel like we would know his name. How many dwarfs are there that have slain dragons? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe dwarfs are way more epic than I give them credit for. 
there's heaps they just heaps of them are out there slaying dragons on weekends and stuff Ungram Iron Fist. Ungram Iron Fist slayed a dragon. Yeah, but we know his name, is what I'm saying. Like, how many other, how many other fucking ridiculously OP, crazy slayers of legend are there whose names are not recorded? I feel like it's, there's very few. Vengeful Runelot, Iron Weld. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying un, so unnamed, unnamed dragon slayers that don't, and not like, do not have names of legend. I feel like that's uh, pretty unlikely. There's our unsuccessful slayers. All right, we've got our build, I've got a payment now, what is that? We've got our um, build down to 7.3. My anger burns bright. I do. Mm. Run lot. Should I get rid of this? Oh, I'll get rid of that. Save some more money, I guess. What do you want? I'm pretty sure they can't reach there. Hey, boots and boots and cats. Are the OG slayers ever any different? The squishy order is blah blah blah. Um, no, I don't think the slayers are any different. Um, slayers, 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 slayers. Um, oh yeah, they've got this Slayer, this Slayer ability now. Um, slayers can never have their weapon strength reduced during battle. So all Slayers have that. I think also Ungram has that as well. Yeah, he's a Slayer. Gotrek will have it as well. Wherever he's, wherever he is. Gotrek. Yeah, Slayer. Um, so yeah, they've sort of changed the way the, the mechanical thing by making a special Slayer trait that Slayers have. Um, death blow. They already had death blow before. Resilience. Yeah, I don't know if their traits, their chat, their things have changed. Their shielded is still thirty percent. Yeah, it was always thirty percent. Um, eighty. I think there was always eighty. I feel like they should make giant slayers a bit more badass though. Like maybe they should make giant slayers only have sixty in the unit or something. I feel like that would be cool because I feel like at the moment giant slayers and normal slayers they're sort of like a side grade from each other. Like the normal slayers are more missile resistant. But the giant slayers have um, armor piercing. Um, yeah, do you know what I mean? They're sort of. I mean, the giant slayers have more health, I guess, as well. But yeah, I feel like giant slayers, they should like reduce the size of the giant slayers slightly, maybe to 60 or something. I don't know, I reckon. But yeah. Um, It's weird that only the normal slayers have whirling axe. Yeah, that's right. I reckon the giant slayers should have that as well. Like the giant slayers should just be a straight upgrade in every way, basically. That's what I would. That's what I would do. Yeah, if they did, and then yeah. Doesn't the whole unit attack the thing when the survivors claim the kill? Yeah, probably. I'm sure there are more dragon slayers than we're thinking. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. Oh hey, if I oh sorry, um Xaris, I didn't uh, I was on a on a massive rant there. I didn't see your um didn't see your chat. Uh, I'm planning on getting the trilogy edition. How much content do I have? What races and campaigns could I play? Hey, Zaris, I don't know what the fuck that is. I've never even heard of it. What's the trilogy edition? Let's check out the let's check out the Steam page. I assume you're talking about Warhammer. Warhammer 3 Steam. Yeah, are you still there, Zaris? Sorry. Oh, you are still there. So the Total Warhammer trilogy, one, two, and three. Oh, so is that where you get in the pack? You just get Warhammer one, two, and three and nothing else? Trilogy edition. Here we go. I'm investigating. Stand by. Please hold. Description. 
Whammer one, two, and three. Oh yeah, see, it's just get whammer one, two, and three. Yeah, so basically what I, yeah, that's cool. Like, so basically what I recommend to people is um, just to get whammer three first to make sure you like it. I mean, if you already know you like Total War and you already like whammer, then you're probably guaranteed to think it's pretty fucking awesome. But yeah, if, yeah, I basically say just get whammer three first. Get, get it you can get it on special from instant gaming it should be um really cheap like 66 percent off or whatever so don't buy it full price on steam because it's not discounted at the moment if it goes on special on steam sure but at the moment i think instant gaming is better um but yeah so i would say just tell people to get poem three if they and if you just get one of three you get like a whole bunch of factions plus there's a free lc um faction bretonia that you get for free as well which is like the knights like um medieval knights and uh, archers and stuff Excuse me. And then if you like it, then basically I tell people then to buy Warhammer 1 and 2 because Warhammer 1 and 2, each of them gives you like four extra factions. So you can buy, you can buy race packs and stuff and get extra factions that way. Or you can buy Lord packs to get like an extra Lord. But if you buy Warhammer, like if you buy Warhammer 1, you get like eight Lords. You get eight Lords and four different races that you can play. If you buy Warhammer 2, same thing I think you get eight, eight lords and four different races so if just in terms of like variety to find out what like which factions you like the best and stuff like the, the buying the base games is the way to go yeah Warhammer 3 is as much as the trilogy so I'd get that mm, wait up soon Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the trill on instant gaming, the trilogy is thirty four Australian dollars. So it's probably like twenty dollars American. Oh yeah, and Total War Warhammer Three is the same price. So yeah, you may as well just get this trilogy edition. Yeah, for sure. Oh wait up, trilogy edition Europe. What, yeah, make sure you get in the right region and you're getting your Steam key. Oh, you're in Europe, so you want the Europe edition. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, like, yeah. Assuming you like you, assuming you like the game and you want to get into it, then yeah, I reckon the Trilogy Edition's a good idea. You probably want to buy some more DLC after that, if you have, once you have a favorite race. Um, so yeah, I'd basically, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Just get the Trilogy Edition first. It's going to give you a heap of races. You're going to have like 14 different races or some 15 different races you can try out. Um, but then most of those races will have extra DLC that you can get that'll give you some extra units or a different Lord to play or whatever. But you can worry about that later once you figure out what you like and stuff. Started Warhammer 3, and I'll say the races felt a lot better without the DLC, where Warhammer 1 and 2 races felt like they needed a DLC to be complete. Yeah, that's a good idea. So the races aren't really complete? No, that's right. There's The Warhammer 1 and 2 races have all had like two or three extra DLCs on top of that to expand them out even more. But, um... But you'll... But yeah, but I was saying, right, like, you don't want to buy all the DLC because it's going to cost you like hundreds of dollars. So just, you know, maybe just check that out, see which races you think look the coolest or whatever. Give them a little play, you know, give them a little test out or whatever, and then just buy the DLC just for the races that you want to try out. Um, Bretonia is completely complete. Yeah, Bretonia doesn't have any DLC. You get everything for Bretonia. Um... Yeah, Britannia you get and they're complete already. Um, Slanesh doesn't have any DLC yet, but they will get some. Corn doesn't have any DLC yet. But yeah, if yeah, I would recommend you buy yeah, get your trilogy first, buy one, one, two, and three. That gives you the most stuff, like in one, in one shot, you know. And then like the best DLCs to buy, I would say, would be the Chaos Chaos Warriors, um, both the two Chaos Warriors one and the Chaos Dwarfs. Um, but, and then depending on what races you like, you know, just get the DLCs for those races, but yeah, but it's going to, going to cost you a bit of money probably. So yeah, I'd just say get the trilogy first and then figure out what you want to, which ones you want to play as. Chaos Warriors. You can, you can play Chaos Warriors if you buy Chaos Warriors, but you have to buy them. 
But yeah, yeah, I would definitely recommend Chaos Warriors, but yeah, you have to buy that separately. Hi. And Chaos Dwarfs as well. They're both really cool. I'm done ready. Anyways, um, mm, all right. So what other bullshit that I have to deal with this turn? This turn was a fucking sorry, sorry to swear, kind of like, um, but yeah, this turn was a pretty uh, turn full of crap to deal with. Uh, my dwarf hero can come up here. Black crag. So we reclaimed black crag. How many? Look at how many bloody grudges we've got. Eight thousand. 8,800 8, out of 4.6k. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can think about it in different ways, um, Zarus, but like this game is like epic in scale. Like there's just so much stuff in it, you know, like... Yeah, and it's just, yeah. Unfortunately, like, yeah, if you want a game that th is this fucking epic and huge, you got to pay a shitload of money for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but the good thing about it is if you buy, even if you just buy Wemma 3 by itself and nothing else, literally everything is in the game. Like, there's nothing missing from the game. Every single unit, every single lord is in the game. The only thing is you can't play as them. You can only play as the, as the races that you buy. Um, but yeah, but it's like, yeah, it's kind of cool in that way. This campaign have any cutscenes or story to them. If you play Immortal Empires, which is what I'm playing right now, then no, they don't really have any cutscene or story. It's just sort of pure sandbox. But, um, but, um, there are, if you buy Worm 1, 2, and 3, then yeah, there is storyline campaigns for Worm 2 and 3. Is that a Mark of Chaos? Yeah, that's my fencing mask. It's got a Mark of Chaos on it. I feel like we're getting into philosophy phase now. I got my battle throne with my uh, with my weaponry. They're not real weapons though. They're just training tools for fencing. And that's my fencing mask and my gambeson, which I have not used for some time. When I, I bought that, I bought that gambeson. It was like so huge on me, like it was ridiculously large. Um, and now I'm so fat that it actually kind of fits me. Because <laughs> I, after COVID, I put on like 20 kilos, which I never got rid of. And it's like, yeah. So it's such is life. One day. Yeah, it is bedtime, I think. Um, been going for like nine hours now. Um, future proof. Yeah, I future proofed it. Yeah. I just, I was just because I bought the, I just didn't know really what size to get. And so I had to order it and stuff and I couldn't try it on or anything. So I just, I sort of aired on the side of bigger rather than smaller. And uh, yeah, but now it's like, it probably actually fits me now. But, uh, you know, it's fine. Eight hours according to YouTube? Oh, really? Well, according to my streaming software, it's been eight hours and 59 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to wait another minute before YouTube will credit me for the last hour. Um, it's a strategy game, Zaris. So it's not about a, not a, the story is your whatever faction, and you're surrounded by other factions that might be your friends or they might be your enemies, and yeah, almost certainly wars will ensue. Whichever faction you, you play as, you'll start off with like a starting enemy. Like if you play as the dwarfs, you'll start here. There'll be a there'll be a little weak army of orcs here. You'll like attack. You'll fight them. You know, take over this settlement with another. We'll have another little weak garrison of orcs, and you'll you know you'll fight some progressively stronger forces. It's not scripted though. Like about the first two enemies that you fight, that's set. But after that, it's all procedure. Like it's just whatever the AI does. You know, it all plays out differently every campaign. Um, so yeah, so it's not, it's not like a story game where you play through on rails, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a procedurally generated thing where the, all of the different factions are controlled by AIs and they all are doing their own thing, you know? Um, yeah, so that's the kind of game it is. It's a, 
It's a strategy game. It's not a it's not a story game. There are there are there are some special campaigns like that you can play that do have stories, but that's not like that's not like the main thing. That's like a sort of side quest type of thing, you know. Will you guys shut the fuck up? What the fuck? The two cats are like trying to have some sort of a Barney here. Anyway, um, like these streams have been so great. Like had so many people, um, you know, watching and so many people being generous with super chats and fucking joining as members and everything. So it's been awesome. And I just don't want to leave because it's having so much fun. But um, but yeah, I'm getting pretty tired. So I'm going to have to wrap it up. Cat fight in the Mercy House. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I'll try to actually, I like what happened last time was I was trying to host Kiwi. And so I went in and I was screwed around setting up the host and everything. And then I just didn't, I didn't end the stream properly. So it never actually hosted onto him. So yeah. That was sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry if anyone was sitting around in my stream earlier, but um, but yeah, I'll try and do it properly this time. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna chuck a host over to another worthy uh, YouTuber. Um, so hang around and you can um, and hang around and you can uh, go there. Sorry, my brain stopped working. <laughs> anyway, uh, say boots and cats getting one last one in. Thanks, Mercy. Cheers. Looking forward to the upcoming streams. Uh, thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Cloak Monkey. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys. Um, yeah, hope you, and good luck, Zaras. I hope you enjoy it, man. I, I'm jealous of you. Like, the only thing better than, in my book, the only thing better than playing Total War Warhammer 3 is playing it for the first time and having it just having it all in front of you, all the things to discover. You know, it's such a great game. Hope you really enjoy it. Anyway, guys. All right. I'll um, catch you later. <laughs> See ya.